Um, morning, everyone. Remember to come and sit near the front. I was hoping to discipline Veni Markovsky because he's usually the one that stands around chattering, but he's not here. Is he chattering outside? No, no, he's, he's left, I think. Has he, left? Has he gone? Has he gone? Uh, our scribes are with us. Are the scribes in Tennessee and California again? Anyway, I hope our scribes are well and that they slept wherever, whatever time zone they are in. Um, um, thanks very much to everyone for being here. This is our last day. Um, thanks for the work you've done so far. Thanks to the people who were here in time for the, and a little bit beyond time, for the nine o'clock pre-session. Um, it was very productive and we have an output to present to you. Um, as we start the day, I'd like you to look at your agendas where we have meeting outputs, because today is our last day, so let's just all have in our minds clear what our bottom line is and what we have to complete by the end of today. And they are on page one of your agenda, if you have a hard copy or online. Um, number one is main themes for the IGF 2020 meeting. Now, we've, we've, we've got a clear output on that. It might not be quite as, um, as simple as main themes, but we have, uh, we have worked on that. And the, the working group this morning um, has a concrete proposal to present to you. And two, and this we need to do today because we haven't actually started that at all, is charter the BPFs, the best practice forums for 2020. We need to make a decision on that um, because the one thing we do all agree on about best practice forums is that if they don't start early, they don't work that well or it makes it really difficult for those that are inside them. Thirdly, we have to approve MAG working groups. Um, this, this doesn't mean we have to have working groups, but we need to talk about working groups, reflect on, on, on the experience from, from MAG working groups in 2019, and decide how to move forward. And then finally, have a tentative outline for 2020 milestones and events. So that's our timeline. Shangatai presented a draft one. We're already beginning to deconstruct it and look at, at where it needs to shift and change. Um, there's a strong call for trying to find a way of having a third MAG meeting, um, things that we possibly can't decide today, but we can definitely look at our broad timeline. And there's some timeline milestones that we have to fix, such as the, finalizing the, the thematic structure and the call for, for, for workshops. So on that, let's go to our agenda for today. Um, and I'd like us to, to um, if you could indulge me to give me time to present the outcome of this morning's discussion while it's still fresh in my mind. And then everyone, everyone else can think about that and we can come back to it if necessarily. Then we'll move on to, to best practice forums and strategies for collaboration and complementarity across intersessional work. And I would also like to look at the input from, from Jutta and Jutta, who were, Jutta and Sylvia, um, who, who, who analyzed um, responses from, from the community on the workshop submission process. And then at the end, before lunch, I'd like us to, to, to get back to the, to, the, to the, if necessary, to the program structure and flow. Um, I also want to, say to you that I got very positive feedback on working in groups yesterday. People liked that. They felt they were able to progress and talk to one another um, freely and more comfortably. So we'll do that again today. Okay, so on that note, um, I would have liked someone else to present this. Did anyone else take detailed notes from this morning's discussion? Or, or, or should I present what I have? I'm going to take that as a yes. Um, 
Okay, just to contextualize this for everyone, for remote participants. By the way, welcome to the remote participants. Do we have any, Luis? I haven't logged in yet. Can you just tell us? No, not yet. It's fine if they are observers. Oh, well, welcome, welcome. Marilyn and Avery, you should be asleep, but it's very nice to have you with us and everyone else. Um, okay, so um, yesterday you broke into groups, you looked at thematic structure and tracks um, um, for the IGF 2020 based on the Berlin experience and the successes of Berlin and the lessons. Um, the three groups came up with proposals that had a lot of commonality, but also some, some differences. We also had a stock taking uh, input exercise that went on in December, but we only had 42 responses. And MAG members felt it was really important to get validation and give the community another opportunity. So the group that met at nine o'clock made the following um, decisions, not cast in stone, but we hope that we, we don't have to, to uh, go back to the drawing board too much. And firstly, consensus that there needs to be another open call. It, can, it doesn't have to be a wide open call. It's a call that would um, present the community with the work that we've done so far and the input that we've received so far, and then give the op them the opportunity to add to that and to validate that. We also agreed that this call will go out to NRIs as well. And this will go out to NRIs um, from, from the vantage point of giving NRIs the opportunity to influence and input on the overall agenda of the global IGF. So it's not a call to NRIs to ask them what they want to do at an NRI session. It's actually asking the NRIs how they feel about the overall thematic structure of the event. This call will also go out to the constituencies. It will go out to them directly. It will be wide open. And MAG members will be asked to use their networks um, to make sure this call gets out to the right people um, within the right time frame. Um, we felt it was important to prioritize input from, for example, the technical community. But everyone has their own different priorities. You know, there's also the IGF priority to include marginalized group, groups and to include uh, least developing countries and small island uh, developing states. So the call is a way of making sure that we have inclusion. What will this call be? Um, firstly, we agreed this morning that we'd like to work with Poland's proposal for uh, uh, a main theme as our overarching theme or I'm not sure what other term we used for that, but we thought that, that the, the theme of Internet United is broad, it's positive, it also addresses some negative is issues because fragmentation is something that people are often concerned about. So we thought we'd be happy to propose endorsing um, Poland's uh, suggestion as the overarching theme or motto of, of the IGF. Next, we will say to the community that based on the experience of 2019, the input of the December call and the discussion of the MAG in Geneva in January, we've identified three tracks plus one. The three tracks are essentially the Berlin tracks, but expressed in a more simplified way. So it will be trust, inclusion, and data. The plus one is emerging issues. And in our call text that we sent out, we will say that so far what has been identified as emerging issues um, that emerged uh, from the open call, climate change, environmental sustainability, and digital economy, that those two emerged. And then we'll say to the community, um, how do you feel about this? Um, would you like to add others? Do these make sense to you? There was also a feeling within our group that there's value in having an emerging issues track um, because that gives us the opportunity to accommodate um, something that might emerge you know, in the next six months, some, 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 some very um, dramatic or topical um, issue that, that internet governance needs to, to face and we can then 
build it into that. So that's, that's really the proposed overall structure that we will give to, to the community. But we won't say it's fixed. We'll say that they need to reflect on that and tell us how they feel about it. We will also ask them for each one of those four tracks or the three plus one tracks to identify what they feel are the priority issues that they think we should address in IGF 2020. In the language where we ask them to identify issues, we will say that if you have policy questions, express them. If you have policy solutions, you can share them. But we don't want to ask specifically. We don't want to make it compulsory to submit input in the form of policy questions because we felt that would preempt the kind of, of two things. It would preempt the, the thought processes that, that goes into crafting a workshop proposal. And people often only really refine their policy questions when they do a workshop proposal. So that's why we don't want to demand policy questions at this stage. And the other reason why we don't want to demand that is that we want to create some space for, oh, the other reason we don't use the term sub-themes. We're not asking for sub-themes. Even though we might get sub-themes, we don't, we don't want to ask specifically for sub-themes because we want to give the MAG the opportunity to finalize sub-themes based on the input from the workshop proposals, which is what you did last year. And for most of the tracks, it, it worked well, not equally well for, for everyone. But we do want to ask for issues and we want to have enough um, raw data from the community so that we can begin to synthesize some kind of sub thematic structure because the point was made that when we put out the workshop call it's good to be transparent it's it's good to be clear um, as to what we feel they should be responding to under each of these tracks so um, essentially that 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 is it that's the proposal from from the early morning working group um, that tried to synthesize harmonize the, the work of the three groups yesterday. So anyone want to add or clarify from my presentation? Anyone who was with us this morning? Ben, you have the floor, and then we'll open it to, to questions. Thank you. Um, I think you clarified to me uh, where I talked about the possibility of uh, the proposal yesterday about the possibility of having environments um, as a focus, a horizontal focus for this year. I think you were saying we're not getting into cross-cutting issues yet. Let's have this call for proposals first. So then I didn't go on about a horizontal cross-cutting theme of, of one SDG this year. And I thought that's not for now. Let's do the call for inputs. But I just thought I'd check that was the case and, um, and that you didn't mention this idea that came up in a couple of places about having a horizontal thing because of that kind of ordering of structure. Yeah, thank you. That's true. We didn't, group three yesterday, discuss the idea of, of cross-cutting horizontal themes. I think partly group three, you made it difficult for us because some of you felt that the cross-cut would be overarching and others felt it would be underarching. But you're right, we didn't discuss uh, the idea of, of, of cross-cuts um, finally at this point. I think that we shouldn't take it off the table. And I think that the timeline, I didn't say that. We, we, uh, this call that, that I try to now describe, um, Shangatai said that we have two weeks for that call. And so what we now have to plan for would be a MAG online meeting. And feeding into that online meeting working groups where exactly that kind of thing can then happen, where you can look at what the input is on this call for issues and input on the proposed thematic structure um, and, and, and process that in a way. And in fact, that might then lead us back to, to looking at a, at a cross-cutting um, um, structure. I do think though, and I would warn having worked with cross-cuts a lot in my life, they are often harder to work with. They, they, they're very good at satisfying people's need for, for, for conceptual um, um, representativity, but they can be difficult to work with. And they often make more sense to the people that identified the crosscut than to the people who are attending the event. But that's just a caution. I'm not saying we won't have crosscuts. 
so any other questions or comments on, on, on this proposal? And is it clear? Does everyone understand what we are proposing? <laughs> yes, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, as I understand, uh, uh, that is the prop uh, that that are the proposed uh, three themes for this year. I right? trust uh, including the data, right? It's, it's the it's the proposed draft three themes plus one, which is the emerging issues. It's not finalized because we felt that we didn't have a, a huge enough um, response to the initial call that we want to present those draft themes to the community to constituencies to comment on and to validate. So, so they might still have to change, but those are the proposed draft three main tracks. And the plus one is emerging issues. Right. At this moment, can I have a, a, some uh, uh, clarification on what, is, uh, what, what does the trust mean in this context? Thank you. Um, I'll, I'll open it to the floor, but I'll just get, I'll just tell you how it how it came to that. That um, the the discussion yesterday was to work with the themes from Berlin because they worked well, but there was also a proposal to rephrase them and maybe simplify them. So trust is the root of the theme from last year, which was in the wrong order, I am sure. Um, stability, security, trust, resilience, and safety. Or, what, Yuta, what was it? It was security, safety, stability, and resilience. And we thought to simplify it, uh, to use the word trust, which covers all that, but could also be something more. So that's where that trust came from. And I think it's good that you ask that, but because I do think that we'll need some narrative. We can't just give the people, you know, these three words. Um, there'll be text in the call, which, which, which explains or, or locates how trust has emerged as what we feel is an overarching theme. And that text will make the link to security, stability, resilience, and safety. Yuta, you had your, your flag up. Anyone else speaking? Thanks. You have the floor. Maybe should I go to government further? Uh, I just uh, have a question. Uh, maybe I, I, I didn't hear that uh, if you, <coughs> sorry, if you mentioned it. How does uh, this fit into timeline uh, that was uh, proposed by Secretariat and uh, uh, the deadline of 3rd March for the uh, starting the, the call for proposals for, for workshops. Can we just address the, the timeline for this call? Thank you. Um, I, I mean, we can do that now, but in a way I think I would rather as do you want to answer just quickly? Because we did look at that. No, yes, we did look at that. I mean, when we did the proposed timeline, we did have some room. Um, so if we give it two weeks, it won't affect anything much. We, we may have to shift some dates, but we don't have to short, shorten anything. I mean, there is time to fit it. As long as that uh, doesn't put the uh, Secretariat under, under extreme pressure in the sense of uh, uh, publishing call, collecting data, uh, uh, summarizing and uh, everything, I'm, I'm okay, but uh, just wanted to, to ask that. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, thanks for that. I think that it, it I think the Secretariat will, will yeah. cope with that. I think it will have pressure for the MAG because once we have that, that, that uh, response, and the Secretariat has synthesized it, MAG members are then going to have to work with that to get it into a narrative or a format that is clearly understandable enough for us to use that as a basis for, for the workshop proposal. So it's good that you bring that up because we, we'll, we'll want to give you all advance warning and identify now already, I think, or soon, who will do that work. But we did look at it. It doesn't have to change the timeline with regard to when the call for workshop proposals um, goes out. 
Um, we have an observer at the back. Just introduce yourself. Um, thank you. My name is Mr. C. I'm representing here Kaspersky. Um, the other question might uh, seem obvious for some MAC members. I still have to ask, what's the um, the procedure for finalizing those themes, these, um, as we just mentioned, trust, inclusion, and data? And you mentioned that it will be further discussed with the community and uh, due to the, some public response. Thank you. So the procedure will be that we put out this call, um, the Secretariat synthesizes the feedback, and we then will have to have an online MAG meeting where we, we finalize the, the decision and where we allocate the work of, of um, um, developing or finalizing the, the different, um, now I'm going to use the term narrative because I think um, that has worked well, um, to the point of being able to send out the, the workshop. Call. So we'll, we'll need to schedule an online meeting um, in time for us to work with the synthesized input from the community and at that online MAG meeting we will finalize. And then we'll do a bit more work and then the call will go out for workshop proposals. Okay, well, is everyone happy with that? Because I think that's actually a big milestone. Um, it's a clear process. We, 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 we're close to finalizing our themes, but we're honoring our commitment to being consultative and open to input from the community. Um, um, Carlos. Um, good morning, everyone. I am not happy. <laughs> I agree with the three overarching themes, perfect. But I can't see how the fourth one, the emerging issues, whatever the emerging issue you find, does not fit into one or more of the other three. Because the, the other three are big, big umbrellas that uh, you can fit almost anything into one or more of the three ones. So it's a bit inconsistent to put emerging issues at the same level as, as the other three. I'm not sure how to solve it. I do understand that it's important to stress the, the, the theme of the digital economy, which is obviously an issue today, and of environmental sustainability is fundamental as well. You know? But how to fit all this into the three big umbrellas and or separate from the three big umbrellas, I don't know. Susan? I, I would just like to support what um, Carlos Alfonso has just said. I, I agree with him. Um, I, of course, I, if we're discussing the breadth of the narrative uh, this afternoon, then we'll, we'll have to um, take that into consideration. But I think it would be useful to stick with the um, proposed, well, the approach that we achieved last year. Um, and I just do want to note that there are opportunities, I think, or different ways that we can create space in the program um, for um, environmental issues. There, there are the uh, main sessions, of course. Um, so I, I, I would agree with Carlos. Paul? Yeah, thank, thank you, Chair Paul Rowney. Uh, if my understanding was correct on the discussion that we had was having that line for emerging issues was just to capture them, uh, not necessary to have a theme. It might end up a theme, but that's not the intent. And then as a MAG, we can see if they fit in the other streams or if there's a need to accommodate them differently. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, Paul's quite correct. We're using that as a way of framing the, 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 this validation, final call for input. That doesn't necessarily mean that's going to be the shape of the, of the program. And we already have, we have a call for, from existing input. We've been asked to have something for, to, you know, to deal with emerging issues. We've been asked to deal with digital economy. We've been asked to deal with climate change. This does not mean that the program structure that we end up with doesn't look more or less like, like the one you are proposing. Um, we had um, Ben, Tamea, Mary, Rudolph, um, and Susan, you again, and then I'd like us to move on.
Thank you. So, firstly, to your question, just to express my support for this as a balanced way of going forward to have a short consultation to uh, increase the amount of input we receive from the community. Um, and so, thanks for that clarification about an emerging issues bucket. It's for the purposes of this call for input. If we're if we're seriously looking for ways to provide space for issues which emerge nearer the meeting, then having a, a bucket for a workshop proposal process that finishes in April is, is irrelevant. It's more about potentially reserving a main session for something that we organize in September, October, or some other way of keeping space in the program. Um, but yeah, I appreciate that there's a way to try and capture what other issues don't fit in those buckets, and then we as a MAG can work out how to fit that into a theme next month once we've once we've got the responses. Thank you, um, Chair. Good morning, everyone. Um, just to reiterate uh, what has been said before and, and, and to support um, also the concern voice from, from, from Carlos and, 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 uh, and the comments from Susan and Ben, um, I think what we need to be careful about is how we phrase um, the call for consultation. Um, I am in favor of, of making sure that we involve the community as much as possible. Um, I'm unclear uh, at this point, and maybe I wasn't paying enough attention, um, if we frame the narratives before or after the call. Uh, if we frame the narratives before, that might help, um, saying this is what the MAG is thinking, what kinds of issues do you see under these three buckets, and then have a fourth question, does this capture everything, do you feel there's need for more? And then we don't call it emerging issues, because people might feel that you know, emerging technologies, this emerging, it might be other um, for, for many people, but we can say, is there anything else? Or does it just have an other bucket or something like that for people to voice any concerns or additions? Um, but I, I do want to have that question of what, what do we do with the narratives? Is it before or after the call? I think it's a, it's a little bit before and a lot more after. We can't just send a, you know, a structure with three words so it will be a little bit of, of both. Um, I think other conveys something very differently from emerging issues um, because we've already had a call. Just, just keep that in mind. Um, I know some of you don't feel ownership of that call and I apologize for that. Um, we needed to communicate it more clearly, um, obviously. But it did go out and, you know, and, and enough people did take time to, to respond to it. Um, next we have uh, Mary. Thank you, Madam Chair, for giving me the, the floor. My name is Mary Uduma for the records. Um, I just want to support what Paul said um, about um, the the uh, emerging issues, I think, is um, is um, um, a window for us to gather more from the community. As of now, we are fixed in our minds about three tracks. We are fixed, but we are giving opportunity to the com uh, to the the community to add to what we would have thought about. And I I I, I think if we go that way. Um, we are not being, top, we are being more transparent and we are not going top bottom, but bottom up, let it come from them, what they think that should be in that basket, since we already have three main uh, tracks that we, we have. Thank you. Thanks, Mary. Um, as some, the co-chair would like to, to make an input at this point and ask a question, and then I'll go back to Rudolf and Susan. Thank you, Chair. Um, uh, I think this is vital to have uh, emerging issues as another track for the IGF. Uh, I just have a question on the criteria that will be used to select uh, uh, emerging issues from all those that will come in in the in the uh, in the process. Uh, will the cri criteria be how much conversion they are with the rest of the themes? I think, I mean, I, 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 I'm not sure that we'll have criteria. We'll have the wisdom of the MAG. 
and I think and and the 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 skill of the secretariat who will try and synthesize that and then as a mag we'll just have to have an online meeting and look at that and make some hard decisions I think I would say as criteria we probably know and I think that came out of the meeting yesterday that 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 some sim simplicity works coherence works but as the IGF, we can never lose flexibility or openness completely. But we, even if we are bombarded with a whole bunch of new issues, we can't accommodate them all. We're going to have to either use a cross-cutting structure or, um, so we'll, we'll have to find a way um, to do that. And I think we will find a way um, to do that. But we, I, my understanding very much from yesterday and from the stock taking feedback so far is that, is that some sort of overarching coherent um, framework that people can easily identify with and follow has worked well. So as a criteria, I think we, we won't lose that. So we won't be able to accommodate everything. That, that, that would be my response. Okay, we have Rudolph and um, Susan. Thank you very much, Rudolf Griedel, Germany, um, Government Stakeholder Group. I, um, I want to firstly uh, thank you for this um, good work of consolidation. I think three themes is very catchy and um, they are large enough to cover a lot of uh, issues that will be probably also in the second round. If this second round of uh, call for issues is uh, short, and precise, I could go with it. I would not extend it uh, at infinitum and, uh, and have a new round because we already had one. Um, concerning the fourth, uh, like emerging issues, I think what, what Ben said has to be borne in mind because the workshop selection process is very determined and at one point in time, we will not be able to open it up again so um, we would probably have to go to other formats like main sessions in order to um, accommodate any newly emerging issue during during the year um, so i mean we can we can leave it as a placeholder but probably it will not um, i mean if there is something emerging very very early in the stage we can we can cover it but perhaps not um, the fourth point I wanted to make is uh, more on a substance. Um, two of the, um, of the new, newly proposed issues that we had yesterday were about environment, climate change, and, and so forth. Um, I wouldn't really um, label them as newly emerging issues, um, but I think in the communication of whatever we send out, it has to be it, it has to be very prominent and it has to be clear that the IGF and the MAG is aware that this is an important issue and that we are going to deal with it. Otherwise, we will be subject to um, massive criticism, I guess. Um, thanks, for, Susan. Sorry, I just want to respond quickly. Yes, in fact, we talked about that. There are, in a sense, emerging priorities rather than emerging issues. So I think we do need to finesse that. And Rudolf, I, I agree with you, and I think maybe I wasn't clear enough. Um, my understanding is that we are treating this as a validation call rather than a new call. And does that, if we do that validation call, but with sufficient opportunity for people to, to, to still provide new input, but it's not a new call entirely. Does that address your your concern. Good. I, th I agree with you completely. And Susan. Thank you. I just want to um, respond to Paul's comment, and this is also relevant to what um, um, Michelle had um, just asked. Um, when we do this, I I'd just like to encourage everybody to think about the evaluation process as we are having this discussion because the broad strokes that we are setting out right now will have a ram ramifications on the evaluation process. So if we, when those emerging issues come in and if we want to um, 
have a discussion about which categories they will have to go in, data inclusion or trust. Um, that is a whole extra load of work that we'll be doing to sort them into different categories. And um, not everybody will agree on which workshops go into different categories if we, we do emerging issues. So I, I would just like for us to bear in mind um, that the steps that we take now will, uh, we may have to retrofit the more specific um, uh, workshop sorting and evaluation process to address, uh, to address this call. Thanks. Um, thanks, thanks, Susan. And I think we, yeah, we need to make sure we allow enough time um, for that. So I'm going to give you the floor because you haven't spoken before, but I do want to close this. So Ayanda, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I don't have much uh, objection on uh, the way we have uh, kind of consolidated the themes for uh, 2020 IGF. But we require a paradigm shift in thinking, in identifying the themes uh, and the agenda that uh, will be discussed in IGF. Whatever we have been discussing from the first IGF will be relevant uh, in the foreseeable future. So the relevance alone should not be the criteria. We should focus, when we think of uh, next years, we should focus on what is the issue that is most emerging and there is no clear cut, you know, uh, ramifications or its impact or its uh, guidelines or the policies, laws that is going to guide it guide its development. It's not very clear. It's very hazy. So these kind of things should be discussed so that we can, you know, uh, hear many views from many stakeholders. Cybersecurity will remain relevant, uh, you know, every, every time. This problem is there with ITU study groups. Same question is repeated even four times, means four into four is 16 years. When we discuss about this, they say it is relevant. It's going to be relevant, always. For example, climate change, uh, this disaster management system is relevant all the time because disaster is going to happen. E-waste is relevant all the times. Human exposure of EMF is always going to happen. You know, cybersecurity is going to be happening. So, we repeat the same questions I have seen even five times. Four, uh, so 20 years, same question is repeated. And if we cannot implement something that is studied for four years, how can we establish our relevance in this so fast changing technological world? So I think, uh, for, because we have almost consolidated, I have no objection, but uh, my, my view is so that we shouldn't repeat the same thing that we did last year or many years. Because they are relevant doesn't mean that we should do it again. But so many things are relevant. In the, because it's not going to be relevant. For example, my, my view is, let's have one overarching theme. For example, consider artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence, the ethical issues, the future of artificial intelligence, the data, how the data protection is governed, you know, the security, even the future of humanity is being discussed. And there is no clear, you know, uh, future uh, projections of how artificial will emerge in the future. So what are the regulations behind artificial intelligence the countries will think of? So, if artificial intelligence is an overarching theme, then under this, we have sub themes we can think of. It's regulations, it's ethical considerations, it's data governance, and so on and so forth. So uh, this is uh, my view. Which Thank group you. were you in yesterday? Uh, 
I was uh, I was in the group that almost uh, you know considered uh, uh, finalizing the three teams. Deep deep thinkers have an, a, a, a challenging habit to share their deep thinking at the end of a process rather than the beginning of the process. And I always wish I was a deep thinker. I'm not a deep thinker. I'm like a, you know, a synthesizer. But I think those are important points. I do, all I can say, I don't, we can't go back now on, on the process. But the one thing I can reassure you is that I think the structure of data, trust, and inclusion is not meant to convey the three most important issues. They convey, a, a con they intended to convey a kind of a conceptual map that, that allows people to relate to the IGF and to see it as more than just this huge big event with hundreds of different sessions. I think there are priorities, absolutely, and there are issues that where we need closure and move, move, move to move forward on. And I think the idea is that that overall thematic structure should still be able to accommodate that. So I think I think your point is taken. I think, um, but we can't go back now in terms of identifying, you know, artificial intelligence as an overarching theme. But we can certainly still, and that will be in the work of the MAG this year. Um, um, identify how to deal with those issues and and but we will do that also based on on very much I think the the input from the workshops as well but um, so but yes I think your point is absolutely um, um, taken I think these issues do not change or well, the, the the challenges do not change that dramatically but we do need to find a way of making the IGF um, be more understandable and accessible, just from a pro program, a programmatic and narrative point of view. And next time, say that at the beginning, please, <laughs> so that we can, we can work with it. Okay, on that point, um, thanks very much, everyone. I think there's quite rich input. I think, Secretariat, we are going to have to look at the, the, at the, at the transcript of this morning's discussion. And um, based on that, we will do a draft um, validation call for, for um, themes and issues, or tracks and issues for IGF 2020. We'll send that to you and give you some time to, to comment. And um, we'll short aim very short time. Um, can we just set a target for when do we want this call to go out? Shall we say by the end of, is the end of next week too late? Can we give we're in a week's time? Yes. Um, yes, let's call it a week. In a week's time, which means, and, and I think you should uh, aim to get about two days from us. Uh, you'll have two days in which to read this and comment on the on, on, on the narrative and the framing. So if you can comment on it on Monday and Tuesday, and then we can see if we can finalize it on Wednesday. So we'll have a draft by when? Well, we're going to try and get a draft to, tomorrow. Tomorrow, okay, yeah. good. Okay. So our target for this to go out, this validation call to go out is um, the end of next, the le next week, Thursday. Yeah, I mean, yeah. as I said, you know, yeah. nothing ever works yeah. really on time, but we're going to yeah. try for... Thanks very much, everyone. And I'm sorry if not everyone feels completely accommodated, um, but um, there'll still be another round where we have to synthesize this input and build it into some kind of structure. And that will give all of you another opportunity to, to give input. Now we need to move on to best practice forums. So I'd like to open the floor um, to the proposals. And maybe, Secretariat, you can start us off by updating us on, um, actually, I'd like you to first just present what the BPFs are. I know you did that yesterday, but for new MAG members, just say what they are, their history, their purpose, and then we'll look at proposals for BPFs 2020. Um, Tamea, I see your flag is up. Are you, is it very, very important? Um, it's a question before we go into the next agenda item regarding the next agenda item. Um, I'm wondering um, if 
colleagues have have seen the discussion online pertaining to this topic um, from the previous week, uh, where we discussed. Um, I think it was Sylvia who put it forward first um, about the criteria for judging BPFs. And I just have a question on the order uh, we're going in here. Are we hearing from the proponents um, first and then going into that or, or the other way around? Sorry, my mic is on. I would like to suggest that we, we hear from the proponents first. Um, and then we we talk. We have a we have a general discussion on on criteria and selection. I think I mean we could we could have a general discussion on criteria and selection first. But my feeling is that um, it it might be better to just you know we could, then we could end up with the proponents feeling they have to address those they haven't had a chance to do that. Um, so I think let's just hear the proposals and then we have a general discussion where we can talk about criteria and selection and um, the, the way forward. I, I did think about that, but I think let's just get the proposals and we'll take it from there. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. Uh, for the best practice forums, if you go on our website um, under intersessional work, There's the best practice forums. Uh, just click that, please. Mm -hmm. And then you, you have what the best practice forums are. And the best practice forums were basically a response to the call by the CSTD, uh, co uh, the Commission on Science and Technology's um, working group on improvements to the IGF. Uh, they're calling for um, the development of more tangible outputs. Um, coming from the IGF. So the best practice forums was um, one, of, one of those initiatives to respond to that call. Um, and it's meant to have some experts come together and even members of the community to, to come together, discuss what are the best practices with practical examples and then um, publish those uh, best practices, or now we're calling them good practices, for distribution. Yes. Um, I will add a little bit to to that, um, and that is that you know there's 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 also these BPFs emerged um, during a time when there was quite a lot of dissent and tension around the IGF and the production of outputs. You had many, um, particularly developing country governments, saying the IGF is not producing any outcomes. You had other governments and other stakeholder groups saying, but the IGF is about debate um, and we don't want to have negotiated outcomes. So there was quite a lot of dissent um, about how to deal with, on the one hand, the demand to be more outcome and output oriented, and on the other hand, not to have the IGF become a, a, a intergovernmental type um, negotiation process. And so, and I'm going to ask Marcus to add to this. So the BPFs were in a sense a, a mechanism to accommodate that, that, that demand to have more concrete outcomes that are vertical, vertical, that are specific, that give policymakers and other stakeholders something concrete to work with. Issues like spam, for example, you know, th those came up without turning the entire IGF into a policy recommendation, uh, best practice um, machine. So that's how they emerged. And it's very interesting, actually, if you reflect on that, how, how there's now much more wider consensus on the need for the IGF to be more outcome oriented than they used to be. Um, although we still no, don't necessarily have agreement on whether those are messages or, or recommendations. But that's sort of the political history of, of BPFs. But I would like Marcus Kuma to add to that, and I think it's useful for everyone to understand the history of why BPFs emerged. And it, they emerged um, under Marcus's term as MAG Chair. So Marcus, can you give us your insight? 
happily do so. I would also like to go back even further. We already thought the second year of the IGF, which took place in Rio de Janeiro, we introduced the notion of best practice forums, but it was like a workshop. Uh, some governments then took it up and said, we have a best practice forum, but it turned out to be more of a beauty contest. And we had specifically said, we don't want beauty contests, but we want to learn from you also what was your experience, what worked, what did not work. And on the whole, you learn more from experiences that didn't work. It's lessons learned. But as I said, it didn't work. And it also, because it was self-organized and people then thought, okay, we go and show how good we are. And that was not what we wanted. But then we let it sleep a bit. And it's right, yes, in 2013, I chaired the process. And that was an interesting year. That big emerging issue was actually surveillance. And that came up. And the US government actually came to Bali and was open and disclosed and discussed about it. And we thought that was a huge win for the IGF, that actually a, a government uses the IGF for this kind of discussion. And then we thought we are really ready to go a step further with the IGF. And here I contradict Chengetai. It was not at all a reaction to the working group on IGF improvement, but it can be seen as that. It is indeed uh, a more tangible outcome, but it was not seen, okay, we have to do something because there we have instructions to do something. It was more, the feeling was the IGF is ready, is more mature, and I was working then for ISOC and we produced a paper that launched the idea to revitalize the best practice forums. And we also thought ISOC, as you know, provides the institutional home of the IETF, the Internet Engineering Task Force. And we thought the IGF could be kind of a policy equivalent to the IETF, where you talk on policy issues, but not negotiate, but you just uh, see whether a consensus emerges and there the best practices lend themselves as a, a mechanism to come forward. And we also thought it would be best to start with non-controversial issues where there's a lot of experience. So some of them, of the early themes, well, you mentioned spam. Another one was C certs. They exist, but it was just about gathering the information and sharing it. And also uh, IPv6 was one of the issues. Uh, there again, it's not a controversial issue, but it's sharing good practices. How do we go about introducing uh, V6? So these uh, are some of the issues that lent themselves and then it expanded from that. Other issues came up, but that's a, a short uh, in, uh, insight into the history. Thanks for giving me the opportunity to share that with you. Right, thank you. So, can I ask you to help us update the page then, since it's erroneous? <laughs> Do that. <Thank> <laughs> I, I, I don't think it's erroneous necessarily. I was a member of the CSTD uh, working group on IJF improvements. I think, are there others in the room here who were part of that working group? And I, that certainly outcomes was definitely one of the issues we identified, but we didn't call them BPFs. We didn't come up with the, the, the term um, BPFs. So you're both right, but it's a good idea, Marcus. <laughs> um, help Shengatai um, update that, that page. Um, you know, historical and institutional memory is such a challenge. And to me, we're having a little bit of a general discussion, so I hope, I hope you're okay with that. But we still do need to move on. Um, but Jutta, you have the floor. And then um, um, I think it's fine for us to have a little bit more discussion, but we need to keep in mind that some of our BPF um, representatives are only here this morning and that, that we do need to, to get to the work of reviewing the proposals. Your time. Thank you, Madam Chair, for giving me the floor. Um, and thank you, Marcus, for that explanation on, on the history of best practice forums, which I myself uh, am very acquainted with, but I do think the perception of best practice forums in the community is somehow different. 
and that is especially due to the fact that the MAC as a whole decides on which best practice forums we will have and we will continue or not. So somehow the perception is that these, are, these topics are given priority over other topics. And for example, from the community of child online safety, I've asked, been asked several times, why have we never had a best practice forum on child online safety? And because that is due to the perception that people think if we have a best practice forum and there go additional resources into the BPFs, um, <clears throat> then these must be very important topics. And there are other topics as well very important. So we need to take that in mind when we talk about criteria for best practice forums, how is the perception of the community on the BPFs? Thank you. <clears throat> yes, I think so. There was a BPF on child online safety in 2014. Um, so it, it, it just was then not um, um, continued. In fact, Shengatai, do you mind just reading through or pointing people to the page so we can see what BPFs there's been since they were introduced in 2013? Yeah, it's exactly the same page um, that I was reading from. Um, we'll just do it once more to go to, go to the, Lewis, yes, intersessional work best practice forums, just click that, uh, the best practice forums tab, just click it. And then um, we, have, we, we have an explanation there, which we will merge the two explanations that we heard today. And then if you go down, all the way down, I mean, those are the tracks for last year, which we have as local content, um, internet of things, IOT, big data and artificial intelligence, gender and access and cyber security. And then if you go down a little bit more, um, those are the mailing lists so people can go there and um, join. And, and that's, another pro that's another issue. I don't, I don't know how to actually make this stand out a little bit more because I've had questions even from the new MAG members where this information is. So if anybody's got any ideas, please let me know. And then if you go right down, that's the table of all the best practice um, forums that we've had. Uh, and then, um, yes, the second from the bottom is online child protection, and that's the report. So if we... Click on that, just click on that. Mm -hmm. That's the report, and those, all, all of them are there. I mean, I think these often are, they're a mix of, of, of champions, of people feeling strongly about these issues. I think the original criteria was very much about the IGF, the debate within the IGF had reached a point where, where it had matured to the point where we could begin to capture and document best practices or good practices and recommendations. That was the original criteria. It's a topic that's not a new topic. It's a topic that actually uh, emerged um, through existing debate and that and debate had matured. But it has changed, you know, and the IGF is an evolving um, um, format and, and mix of formats. And I think as some people have said to me, they feel that BPFs and dynamic coalitions are you know, maybe more similar. The difference is that one has consultants and the other one doesn't. One has MAC coordinators and the others do not. So, so keep that in mind, but also keep in mind that there is existing work and effort that, that has gone into, into this. So, um, I think, shall we now go into the proposals from this year? I want to declare um, um, that yet last year, in my, in my capacity as a consultant to the Secretariat, completely independent of my, my current role, I worked as a consultant to support two BPFs. Um, and I'd like everyone to feel completely free to be critical of the outputs of, of, of those BPFs. I'll certainly join in, if I may, although in my capacity as chair. Um, I, that would be difficult for me, but just please not be, do not f feel any reservation about uh, um, um, uh, being critical of the outputs of the two BPFs that I was involved in um, because of my current role. My ego is quite capable of, of, of 
any uh, of that kind of criticism. So on that point, I think, Shigatai, if you can just yes, review what we had last year and the proposals that are on the table, and then we can hear from them, and then we'll have another open discussion about selection and criteria. If we go to the front page again and the documents, we have the intersessional work proposals, and these are the uh, best practice forum proposals. So we have the BPF on cybersecurity proposal, the BPF on big data and artificial intelligence, uh, local content, and gender and access. And all these are continued from 2019. And then we have a new proposal, uh, which is the BPF on internet business slash economic models. That's a new proposal from a new MAG member um, this year. And then we have a, this is not quite a new proposal because this would, am I correct? We had this last year as well, we, you worked on this last year as well, correct? Yes, the pilot initiative, yes. On um, the pilot project on implementing internet standards for a safer internet. So I won't explain that, but I'll let the other people, the proponents, explain them. Um, thanks for that, Shangatai. So um, I now would like to give the floor to, to the BPF on cybersecurity um, to present their proposal. And if there are any initial reactions on some of the discussion thus far, you can add that. I'd like us to, um, to I'll, I'll, I'll open for some questions for clarification immediately afterwards, but try and keep most of your general remarks for after we've, we've, we've heard all the, the proposals. But, but definitely if you have specific questions on each proposal, we'll take that immediately afterwards. So, um, Wim, can I give you the, or so Ben, are you presenting? So, um, Ben Wallace, for the record, I am the co-facilitator of this best practice forum. Marcus is my other co-facilitator, so I, I play a role as the MAG liaison point, as well as um, helping to facilitate the process and work with our lead expert, as well as uh, Wim. This is one of the BPFs that he's been a consultant supporting. So uh, I circulated the proposal last week and, um, and let me go over that, but also give you a sense of where we got to at the end of 2019. So in broad terms, um, we're proposing to continue the work that was started in, in 2019, exploring norms developed in the area of cybersecurity and exploring whether and how these norms get implemented. Um, so yeah, if I start by looking at where we ended up um, come from the end of 2019, um, during the year we had 11 different organizations working in a volunteer group to draft the research paper, which provided the bulk of the report. We then had 12 organizations which responded to the public call for contributions. And as we were preparing this proposal for, for this year, I was really happy to see that the membership of, of our mailing list jumped by about 40% over the course of the year. Uh, I think we had 249 people at the start of the year, 346 at the end. So I think we've established a, a good body of engaged contributors within the BPF, um, in addition to a, a growing list of, of BPF members that follow uh, and sometimes sharing their views with the mailing list. <coughs> and in terms of one of the IGF's roles uh, of making links between um, this multi-stakeholder community and decision-making bodies elsewhere. Um, we took account of feedback from MAG colleagues last January um, that we should reflect initiatives that were kicking off in the United Nations. There was a renewed group of governmental experts and a new open-ended working group. So um, we ended up presenting the Best Practice Forum report to the consultative meeting of the open-ended working group in, in December, when it met in December. So with that context, I'll, I'll just briefly 
summarize the proposal for this year. Um, as I said, in 2019, the work explored norms developed in the area of cybersecurity and whether and how they're implemented. And we consider there's further work to do in this area for, for a couple of reasons. Firstly, um, that new norms are being or have been developed since we did our initial analysis in the middle of last year. We'd like to take those into account. And secondly, um, the breadth of the 2019 work limited the possibility to go into depth. So uh, one of the evolutions this year would be to select um, a limited set of norms and look into them in greater detail. So take the, the quantity of last year and, and add uh, some, some quality this year. Not that there wasn't quality last year. Um, the main additional development would be to create a work stream looking at how norms are assessed. And this was something that came up partly during the year, but also in the discussion we had at our session in Berlin. Um, as part of this, we would incorporate a, a multidisciplinary angle by bringing in experts from other strands of social science where norms have been the dominant forms of rulemaking um, to see what learnings could be applied in this relatively new area of cybersecurity. Thank you. Thanks very much for that, Ben. Um, any questions or comments? Marcus, do you have additions or Wim? Nothing from the floor. Um, thanks a lot. And now let's move on to the next one, which is the EPF on big data and artificial intelligence. And I think uh, 2019 was the first time, or was it the second? It was the second. It was the second iteration. So the MAG um, first um, identified that and selected that in 2018, and 2019 was the second year. Who's presenting that? Titi for giving me the floor. This is um, Titi Kassa, uh, government stakeholder for the recording. So, um, as you know, the BPF was started in 2017 and continued on 2019. Um, the first year was more focused on um, how to improve uh, dialogue between the stakeholders. And the last year, instead, we um, focused the discussion on how to use the three technologies, the IoT, big data, and artificial intelligence to improve and to address societal uh, challenges. Um, actually, we had a lot of discussion. Uh, we also ran the survey, and uh, we actually identified um, different policy challenges related uh, uh, to these three technologies that we have grouped in the three clusters that are uh, how to stimulate the user and uptake of the, this application using the three technologies, how to improve trust in the, applica in the application, and also a lot of challenges related to uh, collecting and using data. And um, starting from the discussion that uh, we had um, in Berlin, we actually uh, proposed the, the, this new, this new, uh, the, 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 the work for this uh, uh, new year, um, and uh, we would like to, to focus uh, more on, uh, on on the data because the, uh, during the discussion it came out that uh, there is um, a lot of um, opportunity in uh, in the data, and uh, as uh, data can be used to um, solve a lot of problems, complex problems uh, related to transportation, care, and so on. But uh, at the same time, uh, we realize that maybe uh, we don't want to uh, restrict or limit collection of data just uh, referring to the data collected by the, the IoT uh, uh, devices. So um, for this year, then, the BPF, uh, I mean, uh, suggest to focus more on how user data is collected and analyzed and uh, also try to collect more best practice on how these are used to bring benefit and not to harm um, uh, users. So we actually identified um, uh, three main huge issues that came in from discussion of, uh, of, la of last year so that uh, I can uh, I, I list uh, that this, uh, these issues are how to ensure that data shared by, by users is used for the benefit 
of youth and community. And um, the second issue is, uh, is uh, inevitable to live in a world without privacy. And then the third one is uh, how can uh, digital literacy and awareness can empower use and limit the control of companies and governments uh, they have in their lives. Okay, so this is our proposal for this year. And I can give the floor to Wim and maybe he wants to add some, some more uh, on this. Thank you. Thank you, Titi. Um, well, I would like to not specifically speak to, to this uh, proposal, but uh, prefer to give like a general comment as I have been working and supporting several, uh, several BPFs. Uh, what I think is important, and it comes back in, in the IoT proposal, but also in the cybersecurity and in the others, um, and it's linked a little bit to the uh, remark Utah made. Uh, it is important to look at BPFs as they are a MAC initiative, uh, but then uh, the purpose is to give ownership to the people that are participating. And to give ownership, you have to have the right people from the field that are outside the IGF. Uh, and you have to have those people around the table and your questions and you have to discuss with them uh, the questions, what is actually relevant for you and what are points and real challenges. So translating like the overall topic into real concrete challenges. And at that point you can, with those people, start to collect uh, best practices. Uh, and I think he, therefore, to go back to the, uh, the proposal Titi made, therefore it was um, the idea also to zoom in um, from the general issue into very specific questions uh, linked to that. And I don't know if uh, you mentioned, uh, if Titi mentioned it already, the idea was also to um, change the focus a little bit, or at least change the title in the, focus, in the title of the BPF from IoT, Big Data AI, to Big Data and Artificial Intelligence. That doesn't mean uh, that IoT uh, is no longer on the table or it is no longer covered, but an observation uh, I think we made uh, in the uh, um, last two years is that a lot of people are interested in IoT. Uh, a lot of people, for example, in IoT security, in developing and, and uh, the use of IoT, uh, but they come with a completely different interest to BPF and if you confront them with people and have them in a discussion of the, with the people that are uh, dealing with AI, artif uh, artificial intelligence, big data, um, they come for two, one or two calls and then all of a sudden they both say, well, it's not really my topic. Uh, so that's, uh, um, that's the reason why in, the, in this year's proposal it is also said, well, we, uh, or the BPF would uh, suggest to at least in the title uh, focus on uh, AI and uh, big data and no longer IoT. Um, but that's, that's from, for me. Uh, but later on in the discussion, I would be happy to also uh, answer questions because I think I have a good view on not only last two years BPFs, but on the, the practice of how BPFs work. And uh, uh, one point I maybe would um, like to make here is the MAC cannot underestimate the important role the MAC coordinators play and the other coordinators play. Um, it, I think it's often underestimated, but they, on one hand, are there to um, make sure the progress moves on, that the BPF is not like a standstill thing, that, that nothing has happened. They are very important also to reach out um, to those stakeholders outside the IGF, and they're also very important as um, to, I would say, guardians of the discussion um, to make sure on the one hand that not one stakeholder group or one party captures the whole discussion, also to be uh, there to, to um, make sure that, for example, the IGF code of conduct, the way how people interact, discuss on mailing lists during uh, APF calls uh, is, taking, is respected. So uh, that's something I really wanted to make. Thank you. Yes, I think that's very important. Just because there is the, the, the UN Trust Fund covers the time of a consultant to support 
the, the IGF. The role of that consultant is not to coordinate uh, the BPF, not to coordinate the BPF or drive the BPF, it's to support the MAG coordinators and the other um, practitioners and experts in the field that are, that are working there. I think uh, uh, that point is very, very important. And without that leadership um, coming from the MAG member, the, the the formula doesn't actually work. Next, we have um, do we have gender or which one is next? And that doesn't really matter. Gender and access. Thank you very much. Um, for the record, Maria Pascanales, um, co-facilitator with uh, Chennai Chair uh, from the BPF in uh, gender and access in last version, 2019. This is a, a BPF that have been keep uh, going uh, for at this point uh, five years almost. Uh, this will be the no, it, we already complete the, the fifth year, um, and in each version we have been uh, working deeper in uh, analyzing the different consideration regarding uh, internet governance. Uh, issues that are linked with uh, gender um, considerations. And the last version in 2019 was around a digital economy, understanding that uh, when we talk about gender and access, we are not only covering the, the connection, but what uh, happened after the access and how to fully ensure that women uh, and uh, uh, gender diverse people can fully participate and benefit from from internet and the experience during this last version uh, it has a, a combination of good things and uh, things that didn't work so well so uh, taking the invitation of Henriette to be very honest about how the 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 VPF work um, we confront uh, a number of issues in the work of the VPF uh, regarding the sustainable engagement of the community with the work of the, of the VPF. We have a, a list of participants uh, for the VPF that is quite active in general over the, the, the year, but uh, it's a, a list that at the end uh, of the work, uh, it have a little bit of a struggle to uh, provide more substantive input into the work. Um, we also confront the issue of the uh, challenge of having our consultant hired too late uh, during the process because we only had the, the consultant support from June, which uh, make it difficult also to move forward in the in the concretion of the of the um, uh, input for for the report. And. Uh, Overall, uh, the experience uh, was the result of the, of the, of the report. It was a, a, a good um, landscape of the different uh, challenges that uh, we confront in the space of uh, finding uh, places in, in, in the digital economy to discuss and address the issues of gender. Um, but we probably run short in more concrete suggestions in terms of policy, uh, mainly because we didn't have much time uh, for gathering additional support of current initiatives, and we, we struggled with uh, being on time for delivering uh, our, our report, even if our consultant, which was Andrea, as she mentioned it, worked hard to try to consolidate everything that it was available. So considering all these challenges, we uh, uh, think that's still uh, relevant and, and important to keep the work of the gen access and gender uh, BPF. Uh, we are not discouraged. We learn about this. Also, I have to be very honest that uh, this year, this BPF has two new co-facilitators who also we were uh, first year MAC members, so probably Part of the struggle was linked also with the lack of experience in, uh, from us uh, to properly handle and uh, a renovation in the community of participants because we have also co-facilitators that are not MAC members but also they renovate in a certain way. So being very honest about all that struggle, I, we still find value in the work in the community that is built and we are proposing during this year you, you can see we were a little bit late with the proposal but it, it's already uploaded in the web page and uh, what we are um, proposing to work during this version of 2020 of the general access bpf is linked to more consistently review 
how the gender consideration and the gender approach can be inserted in the policy making processes in a mainstream way. And why we come up with this topic, uh, it was precisely because uh, during the, the building of the last report and during the conversation afterwards and during the BBF uh, session at the IGF in Berlin, uh, we realized that many of the subjects that were touched on in the previous version of the BPF are still uh, issues that are ongoing and, and very much not solved. And a lot of that is linked uh, with the fundamental issue of how we haven't been totally successful of mainstream the consideration about gender in the policy making processes. So uh, this is an opportunity of a uh, uh, build on top of all that experience in the specific topics and revisit the places in which the policy making process will benefit from concrete uh, uh, suggestion about how to uh, standardize and increase uh, the uh, specific um, instances in which these gender issues are fitted in a, in, in a more consistent way in the policy making process in different spaces. And link it with the comment that have been made uh, uh, previously for, for many of you that have more experience with the work of BPF. I truly believe that the engagement of uh, more MAC members during this year in the work of this BPF, and particularly probably members that are government representatives, it will be essential. I encourage my colleagues to join us, to work with us, to provide us uh, more uh, feedback about a uh, governmental experience in this uh, uh, input of the, um, of the uh, gender consideration in the mainstream of policy making. There are very good examples around the world as the Canadian government that provide a, a full policy in how to insert the gender consideration in any kind of policy making, but I'm pretty sure there are more experience over there and I encourage you as a MAG member representative of governments around the world to come uh, uh, to us, to work with us or point it out to, to the right places to look at it. That's my side. I don't know if Chennai maybe has something to comment. Thanks. Chennai, do you have anything to add? Um, thank you very much, Andrea. Thank you, Maria Paz, for setting the scene and actually going deep into the uh, proposal. I think just one more thing to add is that what I think is quite useful about this BPF, as long as we've been around since 2015, is that we're taking this here as an opportunity to reflect on the different work areas that we've actually looked at. And then t I think it does speak into the outcomes issue to actually say the work we've done has either impacted or not impacted, and then is able to be something that can be used by the IJS space to actually reflect on when you do create these spaces, do we have to continuously answer the question or do we have to figure out a way to um, answer the question innovatively? So I do think that this year's process should also be considered as a reflection by the um, BPF. And then also I think we're taking on a suggested framework by the community, the feminist framework, because the Canadian government, ha for example, which we're drawing on from, has actually said they have a feminist internet policy. So a feminist foreign policy. Yes. A Thank you, Anuit. A feminist foreign policy. So I do think it would be interesting and quite a critical point to use it as what does it, um, how does that framework re, um, react and is received within the Internet Governance Forum space? So I'm looking forward to having more participation, especially from the government community within the BPF. Thank you. And the business sector as well. Thanks, um, Chennai. Any questions for these proponents? I mean, I have one, and that is actually based on having worked uh, with the BPF, is that it's very, it's still very broad. And I think that in the way that, with, with, the, with the question from last year, which was women and gender diverse participation in, in the digital economy, that is just massively broad. And I think similarly, looking at, 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 at gender in policy processes, um, you know, it might be worth looking at because you have a one-year uh, work timeline, which is something we can discuss, identifying one or maybe two. If you want to look at foreign policy, then maybe use that, because I think that's the difficulty. If, if the work of the BPF involves scoping a huge terrain, 
um, you spend more time on the scoping and the analyzing of the context than you know than, than you actually have to then get to the point of identifying the best practices. So I think, and I think what we've seen with, with, with some of the BPFs is that, you know, the narrower you, you, you go, the more specific you, you can be in identifying best practices. Um, and you can either do that by narrowing down on the work of the previous year, as some BPFs have done, or if you're taking on a slightly new topic, just make sure that, that, your, that your initial terrain is narrow and specific enough for you to get to the point where you can actually identify specific best practices. I think that, that's just, that was just my experience with, with working with the, with the scope of participation in, in digital economy, because it just involves so many different uh, areas of policy and, and practice. And I think participation um, in policy processes is also huge. To that and I think that is not exclusive of this uh, BPF but it's a general comment like very much linked also with what Judah mentioned before about uh, what is the perception of BPF and the Wim's comments on the same line. I think that is relevant to understand that there is an uh, internal tension in the work of the BPF because as co-facilitators uh, we try to keep this in a scope that will allow us to have a more concrete uh, outcome of the VPF in terms of recommendation about, or, or in, term, in terms of mapping of good practices that was reminded that it was the original purpose of the VPF, but also because this is something that is owned by the community. There is an internal tension of the community to expand because every time that you try to narrow down, people uh, consider that there are things that are left out that are relevant. So I think that in that sense, maybe, I don't know, it's a suggestion, or again, not for over-engineering the processes, but maybe to have some kind of guidelines in terms of the orientation of the uh, outcome expected uh, of the VPF uh, that make more explicit some of these original consideration that are in the history it will be something good in terms of moderate this expectation that can be an, uh, be in tension inside the world of VPF because otherwise we all the time we are in this tension for example, what uh, Wim was uh, uh, describing about IoT is something that also can happen in our uh, gender uh, access VPF because we have also the issue of how uh, women uh, consideration or feminist approach might or not might be the same ones for gender diverse people in the open mic of the of the session in IGF and also in the BPF session that we have the words of mentioning about like having separate discussion for gen gender diverse people so those kind of tension are always present and maybe some kind of guideline in terms of the scope expected would be helpful in terms of moderate expectation and provide the sense the sense of ownership in any case from the community of the VPF. Just that. Um, a good point. Um, good Anna, you have your, your flag up and Chennai then we'll come to you. No, we'll, shall we, we'll take the questions first. Chennai, is that okay? And then we'll come to you. Thank you. And um, as a new MAG member, I'm learning, so uh, um, this might not be relevant, but uh, I just thought uh, in, in terms of a BPFs, uh, looking, looking a year ahead, would it, would it be appropriate to use the, the main three themes that we have and the uh, discussions um, during the IGF about those themes, the introduction and the the breaking out of groups and so forth, where there are particular issues identified. And uh, for example, with digital inclusion, I mean, Susan summarized some of the, some of the issues that came out and, and maybe um, the, the leaders of those um, particular thematic tracks can, can look at uh, specific issues that come out of each of those three th thematic tracks and say, well, this needs to be drilled down and looked at in more detail, and maybe that could form a future BPF in the following year. Thank you. 
Um, yes, in fact, I would like people to break out into groups uh, before, before lunch to look at um, that uh, closer integration of intersessional work in principle. But we also have to consider the fact that, that, that that's a new idea and, and, and if we want to work with that idea, we can't, we have to do that in a way that still re respects the fact that there's an existing process and we, we put out a call for, for proposals. But I think there's definitely uh, ideas in the room about how to maybe find a way of doing at least part of that. So let's move on a little bit. Let's, let's take your question and then we'll have Chennai respond and, and then vote. Vote, you have a question first. A specific question for the gender and access BPF. Leave the general questions for a little bit, uh, points for later. Thank you, Madam. My name is Xiaofeng. Back to BPF, BD and AI. I prefer sticking with IoT, BD and AI. IoT for information collecting, BD for data analysis, and AI for making decision. This is a procedure for information processing. IoT will play a very important role in recent years. Thank you. Um, thanks for that. And I think the, po the, the I mean, m maybe do you want to respond to that? Uh, um, why you are changing the name? And um, do you want to repeat why? Because it's not saying that IoT is not an important issue. I don't think that was your intention, was it? Definitely not. The intention is more based on um, uh, the experience that in the last two years uh, there is a lot of work going on and discussions going on around IoT. Uh, very practical, going from uh, IoT infrastructure, uh, developing new products, uh, a very important track on cybersecurity. And the um, BPF was always looking at, look, we look look at the new technologies and the development of the new technologies and exactly in the way you, you mentioned, uh, for example, uh, the focus is where IoT is used to collect the data uh, and then artificial intelligence is uh, used to analyze the data and then take decisions and how that everything like that happens, that process happens in an internet context. Um, the observation was that there were people interested, they saw IoT on the, in the title, they came to the, the, the BPF, they discussed or they were participating in one or two calls. Often also gave very useful, well, gave input that pushed the, um, uh, the BPF in a certain direction. Uh, but then there were other people that were more uh, focused on, on the policy, for example, the, the data, privacy, those discussions. Uh, and we notice that then it doesn't fit uh, those, those two different discussions. They don't fit together. And um, then you end up with, with losing people and losing people's attention. So that's, that's the only reason. Uh, it's definitely not to exclude um, IoT. It's more to, uh, let's say, to avoid that the IoT-specific discussions uh, or people that are really involved in IoT-specific discussions uh, don't look at the BPF as that uh, a uh, uh, where we should go to. Thanks. And I'd like us to speed up a little bit, please. Um, Chennai, do you still want to respond? I will make the responses very brief. I think in terms of the narrowing of the scope, completely agree. And as Maria Paz has pointed out, balancing our needs to make sure that it's scoped down to the community wanting everything to be included. But I think that's the role of the coordinator, um, not the coordinator, the consultant that will be brought in because I've seen past PBS where the consultant comes in a little bit earlier. There's much more work that's done prior to making sure that you get one concrete question coming in. Um, and then secondly, with regards to linking the intersessional works and as had been pointed out that the BPF on gender does have issues that feed into the other BPFs. My suggestion going forward would be maybe getting the consultants to actually sit together, together with the MAG coordinators to see what may be the emerging issues that may come out so that it does not seem as if we're working in silos and talk about security within the gender uh, BPF and then it doesn't even come out in the 
um, other BP if they may be dealing with data. So that is my suggestion. Thank you. Thanks for that, Chennai. So now let's move on to local content. Carlos here. Uh, the BPF was um, facilitated by, co-facilitated by me and uh, Giacomo Azzoni and uh, with the tremendous help from the Henriette as, a, as the consultant. And uh, as, an, as an introduction, I would say that uh, the 2018 BPF on local content, uh, it uh, was built on the 217 work and considered the relations between development and the growth of a local internet content, as well as the availability of content and services that are relevant for the local internet user. It intended to focus on the local development of content and the local content value chain, considering three basic aspects, new self-sustaining models for local content creation, the development of an enabled What? <laughs> a, a computer is talking to me. <laughs> so new self-sustaining modules for local content, what, that was the basic aspects treated in, in 2018. The development of uh, enabling the environment for local content creation and existing modules promoting, supporting, or subsidizing local content creation. Last year, we advanced the agenda by adding issues such as preserving and enhancing local cultural assets, discussing the protection of community intellectual property rights with special emphasis on preservation and promotion of languages and heritage under conditions in which cultural and linguistic diversity are sometimes at risk as a result of political and social shifts and crises. It also stressed the relevance of capacity development in secure digitization or digitization and described experiences related to these issues. A call for contributions received 26 responses which were consolidated in the report, thanks to the wonderful help of our consultants. As was raised during the discussion in the BPF session in Berlin, Beside the problem of the access to the internet, the other tough goal is to make possible broad access to local or regional contents and services, and not to just make accessible global contents and services. In this sense, in Berlin emerged a clear need to broaden the scope of this BPF on how, to, on how copyright and content protection could become tools to preserve and protect local creativity and community of authors and not as a form to impose external cultures and cultural goods across the world. We have reason to think that the main issues taken up in 2019 are still very pertinent to the continuation of this BPF in 2020. And I think finally the, this BPF at least should make a stronger effort to reach the community and disseminate outcomes and the need to capture initiatives and practices. The proposal which is uh, uh, in, the, in the site details much more the ideas for the 2020 BPF continuation. Thank you. Any questions for, for the local content BPF? By the way, the, the reports of these, the outcome documents of, of these uh, BPFs are all on the website. You, you, you can look at them. Um, um, there's, you know, there's actually, they, there's a lot of value in using those um, reports. Questions for local content? Remote? No, it's just, a, if I can recommend, if you don't mind, we can use the, the speaking queue when the floor is open because it helps the scratch to identify the next person. Okay. Right. So a reminder from Louise that please you should use the, the um, the speaking queue um, on the website to request the floor. We have reverted to flags, you're right, Louise. So please add your name to the speaking queue, but in the meantime, if you have a flag, you can wave it. No, no questions um, for that. I mean, I, I, yeah, I think, Carlos, so, the, so, so if I understand correctly, the idea of different ways of approaching 
copyright and content licensing, that has emerged as a specific issue that you want to, to look at. That was, I mean, they, I think what we found uh, with the report was that, that, that people are developing different ways of approaching um, copyright. Um, um, and, and also, copyright emerged both as an enabler and in some instances uh, a disabler. And I thought that was really interesting because you have um, some of the, the participants in the BPF felt very strongly that stronger intellectual property uh, regulation um, was a good enabler of preserving um, content. Others felt that it was a disabler. But then there was a third track of people developing different ways of, of developing um, content licensing, which was very interesting, where you actually have business and communities and, and uh, organizations like WIPO forming partnerships. So, so, so is that, is that, am I right? Is that going to be the specific focus? Yes, that's one of the focus. The other is secure digitization because there are lots of uh, experiences of digitization in which, well, it's fantastic to have everything in digital form, but also the security of that uh, storage is always at risk. So you have to think of secure ways to digitize. You know? There are, we had accounts of experiences that uh, they lost everything after digitizing and it's terrible. You know, backup systems, et cetera, that didn't work and so on. So this is another, another uh, uh, th theme that we would like to collect experiences about. That's right. You know, we worked a lot with the library community and Oh, sorry, if there are no questions for local content, let's move on to the next proposal, which is a new proposal. Um, Karim, that's your proposal on a BPF on um, um, d digital um, internet business and economic models. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I've done this personally, but I wanted to, to really congratulate um, Karim for taking the, the um, initiative to propose something in his first year as a new MAG member. I think it's fantastic, and you shouldn't, even if it doesn't go ahead, I think that is really a, a, a very positive move to see from a new MAG member. Congratulations. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, uh, yes, I uh, admit that the presentation of my uh, proposal is not uh, consistent, relevant, uh, uh, if we compare it uh, with the uh, other proposal, but I, uh, I tried to, to come out with um, uh, an idea from uh, work that we, we had to discuss uh, during African IGF. And um, uh, if I took a look on all uh, BPF uh, proposed uh, on last years, I, uh, I noticed that uh, we, we, we have something uh, looks like mist. Uh, perhaps I'm, uh, I didn't have the, uh, the right time to, to read all the uh, materials, but in terms of um, internet um, business and uh, economic model, uh, we, we, uh, we had to discuss uh, on something on uh, internet uh, taxes uh, regarding to the GAFA. Uh, if we, we analyze uh, the challenge in terms of infrastructure development at uh, uh, developing countries uh, and uh, the, the shift from circuit uh, um, uh, switching network to packet switch uh, network, we, we have a lot of service and content provider from abroad uh, that impact uh, the needs in terms of broadband, in terms of infrastructure development at local level uh, that uh, uh, remain to local uh, uh, actors. So n now my, the idea is that to, to try to, to see how we can address this issue 
because uh, we have some regulatory actions, some regulatory uh, uh, introduce some taxes on, uh, for example, um, video uh, or, uh, messenger, uh, VIP, some um, uh, economic, uh, uh, for example, in Europe, uh, we have uh, tax, uh, GAFA tax, but I think that uh, re uh, regarding the region, regarding the specific uh, economic on each uh, region, I think that we can learn from experience, from best experience, and uh, to see uh, the, w the, the right way to guarantee uh, uh, internet uh, sustainability and development. This is the scope of uh, my proposal. I, I saw the other uh, proposal, and I think that I, we can work on it and uh, to improve it might be on the next uh, uh, round. Thank you. Thanks very much, Karim. Are there questions for Karim? Ben. And, and please do use the speaking queue. Wallace, for the record. Um, so, Henriette, just to share your comments before I give my thoughts on the proposal, um, to congratulate you, Karim, on, on bringing forward a substantive proposal in, in your first few weeks on the MAG took me a lot longer to, to find my feet and develop confidence to, to make proposals in this forum. Um, so I think the proposal contains a number of topical issues. Um, for example, how to manage taxation of global companies. That's clearly a, a current issue which the OECD has been grappling with <clears throat> for a couple of years. And, and I'm very hopeful they're actually going to find a, a compromise solution this year. And the questions of how the telecommunications sector should adapt to the internet economy. Um, I think they've been discussed in a, in a council working group of the ITU and are still being discussed in, in ITT study group three. So it might well be that these issues are already being discussed in relevant decision making bodies, or it could be that there are already a lot of potential solutions and best practices for the IGF to explore. Um, I do think, Kareem, that your proposal um, suffer somewhat from, from coming from too narrow a perspective. So I, I think it does reflect the challenges that face the telecommunications sector in some countries, but it doesn't reflect perspectives um, of other parts of the private sector. Um, and I'm not sure to what extent it reflects um, perspectives of other stakeholder groups. And I'll just give you a couple of examples um, to explain so I understood the proposal as saying that the companies which provide internet applications pose unfair challenges to internet service providers. Well, another perspective could be that internet application providers, they actually drive demand for the service of ISPs. The fact that people want to get online and use social media means that customers will need to buy bigger data packages from ISPs. And that increased revenue should, should help with building out the, the infrastructure. And the other example is I had the impression from the proposal that you see net neutrality is potentially an unwelcome constraint for ISPs. Um, but I think internet application companies, certainly Microsoft, and other stakeholders see net neutrality as a vital principle um, of internet governance. So I think that if we were to take this topic of internet business models forward, whether as an international, international work stream of some sort, maybe even as a main session in Katowice, I think it would be important to think about how we could broaden it to reflect the needs and perspectives of a broader range of stakeholders, not just within the private sector stakeholder group, but also the interests of citizens, the challenges that are faced by governments and regulators in tackling these questions and adapting um, to the internet economy. Thanks. Um, Roberto. Thank you, Madam Chair. Well, actually, this is an issue that I've been thinking of from the last three years uh, in when I was involved in the, our LAC AGF first in 2017 and later on. Uh, also, during my participations in NRI group during the last two years. And I think it, uh, it's an issue that's um, affecting not only our region, 
as I'm saying now, it's only it's also affecting African region. What I'm what I'm saying uh, local region. I'm talking about the Latin American area, and uh, I think the problem with the business model is affecting, of course, the accessibility to to the people in our countries. I will say that to different uh, in a difference to the whole world, our penetration is really less than 30 uh, percent, despite all the efforts that were done for the telecommunication companies. I mean, we do have infrastructure, we do have mobile internet services, but the business model is uh, is really old for our for our uh, budget capacities. So I think this is a really, really big problem, and I think this is important to, to face in the, in the closer future, hopefully through this kind of uh, best practice groups, uh, perhaps in order to think in more creative ways to, to face how can we reduce the, the, the prices of this service in our countries. I know this is not a problem in Europe, it's not a problem in the U.S., I mean, not a big problem, but it's a really big problem in our region. So that's why it's important. And I totally support this from Karim, and hopefully some others do, and we'll actually will be able to put this best practice group in place. Thank you. Thanks, Roberto. Susan. Thank you, Chair. And... Um... Thank you, Kareem, again for uh, proposing a, a BPF in your first year as a MEG member. I think that's excellent. Um, and <clears throat> so I, uh, I, I would say, actually, I've been, uh, folks have been thinking about this issue since much longer than three years. I mean, the, the title reminds me of um, the Wicket in 2012. And uh, so I do think it's a very well-discussed topic. Um, and as Ben has mentioned, there is work going on on this topic elsewhere. Um, that, uh, that's only to say my question would be what, what is new? What can the IGF and the BPF um, bring to the discussion that hasn't been um, um, brought before? Um, I think that should be a criteria, by the way, for evaluating the BPFs. Um, I think that what we could bring to the discussion within this unique multi-stakeholder environment is, again, that diversity of perspective. Um, so I also did find that the proposal was from one perspective in particular, um, and I don't think it is up to a BPF to find, quote, the right way um, to approach um, uh, funding for internet infrastructure and different b business models for a best practice forum, just recalling what um, Marcus had as Marcus gave us an introduction. Um, I think it's useful to look at a plurality of different business models, not just one. Um, and so to that extent, I would suggest that we take time to um, approach the proposal um, with, um, I mean, there are a plurality of topics in there, uh, net neutrality, OTT, taxation. Um, so I would suggest that we maybe take another step together um, as a group and then see if we can narrow it down a little bit and think about a multi-stakeholder approach to the topic. Um, thanks, um, Susan. Yes, and I mean, I think there also has been some work done on the IGF, uh, in the IGF on, for example, um, social media taxes, because the problem is, is still there. I mean, the, for countries that are landlocked or small island de developing states, um, getting the revenue needed to build the basic infrastructure um, um, when the demand side uh, for, for, for bandwidth is expanding and completely outweighs what you have on the supply side um, remains a massive problem. And I think one of the responses we've seen in Africa anyway are taxes on voice over internet and, and social media, which then actually um, um, increases the, the cost at the end user level. So I think the problem remains, I think it has changed a little bit since 2012. Um, 
Um, and it has been discussed. I think, uh, Karim, you, you should probably also look at the, the transcripts and outcomes of workshops. Um, um, and then I think, as, as has been said, there are, it's an issue that impacts on different stakeholders in different ways. But I think the problem absolutely um, is one that is still very topical. Okay, we, um, vote. Are you, do you want to present your, your um, proposal? You have the floor. Oh, sorry, you had a question to Maya. I see you just now. Go ahead. Sorry, sorry, I was in the queue um, online. <laughs> so maybe it's a bit of, I, I don't want to take up much of the time. Um, I just wanted to, you know, maybe this is repetitive, but I really want to congratulate Karim uh, on um, his spirit of initiative <laughs> uh, uh, from the first moments on, on the time of the MAG. Uh, I think that's that's great and should be encouraged so colleagues uh, feel inspired by, by our new um, business representative on the MAG. Um, with that, uh, I also understand from, from Karim's intervention that, that um, he invited our input and our help to make this um, proposal um, fully fledged and, 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 you know, workable for the community. So I want to, um, you know, ask this from, from the MAG, if, if, what is the procedure here? Can we take some more time to, to work together uh, or are we to make a decision here? Because I think there's different levels of, um, detail in the proposals uh, that we've heard so far. Um, that's one thing. The other thing that I wanted to um, to talk about is how can we connect, and this is also a challenge for new MAG members, how can we connect our ideas and proposals um, to what has happened before? And I'm thinking here, um, and yet you mentioned workshops and others, um, I think there was discussions in dynamic coalitions as well in many of those topics. There was also discussions in the CNB. I don't know what which year it was that, that looked into um, um, connectivity models, but I think that there was work done there as well. So maybe we want to wait through that um, array of input and make sure that we connect it um, with this issue. Um, and then I want to echo um, some of the, the thoughts that, that my colleagues have voiced before on work going on elsewhere. And, and I'm also thinking about um, the work on taxation of the digital economy that's currently going on in the OECD. Um, from what I understand, the, the ambitious goal of the OECD is to have something ready by the G20 process this year. Um, so perhaps it would be a good opportunity for the IGF community to reflect on what's coming out from that process, maybe in a main session or in another way uh, later on in the year. Um, and that also links with what our Polish hosts were, were talking about earlier today, um, or was it yesterday, on um, um, regulatory um, um, aspects of the work in the EU that might also come up to the end of the year that also links with parts of this. So I don't know um, if there are work, there's a lot of work going on right now um, that is culminating very soon, um, if it's the right moment for the IGF to provide input um, ex ante, or is it better for us to do an ex post input? So that's a question to, um, to Karim and, and to uh, all of us here. And then thirdly, um, and that's my last point um, about, um, I think it was Ben who, who brought it up um, about um, sectoral um, interests and, and scope and, and narrowness or, or, or breadth uh, of the work at the IGF. Um, and I tend to believe that the IGF is, uh, is there to accommodate views in an ecosystem um, perspective, um, to hear uh, concerns um, from, from all sectors and to hear um, ideas on advancement from all sectors as well. Um, so if we were to take um, work on this forward, uh, I, I think it's, it's good to, um, to make sure that, that we hear all voices and we don't say this is the best <laughs> practice, but these are the practices out there. These are the views out there and, and provide a menu that, has, that we've done before. So those are the three things that I wanted to, um, to put on the record here. Thank you. I think but useful points and particularly in the light of the fact that the G20 and the OECD includes only a fraction of who makes up the IJF community, which, which is actually much broader than those that are part of the OECD um, or G20. So, but I think that that point about working on that and linking that work to, to the IGF community, I think that's definitely worth thinking about. How can the IGF actually add value 
by linking people that are not directly part of those discussions, but that can really benefit from them. Um, Rudolf, and then um, I'm going to give Karim the chance to respond. And then I, let me just tell you what the process is. Vote is going to, to present his ideas. I'm then going to ask everyone to break up into groups, because I think you do your best work when you break up into groups. And I will ask those groups to, to reflect on the proposals that you heard, um, to come up with questions and suggestions, uh, decisions, if you have them, on these current uh, BPF proposals. But I also want you to, in those groups, talk about item two on today's agenda, which is strategies for collaboration and complementarity across intersessional work. And I'll elaborate on that, but let's first just complete our round of input. Um, Rudolf. Thank you very much. Um, Rudolf Kriedl from uh, Germany Government Stakeholder Group. I have a question um, because, to my knowledge, the number of BPFs that we can approve is limited. Um, and I wanted to know how many BPFs can we retain, especially if we break out for uh, working groups later on. Um, it's important to know uh, how many funds are available, how many BPFs will there be uh, at the end uh, feasible. Secretariat, how many BPFs um, can um, the IGF Trust Fund currently provide support for with financial implications? Um, again, it's not a straight and simple answer as such. <laughs> Because we do have a pot of funds, but we have to be very careful with those funds because if we add somewhere, we have to subtract somewhere. Um, so that's what we have to think about. And we also have to think about, is it, re re is it really worthwhile um, looking at everything else that we have to do to have this other additional um, BP? F. Um, <clears throat> usually it's a good idea to have it in pairs because we can have one consultant. To, I mean, this is just mathematics. I'm not talking, um, you know, <laughs> to, to have it in pairs. So, I mean, it's, it's not every, but we were thinking that if we could maintain four, that would be good. Okay. Mm. So the planning essentially is for four, but what you are hearing is respect coming from Secretariat and a commitment to be responsive to, to input from, from the MAG, um, but, but there are real limitations. So if there are five or six BPFs, that does mean that those resources would have to be taken from, from other budget lines. But, but I, I asked them this previously, Rudolf, and they, they want to, to, to be responsive rather than prescriptive, but the planning um, is anticipating that, that no more than four would be easily accommodatable. Okay, so um, vote. Um, oh, so, well, no, no, sorry, I want to give Karim the um, opportunity to, to respond. Um, Carlos, is your comment a general comment? Regarding oh, you Karim. have Roberto first. Sorry, I'm getting confused myself now. <laughs> so <laughs> we, have, um, we have Roberto, Jennifer, Ananda. Is that on general comments or on this digital, this business model BPF? Business model BPF. Okay, so um, Roberto. Let me turn off this. Uh, oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. In my case, it's both. Uh, uh, just to close my intervention regarding the business model, I'm not talking about the OTT aspect itself. I'm talking about the general business model that we are in our currently suffering in our countries. Um, just an example, we are still paying internet by the megabyte. So it's really hard for us in our countries to make it affordable. So that's a big issue. I'm not talking about the solution as to, Im to implement a new tax for the OTTs. So uh, let that for me to be clear. Well, in the second part, I am also concerned in this new stage we're going to have working in groups. Uh, what are going to be the parameters for evaluation? Because it's really hard to sus subtract one of these important, very important themes, very important BPFs, uh, if we can't actually analyze. And I'm, I, 
if I know that all of them are really important in terms of the subject they are dealing with, but perhaps we need to, and that's the question, if we, we need to evaluate in terms of certain parameters, like if they were success, successful during the last years, they were up, uh, regarding to the outcomes actually they were achieving. That's a question. Thank you. Okay, we'll come back to that. Um, next we have, um, Carlos, are you in the speaking queue? I think you were and then we lost you also. So, yes, so you go, go quickly and then we'll have Jennifer. Very quick. Uh, I don't know, uh, I don't have in my memory all the 14 or 15 uh, dynamic coalitions, but I wonder if Karin's uh, uh, proposal could fit into one of the, the dynamic coalitions we already have. I'm not sure. Just, this is a question. That's one of the things I would like the breakout groups to look at. So, so let's flag that for something for the breakout groups to consider. Um, next we have Jennifer. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, my intervention is more general. Um, just recalling that one of our colleagues, uh, my colleague Sylvia, did put um, a question to the list prior to this, and she seemed very interested also to participate in the protests. Uh, process. Um, I notice she's not online, so I just want to caution us, like, if we are to make decisions after the breakout groups to consider bag members who may not be currently in the room and have very difficult time zone constraints. Thank you. Yes, I'm, I'm going to ask you to, to look at that as well in your groups. Um, Ananda. Thank, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I have two comments. Uh, one is on the BPF proposal on internet business uh, slash economic model. This is going to be, if we adopt this, uh, going to be very interesting, but at the same time, it's going to be very controversial. I cite my own country's case. I was heading a study group on formulating the regulatory framework for OTTs in Nepal. And finally, I concluded my report was that it's too early uh, to come up with a regulatory framework that uh, requires registration of uh, these big companies who provides the OTT services. And if they don't come, what are, are we going to do? For example, in the 2019 uh, IGF in Berlin, I attended one of the session, the European Commission's uh, GDPR the governments don't have the technical platform to monitor the compliance of GDPR law itself. So having a law or a regulation or anything is, uh, is, sounds good, but if you don't know how to implement it, how to monitor it, it's going to be useless, futile attempt. And it's going to be very, very controversial if, uh, you know, uh, in a forum like IGF. That's the first point. Second point is the number of uh, the BPF and the fund constraint. In ITU, uh, each uh, study qu group has questions, and these questions are uh, headed by rapporteur and vice rapporteurs under the guidance of chairman and vice chairman. So that doesn't cost uh, much. We don't have uh, you know, consultants for each study questions. So if somebody is interested, who proposes, let them be the rapporteur and responsibility vested on the rapporteur and other MAG members to contribute and come up with a report. So no additional cost should incur. Thank you. Thanks for that suggestion, um, Ananda. So you're suggesting that we should uh, consider having BPFs that are not um, funded. Okay, next we have Christine. Thank you, Chair. Um, I wanted to come um, on, the, on the proposal of Karim, um, and I wanted us to reflect on um, uh, how this can address actually um, the needs of 
uh, the special stakeholders in developing countries because uh, yeah the OECD was mentioned but also if we look at other regions uh, the both regions that I come from whether the Arab region or the uh, African region this is an important topic that's being discussed in many venues uh, and um, I would suggest that uh, that we seriously consider uh, supporting um, uh, this proposal. And um, even if it's going to be, uh, it would have some controversy, I think it is worth um, uh, tackling it. It's worth uh, putting it on the table and discussing it, especially if we're talking about um, uh, parliamentarians and how to involve them. I think this topic is very important uh, also for the parliamentarians to consider as they are looking at laws uh, that uh, look into taxes and things like that. So um, uh, putting uh, the different practices that are, are there on the table is would be very important in my view. Thank you. Um, thanks, Christine. Paul. And, and um, um, Zhao Yu Ji. We, you'll be the last person to speak on this before we give the floor back to Karim. Thank you, Chair. Uh, just a general thought. Uh, it might have been captured. I apologize if it has, but uh, I have a feeling we, we should look at restricting BPFs to emerging and evolving priorities, uh, that we need to contain the lifespan of a BPF. You know, it shouldn't be an indefinite process, and we have a tendency of keeping things alive. Uh, so maybe we, we might not need to start prescribing uh, the maximum term that a BPF can continue for. It is, you know, the BPF should end up with some tangible output. You know, the best practices, that's uh, an output. Uh, yeah, and yeah, we should try and avoid it becoming a mainstream continuous, keep the BPF, same BPF alive. Thank you. Thanks for that, Paul. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, just a, a very brief comment on this uh, new proposal on Internet business models. I think that the Internet business models are, are different across countries. It, it is a really important uh, topic for developing countries. I can give you an example in, in China, for example, we have Alipay and WeChat which are a little a bit different from other countries, but uh, uh, our farmers in very remote area can use the services and to uh, sell their pro products to very big cities, municipalities. I think it's, it's, a, it's a very important issue for developing countries. Uh, so I, I personally support this uh, the new proposal and I, I uh, encourage all colleagues to give very positive consideration in this regard and maybe with some uh, minor changes on the, uh, on the title or the, or the name of, uh, of the, to, to, you know, to, to make it more specific. Thank you. Thanks very much. So, um, yes, well, I kind of, I, are you finished? Are you leaving? Or were you? No, let me, I, I want to give you the floor because I know you can't be here. It's a general comment. It's not related to Karim's proposal. It's a general remark. So park it a little bit because we're nearly there. Um, Karim, do you have responses at this point? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, uh, uh, colleagues. Um, uh, if um, if I had uh, all responses on uh, all uh, questions and remarks, I, I will not su submit uh, the, the proposal, and uh, I will not invite uh, all of you to support and uh, to join and uh, try to work on it. Um, uh, thank you for all your remarks, and I think that yes, uh, we we can uh, we can work together. Uh, to 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 see how to uh, re, 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 um, define uh, all components uh, to come out with um, a proper proposal, uh, and yes, uh, if we can uh, we can start working on it, uh, because in my point of view, I think that the global IGF uh, might be the starting point of all uh, next IGF or it could be the, the achievement of all uh, bottom-up IGF. If we rely on what is done 
during the year from uh, countries, uh, regional and uh, continent uh, IGF, we, we can come at the global um, fora with issues and um, all uh, problem addressed uh, from, from bottom. If we'd like to, to define what should be uh, discussed uh, uh, by um, a top level uh, initiative, I think that we will miss a lot of things that happen in uh, different regions, in different uh, specific economy. And uh, yes, I welcome all your proposition uh, to work together uh, and to try to refine it and uh, come out with a, a, a good one. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for that, Karim. Um, vote. Do you have a BPF proposal or is your, your proposal something somewhat different? Um, um, can you give us some brief remarks on that? Uh, thank you, Chair. I had a presentation. Can you put it up, uh, Louise? Don't, I don't think we have time to do the presentation yeah, right now. My message won't come across. It's but is your, is your um, I think if you can just clarify for us whether you are requesting um, a BPF for your activity okay. or not. Because that's my understanding was that um, you, you were not specifically asking the MAG to approve it as a BPF, is that correct? Well, now that the option is on the table to have a self-funded BPF, then I would definitely go for that one. It's not on the table yet. I know, but if that's, that is an option, that, that would be ideal. Um, I've been having some contact yesterday on the idea of a dynamic coalition, and it's not supported. Just look around how many times has something coming out of a dynamic coalition been discussed here. That is zero, comma zero. In other words, what the, my constituents are proposing is to have the IGF look at a long-term serious issue that is not being solved in any way and bring all the capacity that the IGF brings together in the world to solve the problem of the deployment or implementation of internet standards forward. And if we look at the two months that I was able to work on it since it was funded, well, that's I would hope to have a few minutes on to present because it's astonishing what two months actually did with the input from the whole of the IGF community. It's not myself doing this, this is the input and with support from a very, very broad section of the IGF constituency. So in other words, I would like to have, say about 10 minutes to present results and I'll skip the whole intro as I think I said enough about that in the past days. But I would like to see what the IGF is capable of and make you understand what this beast actually can do if used right. So please consider, give me a few minutes, I'll skip all the first slide. Sorry, 10 minutes is too long. But um, I think if you can just do three minutes, that would be good. So if you, Louise, can you bring up the, the, the one, the main, yes. Put your mic on, please. Switch off because you push your button. Um, please go to slide four to start, uh, Luis. So this is it. In the internet, why internet standards? It's an internet security, which is a major issue. And many solutions are already exist, except they are severely underused. And oh, next slide, please. So this is what we are talking about. DNSSEC secures domain names, RPKI secures routing, BCP38 secures email, OWASP top 10 secures website, the ISO, ISO standard secures information, and there's one below that which is safe software principles. So they're not internet standards as, as such, but they all will solve a part of the problem we daily face on abuse and cybercrime. So is the IGF capable of producing? Well, I'm here. And there were two questions, what are causes for slow deployment and what are ways forward? And let's go out from there and I'll skip everything that I've been doing. There are six recommendations. Please, one more, uh, two more slides. One more, no more. Yes, the six recommendations. Create a business case, 
either legislate or reg regulate, which we're not pushing forward, but this is what kind of came out of the community. Security needs to be built into products. They need to be disseminated in a clear, understandable way. Education has to change, and communication on internet standards is pivotal. So I'll skip the next one and the next one and go to conclusions. So what we found out is that le everybody says what is solves this problem is legislation, is the easiest route. But if you ask people how, they said we don't want regu regu regulation or legislation. So in other words, nobody wants that. So you need to have something else. What we also found is that an internet standard is not a standard in the official legal context. It's even formally excluded in laws. And everybody's talking about the public core of the internet and protecting it. And it's not in anywhere in the law mentioned. So in other words, when the European Commission told me this ticks all our boxes, this project, there's no box to tick. Literally, there's no box to tick in the EU because it's not there. It's excluded in formal text in, next slide please. What is extremely important that the technical community is brought in to discuss this with policymakers, with industry, etc., because there is a complete lack of communication and everybody is pointing to that. The Internet of Things is moving towards regulation, so I think we can drop that as a topic. Uh, education programs need to become better and there's a role for government, but which one that is to decide. So potential actions. And that is why we, I'm asking for a continuation of this, uh, of this uh, pilot project. The first one is we need to think about what is, it, what is a positive business case when you want to deploy internet standards. At this moment, moment, there is no case, nothing. There's no stick, there's no carrot, there's nothing in place. And nobody cares if you deploy or not. You're not getting recommended, you're not getting told down, whatever. So if we don't want legislation or regulation, we need to determine whether these arguments are valid. Because nobody knows, it's just opinions. So we need to check that. And what can regulators actually, actually do under current law? It could be that under liability or a duty of care, etc., there are options already, but we need to determine that. We need to assist end users and SMEs in developing nations because they can buy. We need to address platforms that they, if they enhance cybersecurity then, and the standards, then actually it would go forward very fast. Next slide, please. So potential next steps, I think I just mentioned them to you, but it's one of them I would like to propose to the Cybersecurity Best Practice Forum. When you talk about norms, the nor norms have the potential to identify who is breaching norms. And that is something which I would urge the, or ask the BPF to take in consideration, because if you have the norms, it becomes easy to see who's breaking them. So next slide, please. The, one, the major question is, can the IGF deliver something? Well, this is the result of two months' time by using the potential of, of people interesting to discuss this. And there were dozens and dozens of people. So that's yes. This is the next slide, please. It's a thank you just to see how, who made this possible. And you can see it's a very diverse set of organizations that actually been paying the project to make this, to make this happen. And what comes next, that is your choice. Because there's reason to believe that there's support for a phase two, that the funding will be found, that the next step will, steps will actually really make a difference, and that further reach out, we've been reaching out to parliamentarians, they were, you can see what sort of influence in thought that already made, and others need to come on board. But what form is up to the MAG, and if, as I said, the, the, the option for a self-funded PPF is possible, then I would definitely go for that, but otherwise, not a pilot project, but a pilot of a, sorry, a project under the IGF under the same term, self-funded with the little assistance of the, of the Secretariat, that, uh, that would be fine. And in the end, I'm going to take two seconds to quote the Beatles in their very last sentence on, on the Abbey Road album, but in the end, the love you take is equal to the love you make. And that is something which is going to create the business case that we're going to need here. So thank you and for this, this opportunity. And if you have some questions, then I'm of course 
we are willing to, to answer them. And if we can discuss over lunch or something, if what the potential is to continue it, I'm very much welcome to, to do this. And I'm not asking this for myself, but for a lot of organizations in the world. Thank you. Thanks very much for that. And I'm going to open the floor. I just want to make a few general remarks. Um, um, I think firstly, um, you know, I would say that based on my understanding of the IGF and the evolution of the modalities of the IGF, the idea of the dynamic coalitions are that you can um, make love there too. Um, you don't need a BPF. And, and I think that that is something to keep in mind. Um, and, and I would say probably if I was looking at an IGF sort of taxonomy of terms, I would think that we would probably, the secretary would probably say that an unfunded BPF is a dynamic coalition. And I'm not sure if Jutta and, and Marcus would say that, but I think that is kind of why the dynamic coalitions were, were created, to, to um, create a format that allows people to use their own time and resources to put into the IGF in a self-organized way. And there's nothing to stop dynamic coalitions from having outputs. In fact, if you look at the DC3 dynamic coalition, the dynamic coalition on community connectivity, it's produced very substantive outputs. So I think let's keep that in mind. Then secondly, I think on criteria, um, the questions about criteria, I think they're completely valid. Uh, Sylvia asked them, Roberto has asked them. I think that what we need to, to in all fairness though, we, we can't now create criteria uh, that are new. I think what we have to work with and interpret is, is what we have and what we know. And that is, I think, very much what you heard in the introduction from Marcus, um, that the idea of the BPF was to take a topic that had matured, where there has been a lot of discussion already. And now we want to get to a point to, to, to capture that and concretize that um, um, as best practices. So I think just keep that in mind. I think the, um, the issue of, um, inclusivity and controversy uh, and, uh, and the difference in regions. I think what's really important here, I think it's absolutely right. I don't think we should avoid controversial issues. Um, and I think we need to recognize that issues affect different regions very differently. But I think what is very important in the IGF is stakeholder inclusivity. And I think we had, as, as, as Tamea said, and, and Ben and, and others, um, you know, even if that particular issue is, is more relevant to developing countries and, um, and, and small island developing states, when we approach it, we, we still need to approach it from the perspective of the fact that telecommunications companies are going to have different concerns from, from platforms, from end users, from governments, and that's then the richness that you, that you can put into the IGF process, that you can tackle that issue and you can make sure that you look at it from the perspective of all those different uh, interest groups. That's, that I think remains important, even if from a geographic uh, um, uh, or a, a, a level of economic development and infrastructure development, um, it's going to be different and, and affect some regions. And I don't think we should shy away from that, but I think we always have to respect the fact that different stakeholders have different perspectives, different interests, and different texts and different solutions, and that we need to find a way of accommodating. Okay, so that's really all from me at the moment. I'm going to take um, the two people on the floor, and then you're going to uh, break out into groups. We have just half an hour left, but that's still time. To, to get some work done. So, Wim, you have the floor. Okay, thank you. Uh, it's very brief and try to get, uh, before you break up in groups, this, uh, start to discuss the different proposals. Uh, Titi and I discussed a little bit. The focus of the IoT, uh, or sorry, Big Data uh, AI proposal is uh, data and new technologies seen in an internet context. Uh, and it might be, good if we look at the proposal and focus on that title uh, and avoid having the discussion whether or not IoT should be uh, in the title or, or not. Um, so use that label and then I think afterwards uh, if it would be accepted as a follow-up of uh, the, 
the BPF of last year, if it's necessary or relevant or not to change the, um, uh, the name of the, the mailing list or not. Uh, I think that captures, that avoids diving into the discussion whether or not it's IoT or not. Uh, and it captures what actually is in the proposal. It is about uh, data after what we discussed last year, no focus on the data part, uh, how that is, is used in the um, in new technologies. Uh, Thanks, thank you. Juan. Your turn. Thank you, Madam Chair, for giving me the opportunity to respond to what Wout had said before. And you might have felt that I had a really uh, an urge uh, to, to respond to that. And I do that in my capacity as a co-facilitator of the dynamic coalitions because first what Wout said, I think it's an unacceptable insult to the work of the dynamic coalitions saying that there was no or zero outcome of that work. Uh, we can't accept that. Uh, Secondly, uh, when Wout said that he had been talking to representatives of dynamic collisions, when this initiative, and I understood that it's also about a safer internet, I would say the dynamic collision on child online safety would one, be one of the first that uh, the initiative should talk to. Uh, and thirdly, uh, as you have said before, I do think what Wout has uh, suggested could fit very well into a dynamic collision. So and if an unfunded BPF is a dynamic collision, then it's more or less uh, the same. Uh, it only then would need more partners to, to, uh, to create that dynamic collision. And I would strongly suggest to try out that way. And then also to give evidence that this uh, dynamic collision then would be able to produce an outcome uh, from the work uh, compared to others, but I do think that all of the 17 dynamic collisions have somehow produced outcomes that are very valuable. Thank you. I'm, I'm not going to give anyone else the floor, um, um, so, but I think those, those points are taken. I think maybe just for everyone's information, I checked on this myself uh, earlier today. There's no timeline for formation of dynamic coalition. Anyone in the IGF community can form a, a dynamic coalition at any time. There is a timeline around the annual IGF where the dynamic coalitions do have deadlines for requesting meeting slots and, and um, uh, I think that's the main thing, is it, for requesting uh, um, meeting slots and then for um, uh, submitting reports, but that was very deliberate. That 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 modality, which is truly bottom up and flexible, it gives everyone complete flexibility. Okay, so thanks very much, everyone. I'm sorry to be. Excuse me, vote. Use your microphone if you can't hear. I would just like to respond to Utah because if that came across then I then I apologize vote. because vote you can respond to Utah during lunch no I'd like to do that um, officially because it's on there now and that is not what I meant not was, it, what, was it a no, misunderstanding it was a misunderstanding so please Utah I'll explain but please accept my apologies it's not what I meant yes I think, uh, Utah I think what vote meant is that in in the in the context of his particular issue that there has not been an outcome from dynamic coalitions. I don't think he meant to dismiss the outputs and outcomes of dynamic coalitions in general. So I, I think that's important to clarify. Okay, so um, I would like you to break into slightly different groups as yesterday, although, although you have the freedom to, to, to work with the same people if you like that, but, but uh, I leave that to you to decide. Your task is it sounds like it's not simple, but I actually trust you to use your judge judgment and, um, and to put the interest of the IGF first um, and, and to come up with. Firstly, um, to reflect on these inputs and proposals request for, for best practice forums. If you feel ready to make a decision, then make a decision. I think keep in mind that it's not fair to change the rules midway. Um, I think there are very valid points that have been made about BPF shouldn't be expected to be continuous. 
um, but I, and I think that's very valid. But maybe there's a way, in fact, of giving them the opportunity uh, before shutting them down completely to consolidate and, and, and work on, on, on what they've done already and actually maybe give them the time to, to, to get to closure rather than just saying, that's no more. So keep that in mind because it, it could be perceived as unfair to, to um, put new rules in place um, without having given people the chance. Um, keep in mind the financial limitations, the, the time limitations. Um, so if you can make decisions on the proposals that we have on the table, and you can be creative as well. You know, you can ask for resubmissions or you can make other suggestions. That's your, charge, your, your choice. Um, um, but I don't only want you to reflect on these BPFs. I also want you to pick up the issue that emerged yesterday, and it emerged on, uh, on day one as well, when we looked at the high-level panel and the input on IGF improvements, where strengthening the connecting tissue and the connectivity tissue of the work of the IGF and the broader internet governance ecosystem is a priority, and the NRIs as well. How do we use this this IGF ecosystem, its place in the broader ecosystem to actually really play the role of the IGF, which is at the heart of the IGF's mandate, which is the, the, the connectivity across issues, across communities, countries, stakeholders, and so on. So if you can also look at this item number two on the agenda, strategies for collaboration and complementarity across intersessional work, and I think that includes how to find ways to ask the IGF's intersessional modalities, the NRIs, the dynamic coalitions, and the BPFs to feed into the IGF's um, thematic track. Now, you, you again, you might not have all the answers, but begin to think about that. And so those are essentially the two things that you need to talk about. Um, the BPF proposals on the table and the broader issue of strengthening um, the integration of the intersessional modalities um, into the work of the IGF. And um, if you are willing and able, you can continue to work over lunch. Um, I'd like the groups again to have chairs and rapporteurs um, and we'll come back after lunch and I think we won't be, be able to allocate more than half an hour to, to, to the reporting back session. So try and keep your reports concise. So um, on that note, we're actually breaking now um, and we will not come back before lunch. There's no time to come back before lunch. So you, you can set your own time frames. Um, what I'd like to have is you're all back here sharply at three o'clock ready to present your reports. Thanks very much. And um, you, please, please self-organize. It might actually be simpler for you to just use the same groups as yesterday. Um, but every individual will have the, the, the right to move groups if they want to. But if we can ask at least the, the chairs and rapporteurs of, of yesterday's groups to play that role again, I would really appreciate that. Um, and then people can self-organize around you as they wish. Thanks very much, everyone. Hi everyone, just a, just a heads up that we will start in a minute and for our online participants, I hope you can hear us.
if you can hear us and if you can see us, maybe you could just indicate quickly in the chat. I'm taking Milan Raj for, uh, for already doing that. Yes, great. Yes, we can. Right, thank you very much. Thank you, Grace. Perfect. But I, I would prefer to stay here because of the computer. They can see me. They can use the queue if you want. Yes, they can see me. Thank you, Andriette. Apologies, I was asked to move to this uh, cleaner place. Um, well, thank you very much, colleagues. As you know, we are still on the lunch break of the last day of the MAG meeting, but we are using uh, partially your lunch break uh, for the informal gathering of the national, regional, sub-regional and youth IGFs. The purpose of this informal gathering is, uh, well, first of all, to see each other in, these, um, uh, in person. Uh, I think a number of NRIs are here in Geneva. And I'm also very, very happy that we have a number of colleagues present online. Uh, hopefully the sound is well for, for colleagues there. The purpose of the meeting is to just reflect on our plans uh, for this year, for preparing, the, for preparing for the IGF in Poland. Uh, but also we had uh, from some of the NRI colleagues a request to go even uh, beyond this and to focus uh, a bit more on how the NRIs as already a very firm network of the multi-stakeholder processes that are discussing the internet governance can support the global digital cooperation following of course the um, description of the report of the HLPDC. Uh, so that will be uh, also added to our agenda. From the side of the IGF Secretariat, uh, and I'm glad that uh, we have our colleague from Yandesa Wyman here, we will just briefly touch on the ways of supporting the NRIs. As you know, we had a few grants given to nine, nine NRIs last year. So uh, we would touch on that as well, just to maybe uh, say what was the impact and what our potential plans for this year. Colleagues from IGFSA are here. I know they are staying only uh, for maybe 20, 25 minutes. So uh, I'm glad that uh, the IGFSA is represented. They are supporting a number of NRIs. So if you have any questions for colleagues, then I, uh, we will use that momentum in the next uh, 20 minutes to ask them. So just very briefly, maybe let's start if you agree as we, as we agreed in the, in the email on our informal agenda order. So we'll start just on the objectives of the NRIs for 2000 and well this year for, in preparation for the 15th IGF in Poland. We had a meeting, as you know, formal meeting of all NRIs, uh, I believe on the 9th of January. So before, before strategically before this MAG meeting to uh, make sure that we come here ready in case the MAG will have questions for the NRIs and plans for this year. So there was a broad agreement that the NRIs will continue with a set of sessions that were prepared for the last year's IGF in Berlin. Uh, we'll see how the format will look like. In any case, the main session, the collaborative sessions, the coordination session, and the NRIs will, will uh, also apply for the boot at the IGF village this year. I will not spend the time on reflecting back to the Berlin IGF. Um, all in all, I think it was a very successful year for the NRIs. The main session especially was so well received. And I think the key of the NRIs was really this year to, yes, reduce the number of speakers, but also to focus on really concrete case study inputs, which we worked hard on during the year to show how the topic that was uh, of our main session, emerging technologies are actually serving people or maybe are creating some issues in some countries and regions. So um, now what we, what the Secretariat is doing is finalizing the consolidation of those inputs. Uh, and that should go very, very soon in this month to the NRIs for final consultations. And we already have a proposal for formatting. So hopefully that will be a very useful output of, of that session as a, as a final one. And uh, very similar goes for the collaborative session. The coordination session as an our, our open work meeting was also successful. 
And uh, I think the coordination session itself gave us a few objectives for this year. It will, of course, require a lot of consultations with the NRIs, but in general, where the Secretariat will commit are two things. One thing is uh, to work more closely with the youth IGFs. Uh, I've already informed the NRIs about certain confusion that exists in uh, certain countries and regions, some parallel processes, but uh, we already had good uh, cost consultations with those processes and I think we're on a good way to integrate them and to have uh, kind of united successful processes rather than parallel and weaker processes so we don't waste resources. So I will keep you updated on that and as you know we will also update a publication that we have on youth engagement with a few uh, projects that the national and regional IGFs uh, do on the youth engagement and a few um, youth IGFs that emerged in the past two years since we produced that publication. And the second thing is to work on the individually one-on-one -on -one with the NRIs upon request where is needed to see how can we um, communicate good practices from other colleagues from the NRIs on particular, especially procedural matters uh, for, for those NRIs that would need um, some, some good experience to apply on their, on their processes. So that would be, uh, in that regard, what I can say for now. And I'm just going to ask if you have any questions or inputs or suggestions, if anything else should be done in this year or changed. Just maybe while you're thinking whether you want to give input, I'm just going to say that we, uh, we had our feedback process immediately after the, um, the IGF in Berlin just to use the momentum while we're still, still with fresh memories. And uh, on purpose, we made the uh, feedback form to be anonymous. So we don't know who was submitting, but we wanted to create a channel for the NRIs to tell us without any hesitation if something was really bad. And I have to say that it also came uh, partially also from me, that reason, because as you know, Secretariat was involved in moderating the session every year. Uh, on a request of the NRIs, and we don't say no, but we do think that uh, change is good. And so we wanted to test the ground there and to see whether really all NRIs uh, kind of are endorsing that practice or they would have some other suggestions. And uh, I've presented the results, which were overall very positive on, on everything and resulted in, um, in the NRIs continuing their practice from 2019 of the integration into the annual IGF program. So that would be the first agenda item. Do you have anything to add to this? Do you think we should do more or differently on these objectives in preparing for Polish IGF? Yes, Jennifer. Thank you, Anya. Um, first off, I think I'm sure all the colleagues around here and also online will join me in thanking you for your really incredible hard work throughout the years supporting the NRIs, being our focal point, and very, very uh, efficiently and adeptly chairing the really well-received main session at the um, IGF Berlin for the NRIs. I think what you've covered really does reflect um, what the NRIs have spoken about during uh, reflections in Berlin as well as our call and also the online uh, uh, contributions to the mailing list. One thing I'd like to bring to our, I guess, consideration, and this may be something that we can think about later on as we prepare, um, I like very much um, the focus that we are putting on on substantive case studies uh, because I, I know there's a lot of very, very good work that's been done in the NRIs that may not be so well known to the other, the rest of the IGF ecosystem. And with that being said, I think it's also a very good idea to utilize the booth to further publicate um, this, this kind of thing. It could be something like a short video, it could be something like just written materials, but the things we say in the main sessions could be then documented in a best practices or not, not best practices, like a, um, a case study or, or that kind of toolkit, which would be, it would, would enrich and also enhance the visibility of all the good work that we do in our respective um, initiatives. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jennifer. Yes, excellent and uh, definitely implementable suggestion that we take note of. Um, just to see if there are any other comments. Yes, Mary, please. Yes. 
first i want to apologize for coming late and uh, i didn't know that uh, it had kicked off um i don't know whether you touched on this i'm just hearing about booth and i have my perspective about the booth and um uh, 2019 you know we were asked to send in short videos and the rest of the things that were, were to roll and play at the booth and i found out that it wasn't uh, going it it didn't work first and again our booth was sort of empty uh, we didn't have people manning it at the time probably you know we didn't cross the T and dot the I and, um, you know, know who should be there at the time. But I, I, I like what Jennifer has said, and I, I want to encourage that we we have, we have still maintain the, the booth, um, the, having a booth, but better organized. And if we are going to roll out um, um, what any publication or any information or any anything that it should be well well done i, I think 2019 didn't go well um we had it better in 2016 than 2019. thank you thank you mary i'll, I'll give floor to to paul and then i can respond to that one okay do, do you want to respond first because my question is different oh okay but well, just very very uh, briefly to say for the boot because um, I think there were slots probably when there was nobody there, but there were also slots when we had uh, schedules. For example, I have to give credit and recognize the role of the UK IGF and two colleagues that were there basically every day for some time. And then Dominican Republic, uh, Federica was there all the time. I have to say, I, I was also passing every time when I was able. I know you, Mary, were there, so I wouldn't, you know, go with that uh, notion that it was empty. I think it's, there were some maybe time slots where uh, people were busy, they were occupied with other sessions and commitments. For the presentation, uh, I know that the photos and the photo album went on. It's just that there was an issue for some reason the video couldn't be projected from the Nigerian IGF. Yes, Paul, please. Thank you. Um, my, my, my intervention really is uh, to give some thought on how we can get the NRIs uh, more integrated into the entire IGF program and see how we can get more uh, NRI members as resource persons and speakers uh, in all the sessions, not just uh, the collaborative sessions, but in the, the workshop sessions, in the main sessions, maybe even the high-level panels, uh, to bring that uh, regional diversity and also that local uh, expertise. Uh, I, th I think also we, we should explore further as well how we can get NRIs more engaged in you know the different channels like the BPFs and the dynamic coalitions and the other tools that the uh, IGF has. So you know we, we become integrated deeper in, into what's happening. Thank you. Yes, that that is a very. I think I'll just give a floor shot to Gen to Jennifer, and I think it would be good. Probably even the the chair could also come with a proposal. And the Meg, as you know, the NRI as a network is completely open, but we need good ideas how to do that. It's very very complex. There's a will, but when it comes to uh, implementation, it's 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 challenging. And I know that from the main session. For the last two years, the main session was organized in collaboration with the Meg. But as you know, Paul, on our call, mostly the discussion and preparatory process is led by the NRIs. Yes, please. So, so some, some thoughts, you know, if, if we can get the NRIs to build like a database, a repository of expertise that we have, so we can get like speaker profiles from the NRIs that we can make available to those that are building sessions and particularly identifying youth from, from uh, the global south that you know can bring that voice that's often missing, and I, th I think that should be a responsibility of us as the NRIs to look at how we can build our tools to interface with what's going on. Sorry, Jennifer, um, just to jump in, um, I think it, it, there's also some integration which we're not really recording or documenting. You know, I'm just thinking of the Dynamic Coalition on Community Connectivity, DC3. They had workshops at the African IGF, at the LAC IGF. They participated in the Asia Pacific um, IGF. Um, and 
that and the, and but that's not reflected as uh, as an integration so you know and there might be more like that so it, i'm just flagging that as as a way of 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 capturing some of that integration it becomes easier then to build it on it and to communicate it if if we record some of that yes exactly thank you Henriette. Uh, just giving floor to jen for now Thank you, Anya. Sorry for taking the floor again. I just wanted to say we think alike, Paul. That's perfect. That's exactly what I wanted to say. Basically, I'm thinking of several different issues I had in the past and kind of trying to find a combined solution for it. I don't like to use the word integration. I really don't. But having better linkages is very important with all the different work that's done in the in the IGF ecosystem. One thing that I keep on hearing, both from my community in Asia Pacific and also broadly, is the problem of finding speakers and the problem of finding speakers who are experts in certain topics and the problem of finding speakers in certain topics from different regions. Now, the NRI network one of the strengths is our geographic diversity. And I feel very much that we as a whole can be a much stronger resource for the IGF community as a whole, for the MAG, for people who are thinking about proposing for workshops, that we are a good resource. We actually are in on the ground doing solutions possibly on things that they're contemplating about. So. I really want us to think about this that Paul Paul raised because I think we already have a resource persons list on the IGF website that not a lot of people know about and not a lot of people use. I feel like we can bring that back up and integrate this into into the whole thing that would help both raise the profile of, of the work that's done in the NRIs and help people who are trying to, you know, propose, trying to make sure that diversity is covered because there's many many different experts in, in in all over the world and maybe people are not aware that they are available to to be part of the speakers for example and um to respond very briefly to what Henri had said i think that's very important to capture the good cooperation that's already going on and i do feel that we haven't really been doing that i know the bpf cybersecurity has come to the nris to ask um, survey us to ask questions to see what kind of solutions or problems or issues that we're facing and I think that's something that we also need to capture because we do talk at the MAG about you know how do we better integrate and we don't really celebrate the fact that we already do have a very good cooperation and we want to improve on that so having that uh, documented somewhere is also very important yes indeed so thank you Paul and Jennifer so I'm taking this as a very practical way and uh, we'll consult the NRIs to to fill up the resources list and now Wim. Thank you. Uh, I just wanted to pick up on the last point that Jennifer made but also I think it was raised by um, uh, by Paul. Um, indeed the BPF cybersecurity the last two years has done specific effort to try and reach out to the uh, the NRIs. Uh, there even was at a certain moment a specific questionnaire and survey uh, designed apart from the uh, general uh, survey or request for input. Um, but it has been very difficult to get input from the NRIs. Uh, and I think that uh, it's, it's not that they're not willing to contribute, but I think the, the there should be some thinking on, on how how can they how can it be addressed that it's not uh, it not comes like uh, okay there is another part of the IGF asking NRIs to give yet again information give yet yet again input so that it can be transformed in a way that there is actually a possibility to interact and and that it becomes a gain-gain situation and not, uh, again, a request that comes out from, from other activities, like towards the BPFs, for example, or other intercessional works. Say, if, okay, and now you have to do an extra, organize an extra track, extra work uh, to involve NRIs. From the NRI perspective, that it's not fun, yet there is yet another part of the IGF asking, uh, asking apart from all the work we are already doing locally to contribute against something uh, with you. But I think there are definitely opportunities there, but uh, 
it's not just by forwarding a request for input uh, or forwarding uh, a request to the NRIs. I noticed to uh, to fill in the survey that uh, all of a sudden this works. Thank you very much, Wim. Yes, you are right. And uh, I think Marilyn would like to say a few words. So I'm going to give floor to Marilyn, and then uh, I may share, if we had time, my observation also on that. Marilyn, you have the floor. Thank you. I hope I have managed to unmute myself. Yes, we can hear you, Marilyn. Thank you. Uh, my name is Marilyn Cade. I serve as uh, one of the two co-coordinators for to the um, NRI network from the IGF USA. Um, so on the executive committee of the um, IGF Support Association. And later I will have uh, something uh, further to um, to say about the support um, that is uh, the funding support that is needed to fully support the participation of the NRIs. Um, but I want to um, directly address um, this issue of whatever we call it, integration or um, increased interaction across the NRI network with the global IGF. Um, this really needs to be two-way street, and um, I am probably the person who was most insistent that engagement coming from BPFs, dynamic coalitions, um, actually be customized in a way that would be uh, easier for NRIs, the majority of whom are all volunteers. There are very few, such as Asia Pacific, Africa, and IGF, Eurodig, that have um, secretariats. Um, the rest of us are all working as volunteers and organizing our national uh, NRI, raising the funds and uh, developing our program is in and of itself a major responsibility that we assume when we uh, take a role on the steering committee or whatever we call our, um, our uh, multi-stakeholder um, entity that plans the national IGF. So when we get um, at the coordinator level of an NRI, when we get a request to um, complete a survey or provide a speaker, um, the more customized the um, approaches to the, the needs of the NRI itself, the easier it is for us to um, determine whether it's possible to respond. And since we all operate in a bottom-up manner, we have to go through a consensus-making process at the national level. Many of you are active in the NRIs, but not all. And that's why I have um, uh, taken this point. Um, I will also say, however, that we've had, I think, um, positive outcome from engagement with UNESCO, who has been very generous in their time in working with the NRIs <clears throat> and has now, as they mentioned on the consultation day, they have work going ongoing. And um, I use that to illustrate that when we are able to also offer, um, when the MAG is able to also offer speakers to a national IGF, 
that can also be a, a positive contribution that uh, will automatically result in further interaction and engagement and incorporation of the NRI uh, into the global IGF. So let's do think um, about this idea of participation as a two-way street, not just um, turning to the NRIs and saying, put a list of speakers and their qualifications together and we'll look at the resources and think about how they fit into the global idea, but also think about what can be offered to the NRI network, uh, particularly at a national, the small, smallest NRIs have the most difficulty in both raising funds and also in providing, uh, finding speakers who will who have the resources to travel and participate in their NRI. I will come back and respond, um, comment later um, about the uh, issue of um, being careful not to overload uh, the expectations on the NRIs and always suspecting that they have national or regional responsibilities, not just responsibilities to um, contribute to the global idea. Thank you. Marilyn, thank you very much for excellent comments. And um, I'm sure I'm speaking this on behalf of many colleagues that were very happy and pleased to hear from you. Thank you. Uh, let me see if there are other inputs and comments. I think Marilyn explained well uh, in the response to Wim's question about why the intersessional work of the IGF maybe is impacted by lesser contributions than in past from the NRIs. And we've seen that I think the best example is the CNB, Connecting and Enabling the Next Billions. So that work, uh, and I remember when facilitators was, were reporting on that to the MAG, uh, received the biggest contributions among all stakeholders from the NRIs, around, I believe, 40% of uh, contributions came from the NRIs, but that, especially the first phase, probably went even more. But that was the time when the network really wasn't focused on s achieving so many objectives and tasks as it is in the past two years. And I think that's probably the reason why, unfortunately, maybe even the focus shifted a bit to the work of the network and the uh, um, tasks, tasks that we wanted to achieve they do require a lot of time and uh, a lot of contributions from the NRIs in addition to their full-time jobs and personal lives. And so I think we have to have understanding there. Finding a mechanism where we can get a lot without actually asking for coordinators or members of the organizing committee to uh, provide their time, investing a lot in intellectual and physical work would be the best for us. The IGF Secretariat uh, does that, as you know, with these um, several latest tasks we do, we really do that on the basis of what we find as sources on your website, on social networks. Sometimes we even stream ourselves where there's another report uh, out to see what was the discussion. And that's all in favor of not overburdening uh, the NRIs and not asking too much. So perhaps for the intersessional work, that could be also one, uh, one, one of the way. Uh, I can tell you now, I still didn't share the results with you. When we analyzed the policy areas that the NRIs were addressing last year, the very first focus was, of course, as expected on cybersecurity, and then uh, followed by trust, which was very interesting, and digital cooperation, I guess, uh, the influence of the HLPDC process that was active last year. But um, in any case, my point is that if the cybersecurity was addressed across all NRIs, then the BPF on cybersecurity could look at the reports, could look, could maybe stream or attend online or in person those events and get, get the inputs without asking for um, relatively time-consuming service to be responded by the NRIs. So uh, with that, if there are no more comments on this part, I would like to move the agenda on two parts that we uh, agreed to discuss because we have maybe 15, 20 minutes before we close. The one is how to support the NRIs financially and, of course, in kind from a substantive point of view. 
And the another point is that uh, that came actually yesterday. Titi was kind enough to share with us uh, her views on how the NRIs could have a role for um, implementing the global digital cooperation mechanisms, uh, leaning on the uh, HLPDC report. And I understand uh, from the tweets that I was looking at this morning that colleagues that are now in Trieste at Eurodic preparatory meeting are also discussing this idea how the regional IGFs could contribute to those um, global digital cooperation mechanisms. Uh, I'm glad that Christine is here and she also approached me and I know that the uh, within the Arab IGF as a regional IGF there are those ideas. Um, during the Berlin IGF I attended that informal meeting where a few regional IGFs gathered and they actually discussed these potential mechanisms of working together with of course respecting all in the NRI's ecosystem and uh, being open through their process to everyone. So I would maybe just stop now here and I would give the floor to all of you. So the first question is what kind of a support is needed? And then uh, we can connect to the second uh, question about the role of the NRIs for the um, global digital cooperation mechanism. Yes, Serena. Thank you, Anya. I guess I'm going to repeat what I have been saying for the past what, five years since CDIC has been existing. Um, but first of all, let me start with the question. Is there financial support this year? I know there have been some funds allocated last year from the UN to some um, IGF initiatives. Is this another opportunity this year just to make it clear for the network? And on um, the other point, when you ask what else you can do, and um, saying more of the same, just help us reach out to governments. <laughs> thank you, that's all. Yes, thank you, Serena. Yes, I remember that call from every NRI coordination session. Well, I mean, it's here. If you women would like to take the floor and maybe respond to this question, uh, especially about uh, uh, supporting the NRIs. Yes, uh, thanks, Tanya. Thanks, uh, Serena, for the question. So, um, so certainly, with the, um, together with IGF secretariats, uh, we were certainly uh, place capacity development as, as one important pillar that we should uh, enhance our efforts, uh, in particular in supporting the NRI. So as Anya mentioned, last year uh, we initiated and successfully issued grants to nine NRI. So it will be the, it, it will be uh, the same for this year. I mean the same, that means we will do that. We don't know the number, we don't know the total amounts, but we, now what we need to do better is on the, to have a clear um, um, process, including the selection criteria or that. So this is what we are working out together with, with Anya Chankatai. Uh, so um, I believe we will uh, be, uh, be aim to put out this, uh, this process uh, to the community very soon. Um, for the, the support to NRI or capacity developments in that sense, um, we will largely be coming from the IGF main trust fund. Um, the, 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 the generous donation of the, of the German, uh, of the government of Germany is actually mainly to support uh, the global south in particular in, uh, in support to travel to the IGF sessions. That means in this year to Poland, in addition also supporting MAC members, your participation uh, the, from developing countries at the MAC meetings. So it's not specifically to, uh, to the NI. Uh, but we will have further discussion on, on, on the disposal of the funds for this purpose. Thanks, Tanya. One more um, Chengata has something to add? Ah, <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> uh, I just wanted also to stress to the NRIs that importance of formulating a legal entity because we had real big problems last year. Uh, transferring money to individuals and to third parties. Uh, we really need a legal entity. Thank you. Thank you, Wyman and Chengetai. You know, Serena, if you have a follow up question or this responded. Not really a follow up, just realizing that it will be then even more difficult for Siri to apply because we don't exist legally, but I understand the hint. Thank you. Mary, please. Can I ask a question for Pre Mary, please. 
sorry, just a question for clarification on that. You, uh, if I understand that correctly, you have to have a legal entity that you transfer the funds to. It does not, you're not saying that every NRI has to be a legal entity. But, yes. Um, last year, because we had um, selected, there were some um, NRI selected, but then we could not give them money because they were saying that we should give them to an individual and we can't give to individuals and then we had to go through other entities and then the selected entity and in some case, I don't want to name names, but in some cases the selected entity says we can't accept this money. So it was really difficult for us. So if you have a legal entity lined up that won't give any problems, then yes, but in the long run, we really need that sort of arrangement um, that can be held accountable. Yes, thank you, Trangata. I think it doesn't come only from us, you, Serena, probably, and many other colleagues know that it comes from other organizations as well that are supporting you. So it's, it's only reasonable. It's very difficult to explain to somebody that's not in our circles or in our network uh, what are these multi-stakeholder compositions, which are kind of freestyle, that do not have a legal entity. But the good thing is that we see more and more uh, action on this. Uh, you've seen the Italian IGF's presentation in, in Berlin. Um, a number of colleagues do have legal entities, such as the Nigerian IGF, Burkina Faso. So uh, I think uh, there are good practices also to share on that. I would uh, like to give the floor now to Christine. Uh, thank you, Anya. Um, I want to come back on points. It's actually also related to the support, but also the implementation of the high-level report. Um, now, I, of course, I agree with uh, what has been said already by Sandra in the plenary about the NRIs having a role in providing input into that process. But I, I would like to look beyond that because I think the NRIs are providing um, a vehicle, if I may call it, uh, within the IGF modalities for the improvement uh, or for the implementation as such. So, uh, so the report has identified uh, many weaknesses uh, that should be addressed, such as uh, reaching out to stakeholders that are missing um, um, in developing in, in, in regions, in specific regions, in developing areas. And the NRIs have a potential to do that work on a grassroots level if they are empowered in a sense. And now the example of the support and not having a legal entity comes as a concrete example where NRIs would need uh, some help. And help here, I mean, for example, the Arab IGF in its, in, um, in its first phase had made um, a conscious choice of not having a legal entity. So now um, we, we are at a stage where we're saying, no, we do need a legal entity, which means that we need to re maybe look at how to support NRIs to become stronger on the ground to be able to serve the implementation process within the different components of the IGF. And I think this is something that could come out from the network of the NRIs, but it also should be discussed in a broader sense with, uh, with the broader IGF community. Thank you. Thank you uh, very much, Christina. Yes, I, I would like actually to um, take good note of it and uh, probably go to maybe online open consultations between those that are interested to work together. I think we would need to develop some kind of um, objectives approach to this, how to do this. And especially if you speak about the encouragement, how that encouragement uh, should be implemented, not just uh, speaking through the meetings, but actually uh, really kind of foster the, the whole process of threatening the NRIs internally, but then also be very present and vocal on the global scene, which I think depends primarily on the NRIs as, as such. So I would give now floor to Mary. Okay, I, I just want to share, thank you, Anya and uh, Christy for raising this. I just want to share what we started doing in Africa at the African level uh, with the PREDA project and uh, some of the things we have done at the West African level by uh, making, by uh, situating our secretariat, the, the regional, the sub-regional, the West African um, West IGF secretariat within the ECOWAS. So other sub-regions of Africa are also doing same so that they are so also involved um, in the process and um, getting high-level people participate. 
So is um, bringing, uh, I mean, is helping to situate and to have a legal entity. But uh, the the truth is that um, these uh, inter intergovernmental uh, entities have their protocols. When uh, funds are sent to them, the the process is always very, 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 very um, uh, challenging to get through. But um, the 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 fact still remains that. If we are going to collaborate with such um, established uh, intergovernmental entity, it would also help spread or spread the campaign, the, the, the high level output and get responses and help in the consultation processes. So it, it will not only be at the, our events, but if there are events that are happening like in, in West Africa, they are going to be interparliamentary ICT program in uh, Niger. So we are going as um, West Africa IGF to be able to um, evangelize the, the high level people there and also bring out the outcomes from, the, from both Berlin, what the parliamentarians said in Berlin, as well as the, the high level, the, 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 um, uh, the high level panel output also and also share with them. So in that way we'll get to the, those people that are not there in our in the in the in the IG space. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mary. As I said, there are very good and inspiring uh, examples on processes, such what you shared now. And I think uh, colleagues in Ken from Kenya also shared a very good example of their linkages with the national parliament and acting as um, some kind of an advisory role on matters of, that are of, of digital policy. So that's, uh, that was what I said at the beginning. I think we, we this year will need to find a way also to, aside of the fact to be focused on what you're saying, integration of Paul into the uh, IGF and the other way around, I think we should find a way to document those good practices, share them, and that's the way how to threaten other NRIs, by inspiring them with the success stories of others. So that's something that the Secretariat will be looking at in, the, in this year in preparing for Poland. Any other comments on this? I think Titi is here. Titi, you shared this simple document with us that I've shared with colleagues on the list. We have maybe five more minutes before we end. So I just wanted to give floor to you to ask you for briefly your reflections and how do you think pragmatically the NRIs can leverage their role and become more visible and in integrated in their own um, national communities, regional and globally. Okay, thank thank, I, thank uh, Anya for giving me the floor and for sharing the, the documents. Uh, actually, documents uh, share um, just a few thoughts, uh, starting from the high-level panel digital uh, uh, cooperation, the three architectural model. And um, I ob obviously support uh, the number uh, one, the IGF Plus, but I think uh, the IGF Plus should be integrated with some more uh, functionality uh, that um, are included in the second model, that is uh, the co-governance. Um, so I, I think that um, the IGF should, be, should have a more coordination role, a more, uh, um, should be a place where not only we discuss uh, policy, but uh, uh, the EGF should be able also to uh, uh, call for policy implementation, considering the results that are coming from the, from the debate. And um, at the same time, it should measure and monitoring the policy implementation. So in this role, I mean, NRIs, the network are, are, um, are very important because they, they can, I mean, help in this uh, uh, measuring and this uh, monitoring of um, policy implementation. So, um, as I think, uh, as I told you, I think IGF should have a more uh, central and st strategic um, role and a more coordination role. And um, as, you, as you see, there are in, the, in the recent years, there were a lot of uh, uh, internet governance initiatives. There is um, not too much coordination between them. So I think it just should be the place that worldwide, worldwide is recognized worldwide as the place where internet governance policies are debated, measured, and then uh, there is a call for action. Call for action where the NRIs should have a very, an important, uh, an important uh, role. So, uh, in order to do this, I think uh, it's important to have um, 
I mean, uh, um, a financial stability. So uh, to have a st financial stability, I think uh, all the initiatives should be included in some way, should be more uh, uh, strictly related to the IGF. I mean, uh, over, uh, worldwide there are s several initiatives like ICANN, EATF, and so on, and several providers that uh, sell services over the internet, they take profit over the internet, they should give a fee to IGF in order to, 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 to have a more stable uh, situation to perform this, this, this role. Okay, and um, I think uh, it's uh, also important uh, um, in the monitoring process to have, um, I, I mean, starting from the EGF, EGF plus model, we should also add another, um, another function. I mean, uh, the function of uh, um, parliamentarian that should be represented on a regional basis. I mean, the MAC, should check and then uh, through also parliamentarian, uh, maybe some group of parliamentarian defined on regional basis, they, they should refer about policy implementation, uh, implementation at regional level. If the, the, the implementation is low, is very low, then the MAG uh, should be able to call for an action using the um, that piece of um, the second model of architecture called the network cooperation. So should call for an action towards EATF or towards the, um, the networks that are already uh, involved in norms and the policy uh, implementation. I think uh, should have a more, uh, I mean, uh, actuation uh, role also. And then uh, I also um, think that um, the observatory, I mean, then the first model that is also the observatory um, function should be increased uh, uh, because um, there should be, uh, as you know, I think uh, the MAC should define on uh, AR base some uh, key indicators, key issues that uh, it can monitor and measure every year. These key issues should be included in the observatory. And the observatory that is worldwide, you should try to see, to check uh, how is the state of the implementation of this norm. If this is low, then the MAC call for the, the, the implementation of folly. So I think in the observatory, there should be worldwide, should be a place where all the NRI can, I mean, can go and put their data. Uh, about policy implementation. Uh, in, in this space, there should be also some way to check the status of policy in implementation. So, so that's, uh, I think the NRI could have a, a very big role in, in, in the, this project should be worldwide, but maybe uh, the document I share is just a, a starting point of discussion could be improved with other ideas they, they can uh, integrate. And, uh, but I think there should be also there should be also a, a, a more strict relations between the AGF, the NRIs, and the groups that is working on this di global digital architecture because it's the future. I mean, it's the future of IGF. So we should be more uh, uh, present in, in that uh, work groups. Okay, thank you. Well, thank you very much, Titi, for the document and for this uh, valuable summary. Um, any comments to what Titi said? Uh, Roberto, sorry. Um, good afternoon, all and yeah. Again, thank you very much for all the work you've done supporting us. I would just, uh, I would like to propose something in order to provide maybe an um, effective way to articulate our work. As we know, we work uh, for the collabor collaborative sessions, we work in groups. I think we should we may establish some sort of a group also to work regionally that I think we don't have. Perhaps we can also call to all our members as uh, uh, NRI coordinators in order to form a group to discuss what we've been discussing, again, in our own IGFs, local IGFs, and what are the common subjects that we are interesting on. If we can identify those, then we could also use it as another feedback, as another input, in order to provide um, important approaches for the other sessions and also for the, uh, for the regional IGF in, in one side, 
which most of us are also in some way or another involved, but also for the uh, global IGF. Yes, indeed. Thank you very much, Roberto. That's a, that's a very good idea. And it, it's not the first time that I hear for it. A few years ago, I, well, a few, maybe three, four years ago, I remember some of the colleagues um, were kind of inclined to organize a working group of only Portuguese speaking countries in the world and see what are the commonalities between them, especially culturally speaking. Then there were other ideas as well. For example, this recent one is about the regional IGFs working specifically on digital cooperation, seeing if the policy areas and especially the conditions that are in the country can feed into this and can maybe if we work together advance that process. If there is interest, then uh, the secretariat within its limited capacity to a certain extent will definitely be on the side of the, of the NRIs to facilitate those processes. So for now, uh, we are sharing the ideas. I would then take those ideas to the whole group and see if there's a potential. We would need to be concrete to develop a potential timeline, strategy, objectives. What do we want to achieve and how? And hopefully take it from there. I also think that at least that's how I best, I mean, it's, it's obviously very subjective and personal, but that's how I best function. I think what Titi was saying is very important, but it's still a very high level overview. So if we could, through examples, maybe illustrate how that mechanism could be implemented with certain NRIs that are maybe having stronger threatened uh, communities, then that could be an, an example for all of us to see that that's, it's actually implementable and that we could uh, maybe work with interested parties to, uh, to turn um, that summary that you just shared into uh, an implementable action. So, yes, I'm, I'm taking the note and then I will reach out uh, to everyone through the NRI's mailing list and uh, see whether there is interest. And if yes, then we can definitely, with all the potential and enthusiasm with the NRI's, uh, turn that into, into projects. So, thank you. I think we are at the end of our time. Uh, I want to thank all colleagues that were present online. Just a note, an uh, important comment that came from the from Alexander, our colleague from the North Macedonian IGF, I tried to summarize it saying that it is very important that we provide travel funding and exchange of speakers to travel to the national uh, IGFs, but also the other way around of bringing the national IGFs to the global IGF and he's referring to the call for travel support that was um, issued thanks to the contribution of our host country in 2019. And the second comment uh, related to the legal entity that if it's not a mandatory requirement, it should be strongly recommended uh, by, I assume, by maybe advised by the NRI. So thank you, Alexander, for, for these comments. Any last minute comments that would be maybe 10, 15 seconds long because we need to finish the session? No. Ah, yes, Mary, please. Thank you for giving me the floor, uh, Mary, for the records. I, I, I think we should also look at the, the growing uh, issue of uh, um, youth IGF. And we have the Poland coming up with a strong youth process during the um, 2020 IGF. So I, I think that's one of the things we should be thinking about and seeing how we can resolve all the issues we have concerning youth fragmentation of initiatives and competition and parallel uh, programs coming up in some of our uh, regions or some of our, of our countries. So thank you. Mary, thank you very much. I don't want to um, go into the specificities of the problems that Mary uh, we tried noted with the youth IGFs, uh, but I said at the beginning that we are committed to work with all youth IGFs, IGF initiatives that exist, that are recognized, and those that are emerging, and hopefully create good synergies with the existing processes in the countries. And we're also very, very fortunate that we have, uh, as you heard, the uh, host country this year that's also very keen to support the youth engagement into the um, global internet governance. And I believe that an excellent channel would be the youth IGFs um, as well as the NRI. So we, we are very much committed to that and you will be uh, hearing a lot from us through the NRI's mailing list on the potential 
um, action and plans we will take on this. Thank you very much. Uh, really excellent uh, proposals and ideas, and we will test this with the um, NRI list and see whether something could actually grow to concrete projects run by, by the NRIs. And thank you.
Rate testing. From the room. Well, the other Um, welcome back from lunch, everyone. Apologies um, for starting us late. It's eight minutes past three. Let's take our seats and let's proceed. And I'm sure everyone's feeling quite tired. Um, <laughs> but it's, uh, it's um, ask your neighbor to poke you if you fall asleep. Give everyone, give their neighbors permission to wake you up if you fall asleep, because I know many of you are jet lagged as well. Um, this is our last stretch, so we'll get through it. Uh, we've done really well so far. Um, we will be losing some of our members who have to go to the airport or the station to, to travel back home. We will be losing Michal as well, who is, is also having to leave. Um, but for now, let's plunge in. Um, roughly what I've looked at in terms of just our agenda for this afternoon, so we know what we have to aim for. Um, uh, for the next hour, until four o'clock, we'll be looking at the report backs on BPFs and linkages with intercessional work. And we'll decide on some next step, steps. And we need to have that done by, by, by four o'clock. Then from four o'clock, um, to, um, to quarter to five, we'll be looking at the reports where they exist um, from working groups. We know we have one report that's quite substantial that we need to discuss, and that's the working group on workshop process. Um, and then before, um, you know, when we get to, when we get to, by the time we get to five o'clock, um, I would like us to have um, decided on next steps with regard to working groups um, or task teams or whatever we call them, um, even if those next steps involve making some decisions online. And then I would like us to dedicate the last hour of the meeting to timeline 
and general reflections and any other business. I know that's long, but I think often towards the end of the meeting, um, people, people's ideas start flowing and suggestions come in. And our timeline is quite complex. So I do think it's important that, that we have enough time to, to decide and leave on that. So that's pretty simple. Um, and with that, I am asking for whichever group is first to put themselves in the speaking queue um, to report back on their discussions on BPFs and linkages. The speaking queue is empty. Paul, what's up? Okay, then you can switch your mic on. Okay. Thank you, Chair. I'm, I'm in, in, on the speaking queue. Paul Rowley here. So the, the output from our group after some consultation uh, is that all the BPFs need to be time-bound, must have an objective, annual targets, and a final output objective. And they should uh, identify how their output is going to influence uh, internet governance. Uh, our feeling is a BPF, you know, they, they could request a multi-year uh, mandate. Uh, where under a multi-year mandate, there would be a requirement for uh, annual renewal based on meeting the conditions, you know, of having meetings, having an annual report, etc. Uh, based on that, uh, we're, we're proposing that uh, the existing BPFs should be given two weeks to resubmit their uh, request for renewal. and add if they haven't already added a defined term with the stated uh, final outputs that they're trying to achieve what they're working towards uh, and some thoughts on how they see the work if necessary progressing beyond the bpf you know what would it evolve uh, could could it be used as input material into a dc could it form into a dc uh, could it uh, change into a multi multi-year intersessional work stream or something um, we, we, we feel that uh, when, when we look at integrating with intersessions and everything else, uh, a BPF you know, could grow from uh, an IGF session. It could, you know, where, where everyone feels that, you know, this is a pressing area that needs to be looked into deeper and we need to get some more tangibles out of it. So it could grow out of an IGF session or a main session or, or a high panel, or it could be out of a DC and a dynamic coalition says, look, you know, we, we some specific output we need, we feel it should best way to achieve this is for a BPF. And then a BPF could be motivated out of that through, through the, the usual uh, uh, channels. So, yeah. So what, what do we expect from the BPFs? They, they should have a purpose. We're, we're saying that they, they need to resubmit, state the objectives, seek approval for the, term that uh, they're, they're looking for uh, the new BPF or BPFs you know should also resubmit with that in mind we're, we're saying give them to give all the BPFs two weeks to restructure their proposals and then we can review them online and determine which ones go through thank you thanks very much for that Paul any additions from others in your group Okay, well, let's, let's take all the reports and then we'll have discussion. Group two. I think group two was that little group that was standing over there. <laughs> I do happen to be next in the speaking queue. Um, and we, we had different people reporting on different questions that you asked, but I was the person who was going to talk about... Um, or how we discussed around the BPFs. So we looked at the five proposals. Um, we felt that four of them were already in a fairly good place and, um, and could be approved. Um, they, were, they used the formats that, that we've become used to using and um, you know, there's an existing body of work behind them. So we would be happy with those being approved. So we spent uh, more time discussing um, what to do with Kareem's proposal on internet business models. And um, so the, the idea we discussed was um, 
to allow for, I think your term was um, stakeholder inclusivity um, and to think about the topic um, from different perspectives, we could, we could think about reserving uh, a space for a session in Katowice um, and working through the year amongst interested MAG members to kind of flesh out what that could be, um, which of the three topics um, or which perspectives or broadening it somewhat. And then that one of the outcomes of that session in Katowice, whether it's a main session or some, some other kind of session, could be um, some kind of proposal for a, a project or a BPF next year. Um, and so that way, I mean, we certainly all um, very much welcomed um, Karim bringing an idea and, and wanted to kind of work with it and see how it could be developed through the year and, and potentially become a BPF next year. So that was our thoughts on the BPF question. Um, thank you for that, Ben. Um, and Paul, you are next. And I assume, and you, you reporting on another aspect of this group's discussion, is that correct? Uh, well, you're a I'll, different group. No, I'm a different group. I'm so different if you group. want to go to the rest of that, uh, Ben's group? Um, yes, or? let's do that. So, um, Gunella, I think it's you. Thanks. Um, I'll, I'll be talking about the, um, the BPF's intercessional. Um, is that appropriate at this time? Great. And, and what um, our group discussed was the, um, the, the inclu including the BPFs in the, um, the thematic tracks in, in intro sessions. So each of the BPFs would um, choose trust, inclusion or data intro session to give a short presentation about what their findings are in their report. And, and that will help to stimulate the discussion um, with the breakout groups and so forth. Just to clarify, would they choose one of those or all three of those? No, they would choose the one that's the most one. relevant to, uh, to their work. And, and then uh, further discussion could be held in the breakout groups in that particular introduction session and, and po possibly in the concluding session too. So it's, it's clear where that work is going. And obviously the, the BPFs would still have their own session where they can um, work more in detail. So, so that would be um, that part of the, the BPFs. But um, it could also be that um, in the intro sessions, um, there would be the breakout groups would discuss um, uh, particular topics. There could be drilling down into some specific issue. And, and then um, with the help of the facilitators, um, identify that this could possibly be a future BPF. And, and then that there might be a champion within uh, the session that may wish to work on that. But whatever the case, it could then be taken to the MAG for the following year um, in, and to see if it fits in with the future uh, thematic tracks, uh, uh, the themes for, for the next year, and, and to develop that further into, into uh, suitable BPFs. So that would be about the BPFs. And then the further, um, we f further discussed about dy dynamic coalitions. I have a question just for clarification. So, so if I understand this correctly, that at the concluding session for the track, there then would be a discussion about whether there's a need for a future BPF. Yes. Or with we, the BP, because I think that's a really interesting idea. Hmm. But or, or is the idea that the BPF would decide? Uh, that, that's no, the, no, it would be. It would emerge from the concluding it, session on yes, the track. Yes. Great. Mm. I just wanted to make sure I've got this right. Go ahead. Sorry to interrupt no, you. No, no, that's fine. And, uh, and then further with the dynamic coalitions that um, in that the, the main intro session, um, the, the, the representatives from specific uh, dynamic coalitions um, would choose the particular 
a thematic track that's relevant to their work and, and do a, a short introduction. So that, um, again, it's setting the scene for some of the discussions in the breakout groups, but it's also a bit of a promotion for that dynamic coalition to encourage people to come to that particular dynamic coalition meeting um, because they understand a little bit more about it. Uh, so, so that was where we went with that, to try and align both the BPFs, the DCs, uh, with those intro and concluding sessions in some ways, so that we we have uh, some cohesion there. Thank you. Thanks very much for that, Grinella. Paul. Paul, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm. Anyone want to add from that group? You happy with that? No one else in that group. Good. Paul, you have the mic. Oh, uh, thank you, Henriette. Um, in our group, we, uh, we, on the subject of the BPFs, we uh, supported uh, continuing the existing, uh, the four BPFs. Um, however, like some of the other groups, we, we believe that uh, uh, we should consider a term limit uh, in the future for, for BPFs. Uh, it may be uh, not the right time now in the middle of the process, but we certainly think this is something that should be considered um, for the future that they have a limited duration. In regard to the proposal by our new colleague, uh, Karim from the Comoros, um, the, uh, the idea from our group is that perhaps this would not be a BPF, but, but possibly a special project under the umbrella of the IGF. Uh, there were some in the group who were familiar with the uh, Connecting the Next Billion uh, project uh, and it suggested it could be uh, done along those lines. In other words, it would be under the IGF umbrella, subject to MAG approval, uh, and also subject to, to resources, uh, which uh, perhaps Chengatai could speak to. Uh, and also we are, we are operating under the assumption that Kareem is going to, uh, or would be prepared to rework the proposal based on the feedback which he's received today, which I, th I think he had indicated he was he was willing to do. There was also a suggestion by some members of the group that this um, Kareem's proposal might be incorporated um, by our Polish hosts in, in, in one of the sessions, for example, uh, the parliamentary session that they were considering for, uh, for the IGF or some elements of it might be. On the subject of, um, oh, also on the, the subject of Wout's uh, uh, project, um, that, he, that he presented briefly this morning. Um, our suggestion is that could also be uh, addressed as a, as a special project, again, um, under the IGF umbrella subject to MAG approval. And in his case, he has indicated that it could be uh, self-funded. So that, that was our idea. Um, on the subject of connectivity, our focus there was on the uh, connectivity with the NRIs um, and so what we were proposing or would like to see is more, um, more outreach, more connection with the NRIs. Uh, it was mentioned that the um, BPF on cybersecurity last year uh, reached out to the NRIs. Now I was at the, the NRI um, information session just now and I, I know some people brought up that when the outreach took, took place, there wasn't always a lot of response from the NRIs. Um, but nonetheless, we think that's an experiment worth, worth considering and, and maybe um, broadening and continuing this year. Thank you very much, Paul. Um, anyone else wanting to add anything from Paul's group? No. The queue is empty. Well, um, I really, I think the simplicity and clarity and um, practicality of the proposals are really commendable. So um, I want to add, before we go into open discussion, I just want to add um, a, a couple of things. The one is that I think the, the discussion this morning was actually very useful and I think very timely to have that type of reflection on BPFs, where they came from and where they 
could and should be going, including, I believe, whether they should be good practice forums rather than best practice forums. I think one thing that I would like to propose is that we, that we, that we have a, either a working group or a task team that actually does a, an investigation, a reflection um, of this format um, and that we come up with recommendations and criteria, all the things that you that you were raising this morning. And I think um, Marcus has already declared himself willing to be part of this. And I think there are um, other people who've been part of the BPF process in the past. So I'm, I'm saying this, is, this would be long term or medium and long term, but it would give us something um, that uh, makes it much easier to, to start this process next year. And I think these suggestions about multi-year programs um, and all the other suggestions, this very innovative uh, way of, of linking the BPFs to the concluding sessions, um, I think that could be undertaken by that group. So that's another proposal on, on the table. So I'm now just opening it to general discussion. You've heard one another's proposals. Any comments and ref or reflections on that? Roberto. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I think you, what you just proposed, it's a correct way to go regarding how we should analyze and how we should evaluate uh, the current best practice groups, but also how is going to be the procedure in order to um, open the space for a new one. And, it's, and if it's going to mean that we should uh, remove one of the previous ones or actually if we've, we are going to be able to add one. Um, that's one thing and uh, that's the, that, that I think that's important to follow with, to that, uh, in that direction. But the other thing, uh, I, and I wouldn't like to lose this opportunity, is to understand that there are topics that there are issues that are really important for our regions. Uh, I, I don't agree when, when we say that it's just one part of the ecosystem to one sector. Actually, it involves the all sectors. Of course, the private sector that don't have the same ideas because in one side we have the telecom, telecommunications operators. In the other side, we have the new big companies, you know, the new big, a huge enterprise like Facebook, Amazon, or things like that. In other side, we have the regulators as part of the governments uh, that are really different between the ones that are in our countries, except our big brothers like Brazil or Argentina, because the other ones that we have in Africa and in Latin America are really small in order to put some pressure to these big companies. It's really hard. We don't have the traditional uh, way of um, collaboration that the Europe have for years. We don't have that in Latin America. We, we care for each other too much, but it's really difficult to arrange common laws, arrange articulate common regulations. And that's something that we need to learn for the future a lot, and we, we need to work. Uh, but that's just an example of how difficult for us as um, small countries is to deal with big companies. And the other aspect, uh, well, the other part of the ecosystem, which are civil society, academia, etc., of course, are the users. The users that right now are suffering for not having a, a, an internet as we would like to. I mean, as the other sides of the of the global community have right now that's why it's important and when we listen to the arguments of all our dear fellow co colleagues the uh, none of them lives in this reality that's why i put a strong voice to this and i think all the other colleagues for regions will think about this and it's not a matter of funds but it we were good explain about the the, the funding Thing. I mean, it's just uh, to cover a uh, facilitator for work, the, the report. It's a matter of visibility. It's a matter of put pressure in something that is really important for our regions. And I think BPF is one of the places that it could have. So uh, my proposal will be to give a space, a chance, 
uh, in order to adjust to make a better proposal, perhaps an enhancement in the proposal, I already offered to work in that with Karim and uh, to have it considered, not particularly to remove any other current uh, BPFs, but maybe to start as a pilot, consider as, as, as an initial uh, BPF to be evaluated at the end of the year in order to be if it's going to be kept in the future or not. That will be my proposal. Thank you very much. I, I just, I noticed that um, Karim and, and Eric Armel have had to leave. They notified me and apologized in advance. So um, don't be alarmed that they've walked out or that Karim has walked out just as we're discussing his proposal. He has to go to the airport. He's, he's leaving. I'm sorry, we couldn't say goodbye. Are you still there? Anyway, so thanks for that. Um, um, and I'm, I'm, I mean, I, I, I will go to the, the speaking queue, uh, but I, I think it is, I'm glad you mentioned that. I, you know, I think we have to work with that and live with that in the IGF, the fact that our realities are so different. And it's a, it, adds, it adds a certain kind of tension. It also adds a certain kind of, I think, excitement um, about, about the IGF. But uh, I mean, that is part of our internal uh, DNA, that it's very hard for people who don't live in that reality to really, to really um, grasp what it means. But then it's also important for, for those of us who have these realities which are defined by the lack of infrastructure or the lack of cost uh, of, of affordability or the lack of freedom of expression for that matter to also not impose our reality on the entire universe. So it's, it's actually that's one of the, the most uh, um, interesting and challenging dynamics in the IGF. And it's good that you are passionate about it. So <laughs> um, let's Ananda. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm Ananda Rajkanal from uh, Government Stakeholder Nepal. Uh, I have two observations here. Uh, some of my colleagues uh, compared uh, this uh, BPF proposal on internet business uh, economic model to uh, IGF policy options for uh, connecting and enabling the next billions. Uh, I have a reservation in accepting uh, this comparison they are not comparable in terms of uh, views of different stakeholders uh, because uh, this uh, IGF policy options for in connecting and enabling the next billion is never a debatable issue. It has been endorsed uh, by UN and all other countries uh, in the IT also. Uh, but uh, the BPF proposal on internet business uh, economic model is a very debatable issue and will have very wide and contrasting different opinions from different stakeholders, especially uh, depending on the countries and also, you know, these uh, technical communities or business. So the, my solution for uh, this uh, problem is um, we can accept because the new MAG member has proposed uh, a new BPF. Uh, so we can accept this under the following conditions. Number one, there is no financial burden to the IGF as others have. So no consultants to be required. And we follow the model that ITU follows like a study group. So the proposer will lead that as a rapporteur and then uh, MAG members and other interested uh, stakeholders will join in writing the report and to be presented as other BPFs. So it will not be a recommendation, it will be a summary of the international best practices on uh, the issues in hand. So that will, you know, uh, I think solve uh, the problems that the IGF Secretariat is talking about and others because it will have no recommendation, it's just international best practices. ITU has already entertained uh, this question and you can find a report uh, in the last 2017 reports also. So I think that will solve the problem. Thank you. Thank you, Ananda. Jennifer. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I was in the other Paul's group and I did want to put my hand up, but I was a little slow and you said if people wanted to add to it, just to 
give a little more context, I was actually the person who who compared it to the CNB, but not in terms of the content. It is more in terms of how we can go about this work. I think there's nobody here that disagrees that it is a very important topic that's pertinent to pertinent to a lot of different stakeholders in different geographic regions. I think as a MAG, we really need to consider what format or channel is the best way to advance each part of the work. And I think I hear a lot, at least from the reports back from different groups and also your summary, Madam Chair, that um, this, the, the, the proposal on the internet models and businesses is very important, does require some tweaking and editing uh, from from the comments we've received from other MAC members, and also it can be taken up in a way where it can mature. Actually, that's not the word I want to use. That it can possibly evolve into a BPF next year, where we can consider where it's the best way to to move forward. I don't think anybody wants to disregard the importance of this topic. Um, and one more thing, and I, I keep on being the repeating record, um, just to make notes that Sylvia mentioned that she will be joining us hopefully in an hour or so, she will be able to make her opinions known on this. Thank you. Thank you for that, um, Jennifer. And I would appreciate it if someone can just alert me um, when Sylvia does join us. Um, we have no one else um, asking for the floor at this point. So, you know, I, it sounds to me, I'm, I hope I'm remembering correctly. I think we have um, two groups um, suge suggested that we um, approve um, the existing four. Oh. Okay, so Tamea and then Ben. I'm going to switch you around. Sorry. Sorry, I think technology doesn't like me anymore. <laughs> um, I, I won't be long. Um, I we just adding on to the discussions that we had in the group, uh, but also we had breakout discussions from the breakout discussions <laughs> while we were having lunch. Um, so we discussed a little bit, and I think um, there's general agreement to anybody that I personally talked to um, about the importance of the topic um, that Karim has raised. I think the issue is about finding the best way forward um, in how to bring this to the community. Um, and I was wondering, um, also adding on um, to the comments from our colleague from Nepal, um, how can we entertain the idea and the enthusiasm of a new MAG member without losing it, but without also burdening too much the, the secretariat um, and, and, and having you know, five million types of work um, that we have to do. Um, and I think also with talking to Karim and to others, um, the idea that also emerged, I see from, from other discussions um, of using this year in refining um, the, the topic, um, but not only here in this room and in the MAG, but also with the community at large. And if we go about the idea of perhaps having a main session or a different session um, in Katowice um, in November, we can communicate that ahead of time to the national and regional IGFs um, who, are, who are dealing with the, the same topic in their local context. We can communicate to dynamic coalitions who feel connected to it and gather that input for the specific session have a couple of expert speakers or um, you know, multidisciplinary prominent thinkers around the issue in a session, um, and then have that community already engaged when we start talking about the BPF or um, um, intersessional work or DC or whatever this grows into being, but already having them engaged and on board. Um, so I'm just trying to like connect the little dots that I, I hear around the room, um, but I think that might be a good way forward um, without us jumping into um, an idea at this point that is not fully fledged. But we obviously need time to consider all of this, so I support also the comments that everybody mm -hmm. should go back to the drawing board a little bit before we decide. So that's an elaboration of, of Ben's group's uh, original proposal. Ben and you. Thank you. Um, so I wanted to add a little more color to the, the, the idea of, of how we use the 
introductory sessions to make linkages or, or including sessions but um, to make linkages between the intersessional work and what's going on in Katowice. So if for those who are in Berlin, uh, if I take you back to the introductory session you went to, they were almost two hours long and the majority of the time was for breakout sessions and reporting back from breakout sessions. And I think that should remain the case because there was real value in, in that um, providing a place where people could speak who wouldn't normally speak um, and, and a social component. But we also had a kind of 20 minutes at the start for keynote speakers. So the idea, I think Rudolf originally said, get the relevant BPF. And then we thought, oh, and the DCs as well. So the idea would be, instead of having a keynote speaker take that 20 minutes, you, you have short presentations from each uh, BPF or DC that is relevant to that thematic track. So if it was trust, then my BPF cybersecurity lead expert would come but we'd also have any relevant, uh, like the DC and IT security, they would come and speak as well. And just briefly, and they would be asked to talk about their work this year, but also to make sure that they're thinking, presenting it in relation to the thematic track and the narrative of the thematic track. So they're forced to make that linkage. Um, I think it would raise awareness of the work of the BPS and DCs. It, it might even um, and raise awareness of the sessions that they're going to be holding <coughs> later that week. Um, it would provide um, a bigger and more interested audience for the, for the DCs than the last two years we've had these DC main sessions. So I think this year they, they had a pretty poor turnout where each DC was given a few minutes to talk about their work. And that was an opportunity to raise visibility, but there weren't many people in the room. In my introductory session on data governance, we had 150 people in the room who were interested in that particular area of internet governance. So you would be having more engaged people who are potentially interested in your DC, who would actually hear about it. You would free up a main session for something else or to have fewer main sessions. Um, and I, yeah, I think it would demonstrate how the intersessional work streams relate to thematic tracks. So that was just a bit more color about how that introductory session might work. I think that's a brilliant idea, by the way. Um, Susan. Vote. We would normally not give an observer as much time in the mag, and I know there are other observers, so I apologize to the other observers um, for not giving you equal time but uh, Vote has submitted this proposal and, and that's why I'm giving him time to speak to this. Vote, you have the mic. Yes, uh, thank you and I totally appreciate that. Um, in our group, you heard that there was a proposal to continue the pilot and what I would like to ask the MAC is that I know that there's some significant support for continuing it, but I need to know what to do next. Do you need a proposal just like the others are making the, the, to exemplify what I'm going to do or is this, is this the end of the discussion or is it going to go forward just like it is now? So I would like to know what to go home with and tell my constituents what the next agenda point is. So thank you. Um, yes, I, I'm, I hope that you will get that. Susan? Thank you, Chair. I had actually um, put my hand down, but I'll, I'll just be very brief. Um, I, I support uh, developing a, a working group uh, on looking at the modalities of what a BPF are, uh, just so we're all on the same page. Um, of course, these would operate in, um, in line with the, the core principles of the IGF, which um, which are, are pretty obvious, but it would be nice to um, unearth those, I think, maybe um, as part of that discussion. I just wanted to support the idea of including the NRIs um, that Tamea had suggested um, with the proposal put forward by CREAM. Um, I do think that it would be good to um, explore uh, this issue in, as part of a main session and then have a BPF grow out of that. One of the questions that we ask after any main session is how can the IGL, IGF help further this conversation? Um, BPF is a really good idea for that. Um, but also, um, 
you know, it, while it may, people, there may be opposing views on, on this topic as presented, that's okay, that's a good thing. And that's what the IGF is for. And having a, um, a debate on a main session is one of the most exciting, they take a long time to plan, but one of the most exciting and um, kind of useful functions of the IGF, I think. Um, and uh, I'll end my comments there. Thank you. Um, thank you very much. Um, okay, let me try and, and, and summarize. So for BPFs, we had five proposals on the table. Uh, five or is it six? Six, five, six. Um, we had we had gender and access, cybersecurity, local content, and um, big data and artificial intelligence. Um, so those were the existing ones. So we've had proposals from them. We had um, the the pilot project proposal from Vote, and we had the new proposal from Kareem. So that is six. Sorry. <laughs> so. Um, so what I hear from the groups is that um, the, the four um, that are asking for continuation, two groups suggested that, that we approve them. Um, one group suggested that we give them two weeks to, to resubmit. Now, I don't think these are mutually exclusive options, actually. I think that even if we go ahead with, with, with approving them, um, I think the fact that there was this quite intensive and challenging discussion gives them an opportunity to strengthen um, and improve their proposals. So my, my proposal for the way forward would be to, to go with the, what seems to be the majority consensus, the rough consensus, that, that, we, that we go ahead with them, but we also begin to, we send the message that, that actually we are revisiting, rethinking, We've got some initial ideas about how they can resubmit their, uh, improve their proposals, and we give them time to do that. So I would suggest that we go ahead with that, with, with the existing BPFs. Then with regard to the, uh, and I'm, I'm not, I'm going to give you all time to comment on this, so this is just what I'm proposing. Then um, with regard to the other two, um, the one thing I would say is let's use existing modalities. I think I mean, my concern is that if we create new modalities now, like a pilot project or a unfunded, self-funded BPF, I think that could feel like lack of transparency, some form of favoritism by, by the MAG. I think if we want to suggest new modalities, we have to do the modalities first, and then we begin to put them into practice. I think creating new uh, modalities to deal with, um, with interesting and relevant proposals that, that have, in a sense, privileged access to the MAG, either because they come from MAG members or they, become, they come uh, from, from observers who happen to be here, could be unfair. If we want to open those modalities up to the community, we have to give everyone a chance to use those modalities. So that would be my concern. Um, but we have modalities that we can use, you know, and I think as you've said yourselves, we have dynamic coalitions and we have the policy options mod mod modality and we have main sessions. So, um, you know, my suggestion would be that, that, that we don't actually necessarily even have to decide that right now. I think we can give this, we can ask Vote and Karim to take that two week period to, to resubmit their proposal, taking into account these very specific and concrete and useful suggestions that the MAG came up with. So there's the option of the main session, um, um, for the for the for the for the business model um, proposal, I think there's a you know there's the option of um, a, a policy option option. So you know I would suggest that that we ask them to resubmit, but to use existing modalities. And I think that what, what I hear people say about Kareem's proposal is that it's very relevant, it's very interesting, it's it's complex, um, and we need to talk about it and we need to find a way to talk about it, but it might not be in its current form ready for a BPF because of that whole notion, you know, of the BPF being 
uh, a modality we, we, we start using when a debate has matured and when we're getting to the point where we can actually come up with, with good practices or best, pra best practices. So actually that would be my proposal to, to, to ask them to, to, to rethink what modality would best suit the topics. Um, and then we, um, we, we discuss that and find a way, way forward. And at the same time, we'll have this other um, working group, which will ask Marcus to, to convene for us, which is to look, do an evaluation, a retrospective a reflection on what has worked, what has not worked that well, the history, the role of BPFs, how that has evolved with recommendations uh, about where to take it forward, and also to create more clarity um, as to what the criteria are um, and, and, and what, the, what, what the outputs and the, and the shaping of the outputs um, could be of those BPFs. So, th so that would be my proposal for, let's talk about linkages later on because there's such good suggestions, but can I just get feedback on that as a proposal for dealing with those six uh, proposals we received? I see no one in the... Ben is looking for the right button to push and I'll talk really slowly so that he gets it. <laughs> Are you ready, Ben? <laughs> it was just um, to clarify part of your proposal, um, which I think I'm generally supportive of. If I just look back at the transcript, I think you were suggesting that we give approval to the four existing BPF to continue, but that we also send the message that we're revisiting, rethinking, and we have some initial ideas about how they can resubmit and improve their proposals and give them time to do that. So does that mean that, they, that we have to go back, so don't start our work yet, uh, and we'll be asked to kind of reformat them and, and kind of delay the start of the work? Or, or was it possibly that You've asked Marcus to go away, and Paul had some ideas about next year they should be thinking about things in a different way. So next year they'll be asked to present things in a different way, but they can start this year. Red, let me try and be clearer. So the, the, the work that the working group on BPFs will do is unrelated to this year's agenda. I think we need to give them time to do a, a, an in-depth analysis um, of the BPF work since the inception in 2013. And um, they would then give us recommendations so that when we have this conversation next year, we, 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 we start from, um, from, from the position of having been informed by the outcomes of that report. So, that's the, so it's, it's unlinked to this year's uh, BPFs. What I'm saying about this year's BPFs is that I'm kind of going with the majority, which is that two groups um, said we should go ahead and approve them, but I think very useful suggestions from, from group one about giving them time to resubmit their proposals and there's some concrete suggestions about building in an annual report, you know, they can use that or not, but they can look at the transcript of this discussion and I think they can start their work, but they can also take two weeks to refine their proposals, resubmit them, drawing on the discussion that took place here, because I think that will give them stronger, stronger proposals and a better place from which to start their work. So that's my proposal for the four. Is that clear? Okay, I see, Roberto, I can see you've asked for the, for the floor. And then with regard to the other two proposals, um, uh, I'm suggesting we ask them to resubmit as well, um, but look at not necessarily BPF as the modality for taking their work forward. We've had suggestions for, um, I'm not quite sure about, because policy options, it's not necessarily just for the next billion, or does it have to be? It, it is, it's related to. But we had closed that. And we closed that. So I think, I mean, we could reopen that, but I think it's easier for them to look at um, a dynamic coalitions and then look at the structure of the IGF main sessions um, and other formats that we could use um, to, and, and drawing in the NRIs, as Tamea was saying, um, to take the work forward. And they can also have two weeks to, to resubmit their proposals. I think it's going to be a dynamic revision. 
I know Tsenata is pointing out that they, they don't need to, to, um, re to, to get MAG po uh, approval for dynamic coalition, but I think it would be good to close the loop, um, even if they decide to go the route of, of a dynamic coalition, to, to get that back to the, to the MAG so that we know we've closed that process mm -hmm. in terms of the time we've spent on it and the discussions that we've had. Think. They want MAG approval for it, so I mean, it doesn't have to have it, but if MAG decides to give it, it's fine. Okay. Yes, so Shengatai is saying that it's it's it, they don't need MAG approval, but they um, they would it would be good to get MAG support. And I think certainly if 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 we're taking Karim's proposal, the way. Um, of integrating it into the 2020 program that is going to involve MAG input and support. So I do think it makes sense for, for, for the revision of that um, proposal to come back to the MAG. And also I think for MAG members to, to support that proposal, MAG members that are for, more familiar with how we can include a, a content of that nature and issues of that nature into, into the programming structure. So, should I, is that clear? Not entirely. Yes. Anya? It's clear enough. Yeah. Okay, good. So, so, thanks very much and thanks to the BPF um, coordinators. I think there's some important takeaways for you for your proposals. I think um, Paul Rowney's group um, noted some of them, but some of them came up. I think the issues of facilitation is absolutely key, leadership from the MAG. I think um, a concept that I really liked from the cybersecurity BPF is, is having an identified a lead subject expert. I don't know if you noticed on the proposal of the cybersecurity BPF, they have co-facilitators and they have um, a lead expert. Um, and, and that's quite useful, I think, for, for, the, for the BPFs um, to have. And also just to take away the experience shared by Maria Paz and others of, of how to, to balance having a focused, output-oriented work program with being inclusive and, and listening to your, your community but not to the point where you actually find your work program so fragmented that it's very hard to produce specific outputs. And I think the other takeaway really is narrowness. If your goal is to identify specific best practices, then, then um, don't start off with too broad um, terrain because then it becomes harder to identify those specific um, good practices. But so thanks very much, everyone. Um, Roberto and then Paul, and then Marcus, and then I'd like to move on to linkages. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just want to confirm that in your proposal, we, we I'm saying we, but we're going to work together with this new proposal, resubmit this new proposal. I just want to make sure that the idea is to look for one, one channel or one modality that allow us to start the work right now because that's important. Um, and we wouldn't like to wait until having some sort of session uh, in, 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 in November and then start the work. That's something that should be considered in order to, I, I, I don't think it should be specifically BPF, but as I said before, that gives uh, a more relevant view about it. Thank you. Um, thanks, thanks for that, um, um, Roberto. I think that it would be good. We have, can I just get a sense, in terms of the, the um, development and resubmission of Karim's proposal, can I just get a sense of, by show of hands, of, of who'd be willing to work on that? Because I think we need a good mix of old and new MAG members that would, would work with Karim and Roberto on developing that proposal. Can I just get a show of hand? We've got Susan, we've got Tamea, um, Roberto, Carlos Afonso. Okay. So, and, and Ben and Christine and Arsan. So that's great. We've got a regulator, we've got private sector, we've got big mega business, and we've got civil society, and, and we've got a telecommunications company. Good. So, look, I think the, the important thing is please, please um, 
Roberto, seeing as Karim has had to leave, will you be our focal point for, for bringing those people together to work on resubmitting that in, in two weeks' time? Sorry. And that is not for yes, no, that is really for just how to take it forward. Um, Paul. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Paul Rani. Just to clarify, because I got a little confused in part of what was discussed, and I think speaking on behalf of our one-third minority <laughs> that we have here, uh, we, we, we would support the BPFs being approved and going on, and whether they change or not I think is less relevant. Uh, but what I, from our takeaway it really is that this working group gets established, it takes note of what we've committed, and that all the BPFs are just conscious that uh, you know next year it might change and they should prepare for next year. I don't think we're changing anything this year so they can move ahead. I think they have the support to continue as they are. Thank you. I think thanks for bringing that up, Paul, because I think I did not include that in my summary. I think we are wanting to communicate to the BPFs that, that, that there is this process of reviewing the, the, the format and, and the process and um, that that, you know, that there should not be an assumption by BPFs that they can just continue infinitely. So I think we do need to capture that in, in, in the output of this meeting and ask everyone in the room um, to communicate, who, all the BPF coordinators, to communicate that to, to their communities. Um, Marcus. Thank you. I take it then that I should be the facilitator of a best practice forum on best practice forums, a, ki a kind of meta best practice forum. Uh, I was just going to make a comment. Those who refer to the connecting enabling the next billion, they may not have necessarily thought of continuing that work that has been closed indeed, but having a similar policy track for that issue. That would be different from a best practice forum, but that would explore the policies related to these issues. That could be a possible way also, a possible format for this work. Yes, and in fact, I had that in mind as well. Sorry, I didn't stress that. And that came from Jennifer, it came from, from, from Paul Charlton. And I think that is again, so for Roberto, um, for those of you that are working on taking that proposal and reviewing it, find out more talk to, to Marcus, talk to, to, to Jennifer, to others, and Paul Charlton who've been around, and to the Secretariat. Because um, that's a slightly different modality, um, but looking at specific policy, policy options, you would probably still have to narrow down and change and, and develop your, your proposal, but that is a modality you can consider asking the MAG to consider. That would have to be approved by the MAG. Okay. Well, so just a quick note, there are also the regular updates BPF coordinators are requested to give at the uh, MAC meetings and the online MAC calls. Uh, I think that could be a, an opportunity. I mean, the coordinators of the proposed BPFs are here. They know what uh, the issues are and what is uh, what the ideas are of the MAC um, that could improve or, or next year. It could be an idea to instead of um, instead see this as a as a dialogue, and that those uh, updates every month from BPF coordinators can just um, or is used to continue this discussion and um, reflect on how the the BPFs instead of I mean it, it's kind of complicated if you talk now of reformulating the the proposals, um, but that that's seen in the, in the longer term that. The coordinators that are in the room here, they, they were part of the discussion. They know uh, what the attention points are for this year and that they might continue this uh, discussion throughout the year. You know, my response to that would be that I think with the MAG has had a discussion. I th the MAG is asking BPF proponents to resubmit their proposals. If any one BPF felt that their proposal is already solid and strong enough that they are addressing all the issues and suggestions, then they can resubmit the same one. Um, but I, you know, I think, I think let's let's stay with that uh, um, um, uh, process of um, approving, but asking or giving the opportunity 
for 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 resubmission. I think if 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 a BPF feels it's not necessary, they don't have to. But then yes, those updates definitely would continue. Is that is that okay? Um, okay. Maria Paz has just joined the speaking queue manually. Question about that: uh, Should we uh, feel already mandated by the MAC to communicate this as a resolution to our BPF, or should we expect an official communication from the Secretariat or from you to move in this course of action of notifying this yeah. uh, reviewing process that we want to implement and everything? Okay, so I think again we need to be. We, let's not be confused here. I think my we are approving the. The existing BPFs, we we're giving BPF BPFs an opportunity to to resubmit their proposals if they feel a need to, based on the discussion in the MAG. Um, we are also informing them that there's a concern that there's an assumption about continuation, and the MAG is going to to to. Uh, approach that through a BPF on BPFs, which will make, make recommendations that will then be taken up next year, not this year. So the, 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 the Marcus Kuma BPF on BPFs is not going to impact um, BPFs this year, but they will probably be asked to, to provide information and give input. So you have the, you can inform them that the, that the MAG, this is my understanding, that we've approved those BPFs, those four BPFs, but we are inviting um, um, the proponents to, to resubmit and revise their proposals based on the discussion in the MAG. And we're sending this message that that there's a concern about about the assumption of continuity and maybe the diffusion of outputs. Okay. Okay. On linkages, really creative suggestions. So, 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 I mean, it's. I think, and what I like about the the suggestion on um, using the introductory sessions and the concluding sessions, it's a very perfect example of incremental change that is simple but actually quite quite powerful and that that uh, that does strengthen the overall um, co conceptual coherence of the IGF so I certainly I'd, would, would think that's a really good practical suggestion um, I think the request to BPFs and DCs to to select a, a track that is most relevant to them um, and then to provide some input on that is is also really good. Um, I think what we will need is maybe a little bit of documentation on that. I think we'd want to. It's again, it's our narrative. We need to find a way of of uh, documenting that so that it's clear and that it makes sense. And I would like. Um, I think the suggestions on NRIs and um, BPFs reaching out to NRIs. I think we need to also talk about DCs reaching out to NRIs and requesting them to do that. I think our DC coordinators. Um, that's something I think I would like you to to, to comment on. And I'd also like Anya just to share. Um, the discussion on linkages that took place during the lunchtime session with NRIs. Thank you. Very briefly, we had an informal discussion with the NRIs and there were a few very good proposals. One very concrete proposal came, uh, came from uh, Paul Rowney and uh, really broadly endorsed by some colleagues, noting that some of the session proponents um, lacked always speakers and expertise from certain regions. So what we will try to do is to work with the NRIs to identify speakers on a particular topic from countries and regions where there are NRI processes and uh, with that enrich the uh, resource persons list that's on the IGF website. Uh, so that's a concrete proposal. Of course, uh, the, if the NRIs will go with, with their sessions, it would be good and I believe the collaboration would be welcomed that the MAG also cooperates with the NRIs on the uh, bottom-up selected teams by, by the network. Thanks, Anya. Any other comments or discussions, uh, suggestions on linkages? So if not, I would like just to make sure that we capture this. I'd like the Secretariat to, to extract from the transcript the discussion on BPFs and the discussion on linkages so that we capture that as a very specific uh, you know, output or, or summary of the discussion as a separate document 
um, so that it's easy for us to communicate the discussion on BPFs and on linkages to the BPFs, to the NRIs, the DCs, etc. Because if it's just part of everything else, it will get lost. So um, if you can um, um, capture that and, and share it with, with the MAG before it, it goes out. Thanks a lot. We are behind time, which my um, control freak um, personality does not like, but it's not too bad. Um, um, so now we are going to go to MAG working groups. Um, I'd like somebody who was on the MAG last year from the Secretariat or, or any one of the MAG members um, just to give a bit of a background to, to this is now the item, item number nine, on, on what those MAG working groups were, how they were constituted, just a little bit. And then I'd like to have reports from, from MAG working groups that have MAG working groups. And I know there's one MAG working group that has a very important report um, for us to consider, and that is the working group on workshop process. Um, but, but let's keep that one last. So before we have the reports, and then we'll have discussion about them, um, if somebody can just give us a sense of what the history is of these working groups, um, when were they um, constituted, and what was the thinking behind that? June. Um, this is June Paris, and I'm going to start with fundraising. <laughs> uh, I'm obsessed with it. Um, yeah, um, I, we started it about two years ago, and Lynn was the chair, and fortunately she's not here anymore. I was co-chair. We spent a year um, trying to establish um, how we could um, encourage donors and make it easy for donors. Um, we, I think we've um, had a, a great number of success thanks to you and Dessa. Um, we've now got a website, we've got links, and we've got um, the potential that we can encourage donors. Uh, last year we continued, uh, but it wasn't so much work. We had meetings, regular meetings, so that we could update what was going on. Since then we developed, we also developed a postcard which is available on the website. Um, so anyone who wants to access this postcard um, you're quite happy to be quite happy for you to do so. Um, we will, I would love for the, um, the working group to continue, but without Lynn, I'm not sure how we can do that because she was the expert. Um, so I'm not sure. Um, we probably need another expert to join us. We had a very small group. Not many people were on the working group, probably about five or six people. So I'm not sure how we're going to continue with this group. You don't have a proposal yet not, for, not at for, the moment, no. for, for continuing it. So we can, we can come back to that then. Um, next, we have the working group on IGF improvements. I mean, I know a little bit about that because that dates back to just after we finished our report as the CSDD working group on IGF improvements. Um, can someone speak to the working group on IGF improvements? Microphone. We, um, we have done some work, but because it's a lot of work, we had like four people in the group again. Uh, we th I think we are considering continuing, but it's not fully discussed yet. Again if, again, if we could get some more members with the experience and the ability to continue the work that was started by some MAG members a few years ago, and they've done brilliant work and we would love to continue. Once again, we have to discuss it. We haven't really fully discussed it. Myself and Shunai Chair, we've been talking about it, whether we should continue with the work, but it's just the two of us really. And Julianne, former MAG, a former MAG member, and um, I think it was, who was the other one? Does anyone remember? There were two MAG members who did quite a lot of work on it. So again, it's in discussion, and we will probably get back to you within the next week. Um, thanks for that. And I think keep in mind that IGF improvements are so tied into to other aspects of our work um, and into the discussion um, of, of the high-level panel um, um, uh, of, of digital cooperation improvements, the recommendation on mechanisms for digital cooperation. So it's, it's, it's and also in fact the BPF work as well. So there's in fact work happening around the MAG um, on IGF improvements 
and maybe the working group can build on that or communicate that, or maybe um, it needs to play a different role or people can just participate in those processes. But so you'd like some time. Um, June, if I understand you correctly, for both those two groups, you'd like a little bit of time to talk to others and come up with a proposal and work plan for 2020. And I don't think anyone should feel under pressure. I don't think we need to have a working group because we had a working group. We'll have lots of other work to do as a MAG. So um, make sure that there's a very clear, strong need, demand, and commitment. Um, don't feel under pressure to continue. Um, okay, next we have working group on outreach. Oh, sorry, I saw Jennifer, you had your, you're down. Okay, good. Um, working group on outreach and engagement. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is, this, this is Arsene, Arsene Tungali. Uh, I'd like to speak on the on the working group on outreach and, and engagements, and I hope you all received uh, a report that we uh, shared yesterday on the on the mag list, which uh, can kind of outlines what we've been up to uh, the past year, uh, 2019, and uh, which was essentially about um, discussing or, uh, with the IGF secretariats on ways we can support their online communications. And so we had a very good conversation with the secretariats uh, along the year in trying to understand what are the needs in terms of outreach and engagement with the broader community, because we had the impression that um, not so much was done in terms of uh, communicating around uh, what's going on in the IGF in terms of processes and, and events and, and the things that the community needs to be aware of. And so we kind of developed uh, a strategy that we were able to share with the secretariats uh, for implementation. And so we've been uh, thinking about what we need to do in 2020. And so we have a request uh, to the MAG to be able to approve uh, a new or to recharter the working group so that we can work on a new charter and look at how we can focus our work and, and on which area. But essentially this working group aims at supporting the outreach and communications uh, around what's going on within the IGF uh, to the broader community to ensure uh, feedback and involvement from the uh, global community of the IGF. So uh, that's it. Thanks very much, Hassan. Any other comments or questions at this point? So, I mean, would you like to continue? Is there discussion about continuing? Or would you like to do that at a later stage? Or would you also like time to submit a proposal? So I think, I think we want to continue, but I'm not quite sure about the process, whether it's the MAG uh, as a whole that needs to approve uh, a working group to continue. But from our end, as members of the working group, we are willing to continue. And so if the MAG uh, feels like we, they, they want us to continue, then we we'll work on a new charter and that we can submit uh, for approval to the MAG. I think the purpose of these working groups are to produce results, not to keep MAG members busy. So, because MAG members will have a lot of other work. Once we start working with the thematic narratives and with the workshop proposal and the program development. So, um, you know, I, I, I'd like to suggest that we, but that I think it's a good idea to give you time, but I think it might also be good to give the secretariat an opportunity to look at where they need, because these working groups um, go beyond the work of the program, of designing the program of the MAG. So it might also be useful to get a sense from the Secretariat and myself as well when we process the outcome of this meeting, where we feel their specific needs. I think I've heard communication strategy, for example, is clearly something that is important. But I think what we need to be careful about is fragmentation of effort. And I think we had with, you know, with some of the work that some of the working groups, I was part of the last working group, um, um, which was on a working group on reporting. Uh, there was work happening elsewhere on reporting and, and they were disconnected. Uh, you know, the, the secretariat was doing work, the host government was doing work. So I think that's what we've, we've got to be careful about. But let's review them all and then, and, and, um, we, then we look at, at the way forward. And I think all the working groups obviously have the right to, to propose a work plan um, 
um, for the following year. And I think at basing that work plan on the outputs they delivered during the previous year, I think is a good way to start, as well as responding to needs. But we're almost there. Your time leaving you last. Work King Group on reporting. Can anyone talk about that? We're coming back to that because we know you've got a substantive report. Is anyone able to talk about that working group? I think Wim has left the room. I mean, I was not on the mug, but Lynn invited me to join that working group. And it, it was, the idea was to make the reporting of, of, of the IGF um, more conducive to dissemination of outputs. And I think we had several meetings, we had some discussions and ideas, but I think those were, um, there's no report to my knowledge. Is there a report, Secretariat? Um, there were, there's, on the website. Oh, sorry. So sorry. Um, on the website, there's, uh, reports of the meetings. We had two meetings, two online meetings, and the summary reports are on the website. And okay. So we had reports of our meetings, but mm -hmm. there wasn't really a report on the work of the working group. Yeah. And I think that was partly, and I think this often happens in real life, uh, a working group is formed to fill a gap, and in a way that creates encouragement for that gap to be filled, even if that gap is then filled by other people. And I think that's what happened. And, and the gap was filled, was filled by the key messages, the real-time reporting coordinated by women with, with Samantha, and the work that the host government had done and Diplo Foundation. So I think, in a sense, um, the work of this particular working group was done um, by others. But with the support and the involvement, because both women and myself uh, um, were involved in, in this working group. So I'm not sure that at this point we need a, my, my sense is that, and I'll check in with Lynn on this, but my sense is we don't need a continuation of that um, as an isolated working group at this point. If there are no further comments, I'd like to give the floor to, to, to Yuta, and that is the, the working group on workshop process. And for the new MAG members, this is very important because workshop selection is one of the most complicated and, and, and um, challenging activities that we do as a MAG. And it's also the one that the community is, is most concerned about. And therefore, the work and the study that this working group did is very important. So, um, Yuta. It was Susan, Yuta, Sylvia. Who else worked on that? Who's, it who's presenting? It was it? many more Susan people who were working okay. on that, but okay. chairing were Susan, Sylvia, okay. and me. And Susan will start explaining the methodology and what we changed from 2018 to 2019, and then I will present the survey results in a second. Thanks, Shuta. My apologies, Susan. No worries. <clears throat> Sorry, no worries. And um, I'll, I'll be brief. Um, uh, <clears throat> and if there's a, I'd, I'd like to share some general thoughts later if we have time, Henriette, on the process. Um, <clears throat> But um, so just very quickly, a brief history of the workshop evaluation process at the IGF. Um, so the, the MAG actually set to defining criteria for evaluating the workshops in 2013. That was the first time um, I think that the MAG and the IGF was were were smaller than um, and before then certainly and so there were no uh, workshops were selected through discussion but um, uh, there were no criteria that were published for the community and the evaluation process wasn't spelt out so um, 2013 was the first time that the uh, Meg set to um, to enunciate that and which was good for transparency reasons. Um, the reason why I know this is because I was um, part of the MAG back then in a different, very different capacity. Uh, um, but so it's been a long process. 
Uh, the MEG used to evaluate all proposals that came in, and of course, as the IGF became more important and gained invisibility, more proposals were submitted. So it used to be the case that you get 100 workshop proposals, and now how many did we receive last year? Over 300, I believe. Um, so the workload increased because as a MEG member, one of um, the primary responsibilities is to review what the community has submitted to us collectively uh, for consideration and to decide whether or not that proposal um, should be accepted or, or declined. Um, so what happened a few years ago was that instead of the MAG reviewing, all of the MAG reviewing, all proposals, because the numbers were growing, we split into different groups. So we split the proposals up and we only read one section of them. Um, the benefit of this, of course, was that uh, people did not have to spend as much time reading the proposals. Um, the detriment of this is that people did not have a bird's eye view of what the community had submitted. And when you're trying to, because part of our obligation is to balance the whole program, that becomes problematic, right? Um, so, uh, what, so what we did then after that, taking that tack, that approach, um, the year before last, we assigned proposals randomly. That's when we have many more themes. Um, and we also assigned, we could also signal or flag our interests, um, our subject matter interests. So if somebody wanted to review a proposal that was on cybersecurity more than they would like to review a proposal on human rights, um, they would be allocated the cybersecurity proposal, or at least in theory. Some people um, did not get their preference. Their preference wasn't met. Um, I think the MEG found that was problematic for a lot of reasons. Um, so we discontinued that practice, and that leads me, Utah, to just the changes that we made um, for last year. So last year, we discontinued the MEG expressing an interest in a certain subject matter area. <laughs> um, and um, MEG members were assigned to uh, each uh, group per theme. There was a digital inclusion group, um, safety, security, stability, and resilience group, and a data governance group. And if you were in that group, you got all the proposals that were submitted under that theme. And that's how those were the proposals that you reviewed and you had the benefit of working with um, um, the others in your group to discuss the proposals. So while not all MEG members have a bird's eye view of all the tracks, um, um, MEG members will have a bird's eye view of at least one of the themes, which, which uh, helps for at least selecting proposals for that theme. <laughs> And I think that is, that's probably the gist of it. So I'll turn over to Yuta. Thank you, Susan. I do think you uh, explained it very well. I just wanted to add that I do think uh, the more um, all the efforts started with Rasha Abdullah being a MAC member coming from the academia background and she put a lot of uh, efforts into the process to have a fair and transparent and objective uh, evaluation process. And what we try to, uh, to, to uh, in developing that further was mainly um, giving the MAG members a common ground to start from. So that means if we have a system where proposals can score between one or five points, that everybody gets the same, more or less the same notion, what is worth to give a five, and what is maybe a three, a two, or only one, one point. Uh, that was very important, and we somehow did a little bit of training uh, together with the MAC members, trying to get a, a common understanding how to apply these scores. Um, 
Yes, and also that is important to know that when we have these different criteria that we apply to the proposals, like for example diversity, which was a big debate, uh, how we apply uh, uh, diversity to the proposals, but also content and quality of uh, the policy questions, our quality of the interaction with the participants in the session, all these are the criteria that we applied. And we give a different way to these criteria. And I do think that is one task we have to discuss during our virtual meetings or hopefully to during our next uh, two face-to-face -face meetings. Um, that uh, we, we need to discuss face-to-face -face which weight will be given to diversity, to content to methodology of interaction and so on uh, and come to a, uh, to a good conclusion uh, to use that. Uh, but not to uh, disappoint you, but to give you more motivation to take that burdensome process uh, on you as a MAG member, uh, I would like to show you uh, the results from the survey that we did um, send to the workshop proposers and that was after the workshop selection process was finalized, but before we had the IGF, that you need to take that in mind that it was before November, but after all the feedback was given to the proposers. Could you please click to the second slide? So it was before the IGF took place and we got 54 respondents answering. This is about 20% of those who sent in workshop proposals because several people sent in more than one proposal. When we had over 300, it, was, it wasn't 300 people who sent in these proposals. So we, firstly, we asked uh, about uh, uh, their over, overall satisfaction with the process. And you can see that we had uh, eight people saying, we're really satisfied, 15, well satisfied, it was okay, 21. So we had less than 10% that uh, were not satisfied or said it could have been better. Next slide, please. About the application form, whether it was clear and whether uh, the guidelines about the criteria were comprehensible to the people. Uh, you, you, again, you can see that uh, nine people were very satisfied. We had 23 well satisfied, 14 saying it was okay. And again, less than 10% who did not agree with what we uh, had done. Then we asked about the type li uh, timeline, and uh, there we had uh, uh, the overwhelming majority uh, said it was fine for them. Uh, well satisfied, 19, it was okay, 24. So I do think we can stick to that timeline, more or less it, it, it fit into uh, the work that proposers were doing. Then we asked uh, about the feedback they received from, from the MAC members. And that uh, in the last year, we had two fields as MAC members in the evaluation where we can put in comments that were meant to go out to the workshop proposers and comments that were for our internal discussions. So sometimes you decide, this is something I will discuss with my uh, other MAC colleagues, but I would not want it to go out to the workshop proposal, not to make it public. 10 people said it was very comprehensible what they got as feedback, 26 said comprehensible, eight said it could have been better and uh, not well explained or incomprehensible. That were only three that said they didn't understand what they got on feedback. Um, we asked them also what they made out of that comments they got uh, and 14 said the comments helped me to improve my proposal. I agree with the comments. Uh, 21 said I took some of the suggestions on board. Um, eight said I did not want to change my proposal although some of the suggestions might have worked. Um, Two said the recommendations were well thought through, but I could not achieve to adopt them. Uh, and eight said they were not fit for purpose. Uh, and now the last slide that uh, was a question about uh, mergers. 
uh, because we we thought uh, we were a bit uh, in conflict whether we should suggest mergers or not. But from the feedback we got, I would say mergers could be a good solution. Um, so let me have a look. At, I can't read it there. Uh, mergers of workshop proposals help accommodate more relevant issues to the program, said 60, uh, 36 uh, respondents, uh, only six that mergers are not an adequate option, um, and 16 that if a merger had been suggested to me, I would have accepted. So we can see that in the community, we have much more acceptance for mergers than we had thought before. So that could be also uh, a consideration for the next uh, evaluation process that we consider more uh, in more cases to suggest a merger. So overall, I would say that is a very good result that we and a good feedback we got from the community. So it's worth to go into that burdensome process of evaluation again. Thank you. Thanks very much, Jutta and Susan, and everyone else on your working group for that. And Maria Paz, you have the floor, and the floor is open to, to, to questions for this working group. So, so Maria Paz Canales, for the record, uh, representing civil society from Grulac. Um, I think that uh, Susan and, and Judah, they made a, a terrific work uh, over the year, and Sylvia. and Sylvia also. I will, well, I will mention, I mean, I will not mention everybody, but they, they lead the, the initiative of uh, the workshop uh, process uh, working group. Um, I try to follow and, and support the small pieces of that work in, in some point, but I think that they also gather uh, a lot of more experience and they made very valuable comments uh, over the, the the course of the year that is not totally reflected in in, in the in the survey neither in in some aspect that have been uh, already commented and that Ele those elements are really relevant for uh, the, the phase that we are uh, starting now of planning our uh, work for this year and some of those elements that I, I, I uh, they haven't been mentioned now, some of them uh, uh, over the time in the past two years, two days, sorry. Um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, that I think that are relevant are uh, the ones that allow to have a, a, a more thorough learning process of the review that, for example, uh, uh, relate to how you provide this instruction, this in instruction that Yuta was mentioning according uh, last year we had a, a, a Excel spreadsheet in which it was a, an indication of how to apply the different uh, score what means the scores uh, for each one of the categories so that provide a guideline and there were uh, some difficulties that uh, some of us declare in, in, in the application of the, of the criteria, but I think that are worth to review. Some of those have been mentioned before. I want to uh, recall them now. For example, uh, the uh, self-declaring of uh, uh, belonging to a specific stakeholder group, which was problematic to measure the, um, the diversity criteria, because sometimes there are some things that were like belonging to a, a, a very uh, broad bucket, and it was very difficult to make a, a very uh, a more thorough assessment of the diversity of the proposal. And many times there were very good proposals that were uh, 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 scored low uh, in, in the diversity uh, uh, section, but very good in the other ones. So that's something that we need to review uh, in order to, to check the stakeholder uh, belonging of the submitters. And also, uh, I will encourage to uh, take a, st a step further and look um, into the uh, regional divisions also or geographic division that sometimes also are, are making that some group feels uh, not enough represented because they belong to a community that is uh, too broad. Uh, another thing that I, I will uh, uh, highlight in this point regarding to the process is precisely the issue that uh, the fact that we get uh, uh, the agreement about what will be the track in advance of m making the calling for uh, the proposals 
it was a very good improvement because it allows the, prop the proponents to identify themselves in one of the tracks. But I think that afterwards, when we did the categorization of this uh, uh, proposal for scoring them, the fact that we have only some uh, indications to tax about the subtopics provide uh, the issue of like not being able to be very strategic in the uh, overview of the all the, the the proposal that were presented in in each of the track and uh, it didn't allow this uh, bird side uh, view that uh, susan was mentioning that it, it, it's very relevant for uh, being able to uh, be sure that nothing relevant for that track is being left out because many times there are many proposals that are very competitive and, and score very high in the same topic that can be one of the most popular topics inside the track but there are other less popular topics that are also relevant and we should strategically protect the space for for them to have at least one proposal addressing so i think uh, now I'm going with my obsession of this year. I think that uh, the, the possibility of looking at the sub-teams at early stage before doing the call for proposal, it will avoid to have this issue. It will provide more simplicity for the MAC to have this overview and be more fair in the scoring of the, of the, of the proposal at the same time that uh, being sure not leaving important pieces out of the program. Um, thanks, Maria Paz. But you could still have the problem of having more workshop proposals identify with one of those sub-themes than with the others, that it won't eliminate that. I just want to read quickly. I see, Ben, you, I know you've asked for the floor, um, but um, just to revisit what we looked at during the open consultation, and that was the feedback um, from the stock-taking exercise this is version two, um, the document that Secretariat posted yesterday, which is implemental. It's called um, IGF 2019 Taking Stock Process, um, um, Implementable Suggestions for Improvements. I just want to read it's one item on workshops. Um, develop detailed requirements for workshop proponents. Um, simplify overall process introduce more transparency in the evaluation process, policy questions for thematic narratives to be more specific. Um, there could be two types of workshops, workshop exploring new areas and looking to the future on emerging issues and workshops that are expected to feed concretely into the um, thematic structure and the discussion of the main sessions on selected priorities. I just want to refresh our minds. Ben. Thank you. Um, so I, I wanted to provide some some support to what Maria Paz just proposed. And if, if we if we think about where we've ended up, and it was great for Susan to provide that history. It's evolved. The workshop evaluation process has, has evolved uh, as the years have gone on. And last year it adapted so that you, as a MAG member, you were just looking at one particular track, and that made it easier to kind of compare the various topics of interest within a track. So you weren't looking at workshop proposals across the whole gamut, but you were able to do a better comparison. And so I, I think I like what Maria Paz is saying. I like the idea that um, when we review the workshop proposals, um, we can also be looking at them by sub theme. Um, and that potentially requires um, even more work from the Secretariat to organize for us because, you know, we'll, as the Secretariat is working at very short um, deadlines, each work proposal, workshop proposal is given the number in the order that it comes in. And then um, it's quite hard as the MAG member to then group them into the sub themes. And if some MAG members, I think Maria Paz was telling me earlier, she made the effort she, before she started, she went and grouped them herself. But that won't necessarily be easy or obvious to MAG members. And so others won't and others won't have that same benefit. So it, I wonder if there's ways um, when, when they're passed out to each of the groups um, that it's clear. And, and so when I start reading, I can start reading all the ones on this particular sub theme under my thematic track and then the others. And 
yeah. So this may be a process. But, but my understanding of Maria Paz's proposal is that we actually identify those sub-themes before the call goes out. So that, or at least an initial identification, it could be a draft identification of sub-themes, and proponents will then self-select, which is, that's how I understood your proposal. Is that correct, Maria Paz? Yeah, I think that it's always needed some kind of curation work from the secretariat because sometimes the proponent also made a confusion in the categories. So uh, in general, it will work by self-identification if we provide this option in the submission process. That is why I'm advocating for doing at earlier stage because that simplifies a lot the work of everybody, of the secretariat and, and the MAC members in the review, everyone, because we have as a first filter the self-identification of the proponent and then we can apply some correct filter uh, if we are seeing that there's something that is not being covered or there's something that it's, it's badly uh, uh, categorized, something like that. But at least we have a base that is easier and, and, and answer the issue of transparency that people is mentioning. That I, I know that I, I understand that Judah was mentioning that that was not so prevalent in the survey but it appeared in the, in the feedback. Venice. Is that, do you want to come back on that, or is that? Yes, I think I think that would be helpful too. And, and then there's just this extra step between what the secretariat receives and then when they pass down to us, rather than uh, you know a, an 80-page PDF document um, where they're just in numerical order, in the order they came in, um, we're giving them in batches or something like that. I know it comes at a, a big time pressure, but. Otherwise, different people have different ways of marking them, and, and this way they're forced to kind of think of all of the ones. You know, if we get down the road where we want to do mergers, it's very helpful that you read all of the different ones on fake news within the same hour or at the same time, rather than across the week. You know, on Monday I read two on fake news, none on Tuesday, on Wednesday I came across another one. It's, just, it's a process where I think it would further evolve the process to help us do it in a more uh, focused way. That's too many uses of the word. For Thanks. Us. We have Jennifer, Susan, and then we have Yuta. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, just really quickly, I guess Maria Paz's um, proposal I do support, and we can actually use the call we're going to go out for the validation call to take a look at a preliminary cut of the sub-themes. I think that would be helpful for all of us to think about. And I wanted to briefly respond to her other point about some proposals last year coming in quite low for the diversity and high for other things like content and, and, and you know, thoughtfulness and innovation. Um, I know not everybody was in the room when we had the NRI informal meeting during lunch, but both Paul and I mentioned that it might be a good idea to integrate some kind of um, people resource list from the NRIs, meaning that the NRIs themselves may have experts on certain topics um, that they can put people forward or people can self-identify to put forward onto a currently existing resource list that the IGF Secretariat has on the website. That can help with, you know, whether people who don't know certain uh, other people in other regions, if they don't know that there are some experts on this or people who are relevant to their workshop or, or topics, they can have this resource. And similarly, it would be beneficial for us as MAG, as MAG members to have this resource to look at and suggest, you know, possible people to add to increase the diversity aspect of proposals. Um, but I also just, sorry, Susan, to interject just quickly, but I also understood that, in fact, that it might not have worked that well to demand confirmed speakers early on in the process because the, the, the speaker roles that were in the workshop proposals looked very different from those that eventually made it um, uh, to the IGF. So you might be creating more complexity, harder work for your proponents, um, maybe more room for bias in the evaluation by MAG members, um, and, um, and 
and and then in fact you end up because no one can guarantee who's going to actually be at the IGF in actually having a very different way of approaching diversity. So I, 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 no one's raised that, so, but I've heard several people talk about that maybe not having worked that well. So I'm just flagging that. Susan. Comment quickly. Sorry, thank you, Madam Chair, very quickly. Definitely have seen this as um, a feedback from the uh, taking stock. Um, one thing that we did talk about when I was in my first year as MAG member, from, I've, people do remember Rasha did mention, we look at the proposals as they come in and we evaluate the diversity as we see it. So one suggestion that I did see from the taking stock was perhaps um, these proposers could also indicate this is a slot for somebody from GRULAC who is from civil society, this is a person that I've confirmed, but if that person cannot make it, we can then use a resource list to replace a similar kind of diversity there. Just a so there's a different way of getting at that. Susan. Thanks, Chair. Um, I just, I'd like to take a, a step back uh, just for a second. Uh, while we're discussing this, I think it's a really important conversation to have. Um, <laughs> There, there are a lot of comments that would come in about the IGF over the years. It's too busy. There are too many things going on at the same time. I mean, that's, that's I think, a feedback that the Secretariat has received maybe some, for, I don't know, a decade. Um, and, I, you know, what we tried to do last year was to be able to um, narrow the focus uh, as we had discussed um, on day one, by putting, um, creating a three theme program, it was a great way to organize. And organize, organizing and streamlining is key. I don't think it's really good anymore to have more than three themes or eight themes, which we had at one point. Um, this is what people are reacting to when they say it's too busy. Um, so I think as we step into next year's process, um, and even considering some of the gaps that the IGF is said to have, um, um, kind of a, a, a lack of focus, we need more concrete outcomes. All of this I really do think relates to the design of the program. And the, the, the culture of um, this group, I think, for better or worse, is one of accepting, be more inclusive, in terms of all the workshops that we have than less. It's really tough for the MEG to make hard decisions about um, sticking to one subject matter theme. Um, uh, so um, as part of, just to address the sub theme, um, I'll be a lot more specific now, <laughs> thanks. Um, just to address the, the sub theme idea. Um, Will we have, well, if we establish sub-themes sub in advance, does that mean that the workshop has to fulfill a nexus requirement for that sub-theme or not? Um, presumably, we develop the narratives for digital inclusion and for um, the other two themes. Those were narratives because we are encouraging people to tailor their workshops to that narrative and to meet a nexus. We have an internet governance nexus requirement. We have a narrative um, a thematic requirement. Um, if we do sub-themes, are we, are we asking submitters to also prove that there's a nexus between what they will discuss and these three levels of nexus? Um, so internet governance, um, the theme, and the sub-theme. Um, and it's important that we consider that because uh, we only accepted, I mean, we, we accepted less than a third of the workshops that were submitted last year. It's very competitive now. Um, and um, the last point I wanted to make is that um, if we establish sub-themes, and if we have these narratives, nothing matters. All of the work that the MAG knows so well 
and that the, the Secretariat knows so well because the Secretariat is at the coal face of implementing this, whether it's at a web forum or um, because the Secretariat's job is to focus on these discussions. This really doesn't matter unless it's communicated to the proposers who are making these proposals. Um, so a lot of folks have um, mentioned the problems with the diversity component, um, which we addressed extensively last year. Part of our conversations were about what does diversity mean? Um, so if you have, I recall Sandra from Eurodig said, well, there were a lot of regional proposals that were submitted but were rejected on the basis that they were not diverse geographically. Um, we had an extensive conversation about this in the workshop selection process last year to come up with a definition that says diversity is relative. Clearly that wasn't communicated, neither to the MAG, right? Well, it could have been to the pros proposers, but the MAG didn't understand that. Um, so I think it's, it's, it's a question of simplification, um, design thinking. I mean, there are 50 of us and we're all very bright, dedicated people, but I am not a design person. And I don't know if anybody else here is a design thinker either. Um, how can we try and, if possible, have design expertise incorporated into this process um, so we can make it simpler for everybody and simpler and more clear for the proposers, the community? Thank you. Thanks. Good points. And um, I'll ask Jutta to go next. yet for giving me the floor. Uh, somehow, uh, I think Susan has brought us back on track. So uh, I wanted to say some minutes, minutes before that, uh, I have the suggestion not to go too much into detail how the evaluation process will be done at this point. We only have one hour left. We have a lot of things on the agenda. Um, I. I'm ready to, to take part again in that working group. I would like to invite all the MAC members, former MAC members, new MAC members uh, to join that working group, so to expand our expertise. Uh, but I don't think it's the right point to, to go too much into detail. I prefer the way that you have put it forward now on uh, concentrating on, on the other aspects as well. And we should, of course, take in consideration what messages do we send out to the community when we put out the, the call for workshop proposals. And now that I have the microphone, I last uh, but not least, I would like to mention that I, I got a lot of feedback during the last uh, three days uh, and on concerns about uh, whether we have only the two face-to-face -face meetings this year and I do think we should discuss that We're going to get well. back to that in the next okay, slide. Thank you. Um, I think we've, we've got June, um, Paul, Tamea. I'd like to close the floor. If there's anyone else, quickly add yourself, and then I'm going to ask Louise to, to close. And I think just, yes, in terms of the design thinking, absolutely. And I think we cannot add um, uh, um, an imposed structure at the track level and then add too much imposed structure at the workshop level either. I think we do have to be careful about that. The IGF has to be a mix of, of structure and openness. And I think if we over-engineer and try and create too much um, structures and subcategories and sub-themes at all levels, in all the dimensions of the IGF, it could become fragmented in, in, a, in a completely new way. So these are good cautions. I think I'll, I'll, I'll make a suggestion later on about how to deal with the design thinking. Um, let's go to our floor and everyone, please be quick. We're running late. June. Thank you. I was, what you've just said is what I was gonna say. Sometimes we can make things a bit too complicated and then it's not so easy. Um, the work done was, is brilliant work done by the group, especially the three leader, lead um, group workers. Um, but what I want to say in terms of the, um, the feedback from, the, from outside of the, from the, um, for the survey is that it's not representative. Um, is it possible that we could probably do that again and get a true 
picture of what um, the public actually feel about it. Um, we had 300, 300 and whatever um, proposals and we had 50 something um, responses to the um, survey, not representative. Do you know, what yeah. I can tell you, because I checked with the Secretariat while you were all talking, um, we, we, we need to have our revised workshop call ready by 15 February. So we do not have time to go back and ask for more input, input. We're going to have to work with what we know, what we've learned, stop taking the survey and our own good judgment and our connections with our constituencies. Um, uh, Rudolph has added to this, so we'll have um, June, when you're done, Paul, Tamea, Rovato, and Rudolph will be the last speaker in this, in this um, element, the segment of the agenda. I agree with you. Okay, thank you, Chair. Randy. Uh, my, my, my biggest issue or concern from the IGF last year was uh, the workshops changing speakers. Uh, and they were qualified based on diversity, then they ended up with no diversity. And, one of the proposals that was made last year was that uh, if a workshop is selected, it's given provisional approval and then given time, say four weeks, to concretize on their speakers. Uh, so they can go out, they can get confirmation letters that uh, the, these people would attend and if they need to, to, to change speakers, it has to be like for like to maintain that diversity. And this, this is where this database, resource database that we spoke about and integrating it with the IGF resources and stuff, uh, it, it enables the workshop if they lose someone, they can actually dig into a pool and quite quickly find someone. And if we build that database in such a way, it's quite easy to work, filter on the criteria that you're looking for, they could then quite easily get a replacement and maybe even fund some people <laughs> if they have, can afford it to actually attend the IGF. Uh, thank you. Good, and that needs to go into this working group. And uh, Tamea, before I give you the floor, um, I'd like to give the mic to our um, co-chair, Mikhail, and I really want to thank, thank, thank you very much, thank both of you very much for having been here and worked hard as part of the process. Um, it's really been very good. I feel certainly very, very excited about working with you and convey that to Wanda as well. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, sorry for breaking uh, the, the, the good flow of the session. I really have to go with Shemek, and, and I think the most relevant word from me right now is, is, the, is the warmest word of thank you. Uh, I'd like to thank you all for uh, your support, uh, assistance, and consideration, and uh, making this uh, first Mac meeting for me as soft a landing as possible. And, uh, and uh, I, uh, we we've had a lot of uh, meetings with Shemek, and uh, uh, and I, I think I'm slowly getting the hang of what's going on and where I am, uh, finally. And uh, uh, big thanks to uh, Henriette for uh, chairing this meeting so wonderfully uh, and for being patient and responsive to me, wanting to flow outside of the queuing system, which is still a bit of a, a mystery <laughs> to me. Sorry, uh, uh, sorry, Louis. And uh, uh, looking forward to cooperating with you in the future uh, to, uh, or either, virtually or in uh, Geneva or uh, of course in Katowice. Thank you very much and see you. Thanks very much to Chemek and Miko and safe travels and please give our best regards to Wanda. Thank you. Well, Thanks. Thank you to Maya. Thank you, Chair. <laughs> it's interesting to follow applause and these thanks. <laughs> Completely forgot what I was going to say. Um, no, not really. Um, I have a couple of points, um, and do stop me if I'm if I'm out of uh, order. You were going to <laughs> thank your mother and your father. <laughs> and your... <laughs> yes, uh, I'm going to hold up the Oscars now. Um, I was I was going to reflect to, to all of the um, best practice for sorry the, all of the working groups that uh, that we um, that we were looking at um, earlier um, this afternoon um, and I have a couple of points. Um, I want to echo something that that that, um, that you said, um, Anyet, on the purpose of why we have mag working groups, um, and I think the you were saying the purpose of the MAG working groups is to take off burden from the Secretariat's shoulders um, and then to work in tandem where we need to support the work that is already 
being done somewhere. So with that in mind, I would have um, a couple of questions around the working groups on funding and the working group on improvements. Um, I think the working group on improvements um, could be um, in observer mode this year, perhaps, while we figure out the linkages with the high level panel digital cooperation and, um, and other, um, you know, the, the voluntold working group that Marcus is going to lead on BPFs and <laughs> all the others. Um, I, I, and for uh, the MAG um, to focus on, on some, of, some of the other work. In terms of funding, um, we've been um, calling for this um, repeatedly and, and I want to reiterate the question, is there any way where um, either a professional fundraiser or, or somebody with a clear experience in this could lead the work rather than um, well-meaning and, and, and enthusiastic working group members trying to figure out how to do that without much experience. Um, and happy to support um, uh, any outreach or calls or, or whatever that we can do, but I, I, am, I still remain skeptical that the expertise lies within the MAG to do this meaningfully. Um, on the working group uh, on workshop process, um, I think just judging from the conversation that we've had uh, just now, uh, I think it's vital that this this continues. Um, I'm and I also feel the same way about the working group on outreach um, and and communication. Um, and taking those two together, I don't I don't suggest merging them, but they, taking those two together, I think both would benefit from a clear. Um, schedule and action plan that we are to we want to take uh, and a clear solidified process that we all commit to as of the beginning of this year that we want to follow um, looking ahead to Katowice. Um, I think with all the work that we have we fall into the trap sometimes of rethinking the process midway and, and coming up with new ideas. Um, we have a good draft timeline that we're going to talk about soon. Can we look at that timeline and see if we can solidify the actual organizational and logistical process for this year um, and then leave it to the working group on outreach and communication to come up with a communication plan around it, um, working in tandem with the, with the workshop proposal um, process and, and the team there to make sure the community is very well informed about what we want to do when um, and it's not just informed about the sausage making process, but also um, enticed to participate. So um, coming up with, with good messages on the actual narratives that we are going to um, employ this year, the three tracks, et cetera, et cetera, um, so that people uh, who might want to come to Katowice know from the get go um, how can they engage and how can they participate meaningfully if they want to go there on the issues that interest them, not on proposed workshops. The message is not proposed workshops. The message is come discuss the issues you are interested in and these are the ways that the IGF that you can do. So if we can work around one, solidifying the process, communicating the process and then sticking to the process, I think those are good, three, three good goals that should inform the work of the MAG as you break into our working groups for the year. Thank you. Um, thanks, Demea. Um, just, just one quick reaction to that. I think those are good suggestions. But you mentioned the high-level panel and the working group on IGF improvements. And you suggested uh, you know, putting it on pause for now. But in fact, that could also become its work. We could have a working group that looks specifically at IGF and IGF improvement in the context of IGF plus and those proposals. So that's just a slightly different starting from where you started, but just looking at it slightly differently. Um, uh, we have Roberto. Thank you, Madam Chair. That last part was clarifying maybe the opportunities that we have. I don't know if we're going to create another group, a work group regarding the, to this uh, best, practice, best practices, as Tamaya said before, or maybe we can include it in the improvements for IGF. That's another alternative, but I'm not, I'm not sure who, which one is the best. Um, but I, I also want to comment a little bit, very quick, about uh, Maria Paz's passion. And uh, by, by that moment, 
uh, we didn't have, we didn't uh, agree yet that we were supposed to open another call for issues, but now it's agreed, right? So we are going to have this process again. Uh, can't we take advantage of that process in order to um, also ask uh, to submit what could be the sub team related to, to, do, to those others? I think we've already decided that we would do that. We might not call it sub themes, but we are asking for content, for issues that we can then use to begin to develop sub themes. So we are already planning to do that. That uh, we could work in a preliminary fashion of already uh, fixed sub themes that we could include in the call that could be an alternative I think I th uh, yes and I think we've got, I've got a proposal on that which I'll come to later two 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 um, things that come to my mind especially when we talk about uh, the workshop selection process um, if we go perhaps um, to the end of the process and look, did we have good workshops last year at the IGF? Were these good workshops? Were they diverse? Were they, had, did they have a good substance? I would say yes for the vast majority of, 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 what, we, of what we had uh, on the IGF. So the selection process perhaps was not so bad at the end. So we, we, we had good results. I think that's important to retain. And um, the second thought that I have is um, we will not get rid of the responsibility to select. And we will not get rid of the burden to reject. And it will perhaps be even more that more uh, responsibility and more workshops that we have to reject the more the IGF becomes popular and more people want to get involved. So I think the process is important and it's, it's a, it's, it has to be transparent and everything, but this at the end is the responsibility of the MAG and we will be, um, we, we, we will be confronted with that in any weather. That's just two ideas that I wanted to share. And I think just to add to that, I think a, a point that I think um, one of the MAG members made to me is that um, that, in fact, if we change the process every year, we're not making it easier for, for workshop proponents. We're making it harder. So that's, you know, if we're going to make changes, simplify what you have, but, but don't change. Don't change the process. Um, thanks very much, everyone. Um, I'll try and, and conclude on, on working groups. I think we... we Existing working groups have um, the opportunity, I think they can have two weeks like, like BPFs to come up with, um, with proposals if they want to continue. Um, I think we've, we've got the input on fundraising and professional fundraising. I think take that on board. Don't feel compelled to submit a proposal for, for continuation. I think that we need to consider uh, having some kind of group of MAG members working on IGF improvements, particularly in the context of the best of, of the high level panel on digital cooperation and this discussion on the IGF plus. Because clearly when we asked on day one people to talk about IGF plus, they actually talked about IGF. And, and I think that's a reality we need to be able to respond to at a strategic level as well as a, a substantive incremental change level. So I think we, we, we should consider um, a call for or a formation of that type of working group and, um, and maybe we can, we, can, we, can, we can work on that. Um, there's a proposal that the working group on engagement and outreach and reporting actually integrates in some way. I think we clearly agree that there's a need for the working group on workshop process to, to work with all the input that it's gathered and the content of this discussion. And we need you to do your work quite quickly because we need to start formulating that. I'd like to say we also need something, maybe we can call it a task team, not a working group, to help us craft this call for validation of thematic tracks and issues. So, and we need to do that basically um, next week, Monday, Tuesday. 
Monday, Tuesday. So I'd like people that are that are um, that are willing to be part of that. That's where we call for for um, the the three main themes, the the plus one and issues and sub themes so that we can craft that in a way that makes sense. We'll send it to everyone for comment, but if there are people who are willing to work on that um, uh, beginning of next week, then please just let me know or let the Secretariat know. But beyond that, I think what we are saying is we, we, we're giving the working groups an opportunity to, to, to reflect and um, uh, submit a proposal for continuation with a work plan. But I would urge you not to feel too hasty because I think as the work of the MAG continues, we'll need other working groups or some of the same working groups that focuses specifically on the work of 2020. And so rather than have these continuing standing working groups, it might be better to form work teams and task teams to address specific work areas and, and deliver specific outputs as we need them. Um, so, I mean, is that too open-ended, or is everyone happy with that as a as a way forward? Good. So you've got two weeks, and um, and you can talk to one another and and plan on that. So I think on that we are finished with working groups. Thank you very much for all the work of the working groups that you did last year, and and the work that has already started this year. Um, Rudolf, do you need to go now or a bit later? Hassan, you have a question. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just a quick clarification. Um, uh, I'm not sure I heard it, but what do we do next in terms of uh, working groups? Should we wait uh, until the Secretariat uh, conduct a kind of assessment, or please do clarify? If you want, as um, um, a, co a coordinator or a chair or a member of the working group that you were part of. So I'm expecting the working groups to get together on their own to decide whether they want to submit uh, a, a proposal and a work plan with concrete um, suggestions for what you will be doing um, to continue. Or you can make a suggestion for your work to be continued in a different way. That's, that's also... Um, um, that's your choice. So it's entirely your choice. And I think the working group on workshop process, there is a little bit different because we actually need them to continue their work um, in the short term because we need an output, which is a revised workshop proposal submission. Just one more thing for that working group. Do look at the stock taking input and the proposal for different types of, of, of workshops. Even if you don't do that, it just would be good to, to be able to, to uh, reflect that you did look at that consideration. So I understand is that clear? So just get back together and decide what you want to do for the year and you've got two weeks. And remember, there'll be other opportunities for task teams and, and working groups and committees. So on that, I think we close this segment and we now go into the final segment of this meeting, which is to look at the timeline for the year. And, um, uh, Shangatai will, will open it for us. If anybody has to leave, they can, they can make their closing remarks. And then after that, um, we will listen to your input. And it will also be an opportunity for people to make sort of their closing reflections um, on this meeting. And then we will close, hard close, at 6 o'clock. So, Shangatai, Secretariat, you have the floor. And Wyman. Uh, uh, thank you very much, Chair. Um, you've all seen the timeline. Um, I sent it through the mag list, and it's also on the um, IGF front page. I think it's the last link in the documents section, or it was second last link now. Yes. Uh -huh. Thank you. Um, with the discussion today, um, trying to keep the timeline as it is at the moment. Um, if we have the call starting, let's say, Wednesday, and then that call would end, um, so we launch the call on 23rd of January, and then that will close on the 6th of February. And then I think the Secretary needs some time let's give it like two days to synthesize the input and then send it out uh, to the MAG. And then of course, the MAG needs time to digest that and also work with the narratives, right? 
we can give it another two weeks, I suppose. And then we have the call for workshops from the 2nd of March. But then I was looking at the timeline and then right to the end, if we keep with the um, MAG meeting that's going to be in June, that we do have, I think, like two weeks where nothing much is happening and we can, in fact, move the call for workshops up two weeks and put that two weeks in the front instead of in the back. And then we've got an extra two weeks to play with, which is what I was suggesting. But we cannot really finalize this until well, I think we should, because there was some question about the second MAG meeting. If we are, I think we should talk about those first and then we can finalize this timeline. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, Shonata is suggesting um, we don't go into too much detail. I think maybe let's look at this timeline, but with a very big picture perspective. Yeah. Um, the first big milestone is the call for validation of issues and deciding on the thematic tracks. Yes. And that's essentially, that call's going to go out next week. Wednesday, and the, yes, next week, that. Wednesday, and then we give the community two weeks Someone left a phone. And then we need a call. So I think we need to schedule, we need to, we need to start um, our, our procedure of regular calls. Then the next milestone will be to, to work, and we'll need task teams, we'll need work teams to work with the call for workshop proposals, which would work with those main tracks after we've decided what they are exactly and what the issues and sub-themes are. So, and you're saying that that needs to go out on on um, the, the workshop proposals right now is going out on the 2nd of March, but we can push it. We can push that to the 10th of March or something yeah, like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So please keep that in mind because that means we'll need work teams, task teams to work on the narratives and on, on that call that goes out. So we don't just need the procedure for workshop selection and call we also need to look at the text so we'll be asking for mag volunteers but we'll do this in the call we don't have to go into the detail and then we have um the 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 mag meeting at the moment the the the, the next open consultation and a mag meeting is scheduled for 16 to 18 june but there's feedback that it's too late for a, for an early november igf so, and there's also a call for a third MAG meeting. Um, the MAG meeting that we have on our timeline um, for June will be the one where we finalize the workshop selection. Um, I don't know whether or not that will provide difficulties for the workshop um, facilitators to get their workshops together, to write up an agenda, et cetera. It's up to you. I think it's possible, but I don't know. I mean, this is just a proposal from, from, from us. We're waiting for your feedback and then we'll do the adjustments. So, yeah. mm -hmm. so we're going to open the floor soon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's the proposal at the moment. Think of the timing of that meeting in June and also think of the number of MAG meetings and the timing of that meeting, especially if that's the meeting where, where we finalize workshop selection. Think, yes. think about that. And then, and then the, the next big milestone would be um, working with the, with the drafting of the schedule. And those, those I think, tend to, to work fairly smoothly. Once, once we've done the selection and the program structure, we start working on that. Yeah, yeah. So um, the, the core is basically the workshop selection process and what comes before that. Yeah. Um, so that's the core. Yeah. Once we've done that big uh, chunk of work, yeah. the rest is, uh, flows yeah. quite s yeah. smoothly. Mm. Okay, thanks for that, Shengatai. And Rudolf, you have to leave. So thank, thank you very much. And travel safely. And see you online soon. Um, so let's open the, the queue now for comments on the timeline. And um, we have roughly how much time left for today? 
Yes, we've just got over half an hour. So um, I, this is also the opportunity for people to mention anything else. And uh, and we, we need to prepare for closing our first MAG meeting of the year um, with comments on the time, timeline. But if there are any other remarks, closing re remarks that people want to make, now is the time to make them. Tamea. Thank you, Chair. Um, a point of clarification and perhaps a point of caution. Um, I'm still not 100% clear about the work on narratives in relation to the call for input on issues that will inform the call for workshops. Um, if we have to work on the narratives or even the pre-narratives that will inform our um, ask for the community um, to talk about extra um, ideas, I think we need more than two days. I think it's very, very ambitious. Um, for us to, to work with the 21st of January uh, for the call to go out if we want to work on, the, on those narratives, um, especially because we want to base those narratives. I think that was a great idea to base those narratives on the messages coming out from Berlin. I think we need a little bit more, more time there to, to really focus those three narratives so that the community understands what they have to do. It's not just about calling for issues. I think we need to inform that call. So I, I would ask for a bit more leeway on that if we have it a week, perhaps. Um, that's an option um, to make it a little bit later. But just remember to clarify, we don't need much narrative because this is the validation call. Remember, this is not, not um, we need some text that explains that we are building on the 2019 tracks and but that we are also having an, a, a call for, for, for input, for issues, for sub-themes. So this is a, a fairly simple, this is the, the 2020 version of that call for issues that went out in 2019 that had 300 plus responses. So it, it doesn't need a huge amount of work, but you're quite right, it does, it does still need work. Maybe we can take a, a few more days. I would suggest let's aim for the end of next week but if we need to get a little, little bit more time, then, then we'll make that time available. This is not the more in-depth narrative development work that would have to go into this for the call for workshop proposals. That's, that's the larger work. Does that help to clarify? Yeah, that larger narrative uh, would be, um, f you would have two weeks to develop that according to the plan we have for the moment. Thank you, Tamea. Paul Rowney. Paul Rowney. Okay, yeah, in, in general, I, I, I don't have any uh, material issues with what's being proposed, and I might be shot by some of my colleagues, but I, I, I actually support only having another face-to-face. -face. Uh, I, I think we can spend a lot more time productively elsewhere, but what was I going to say? Yeah, with, with, with the narratives and stuff, you know, because we're maintaining pretty much the three main themes that we had last year, they're pretty similar. We already have working groups and a lot of that is already established and there's no reason why they can't kick off immediately to start giving this thought and thinking about the narratives, you know, from now onwards. So we don't have to recreate working groups. People can choose which ones they want to join, uh, but we already have the framework to move forward from. Thank you. That's a good point and an, an, um, an advantage of keeping some of the same themes. Um, thanks, Paul. June. Hello again. Um, I second Paul's comments and I also want to add that I think we should probably try to have another meeting in April or somewhere around April, if possible, because I think when we see one another, we tend to be more efficient and um, we, it's easier to, be, to see one another face to face and get things done. So if possible, it doesn't have to be three days, it could be two days. Thanks, June. Jutta. Yes, firstly, I, I would like to say with regard to the timeline, I don't think that 16th to 18th of June is too late. If that's the meeting that we can take the final decisions, then it would leave enough time for workshop proposers to organize everything that they have to do once their workshops are accepted. Um, we, we can get that also from the feedback that timing was not a problem last year and it was more or less 
okay, the, the IGF was a bit later than it will be this year, but still it's three months to go and that I do think that would work. Uh, also, I second what uh, Paul and June have said about a meeting in between now and the June meeting. I suggest to try to have it uh, during the visits, which is from the 6th to the 9th of April, when several of us will already be here in Geneva and probably we can combine that if it's possible. And I also think that uh, it's important to bear in mind that we have not had at this meeting the same participation than we had usually in meetings because for many people it was just too short notice, it was too early in the year and we had nearly no online participation in this meeting which is usually from those MAG members who can't achieve to come to the meeting face to face usually the online participation is higher than we had during this meeting so I, I feel a, a little bit not confident about having enough engagement of the MAC members if we have only this like smaller meeting now and then the meeting in June. That's my comment. Thank you. And um, thanks, Jutta. By the way, Paul said we don't need a third meeting. Just to clarify. Said yes. June said we need a third meeting. Paul said we didn't. And, and just, to, just to keep, I just want to put this in your minds. If we don't have the resources for a third meeting, we would still have the option of making our second meeting longer. That is something we can consider to go for a, uh, a, an additional MAG working day if, if we can't have a third meeting. Okay, next we have um, Carlos Afonso. Okay, I, I first, well, I agree with Yuta's argument about uh, uh, the possibility of a meeting uh, uh, at the wisest time in April, and uh, uh, f with the reasoning that uh, Yuta presented. And uh, second is a short observation, is that the workshops and other sessions evaluations from 20th of April to 10th of May, I have suggested that uh, we should extend 10, 10 days more to, to, to 20th of May to have a month to, to do this evaluation. The rest is okay. Thanks. Let's, Secretariat, I hope you are, uh, um, because my note-taking ability, so just taking notes of all of that. Just um, when, if there are further MAG members that want to talk about the third meeting, it would also be good to look at what the agenda, if we're assuming that that one meeting is dedicated to, to workshop selection, it would be useful to, to reflect what the, the agenda will be of the other meeting so that we can make sure it fits into the timeline. Next, we have Mary. Thank you, Madam Chair, for giving me the floor. Mary Duma from Nigeria Technical Community uh, for the records. Um, first is that I want to refer to what Timia has asked us about pre or post uh, narratives. And I think I, I'm not too clear where we stand. I, I, I need a little bit of clarifications there. I know that you said it will not be an in-depth one and we, the call goes, goes out and then we have um, um, feedback from the community. That's one. Secondly is that um, um, I want to support what June and Yuta have said and, uh, uh, and uh, Carlos about the third meeting. As for the, uh, the agenda, we can develop the agenda for the third meeting. You can see now that even this first meeting, we are running short. Everything is, uh, you know, uh, we're, w some of the agenda we had, I don't know whether we'll be able to cover it in depth. And um, the third thing I want to say is that um, during the visits, more people are around. You can even meet the community to get info, uh, you know, get input into what we are doing, uh, members of the community. Um, since I have the floor, I want also to, to, to say the first thing that my first reaction when I saw this uh, timetable was, ah, the, we did better last year. We did three meetings and we saw that it helped us. Face to face comes with its own uh, advantages. So um, I, I think we should consider that. Then the, since I have the floor, I want to talk about this working group I want to raise something about the working group, especially the improvement. 
uh, the, those that are going to be in the, improve, the uh, um, uh, uh, IGF Improvement Working Group, I need us to consider what I've been raising since I came, that um, I need uh, that my community um, were left out of the process in Berlin, some of them, not all of them, because we went, we went to town to call them to come to Berlin. Some of them could not understand English. So in uh, improving the IGF and the, in the uh, evaluation process, if we could have people that could evaluate uh, inputs, whether it's called for issues or it's called for workshop in another language, not necessarily English. Yes, we can use the Google translation to do translation, but it will not be as heavy, uh, as clear as it should be. So last year we had people submit proposal in other languages and uh, uh, in, they were translated to English for us to evaluate. So if we have our members that could evaluate in other languages, they could be given that opportunity to evaluate in other languages. And then we also, the improvement will be, is, that, is it possible for workshops to be organized in a language other than English? So that those that could not understand English could, it will be able to attend to that, um, will be able to participate effectively in that workshop. So uh, the next thing is that those that could afford to translate their workshop could, could IGF or MAG give them the, the opportunity to translate or have translation in the workshops or in the open fora or in the, in the, in the, in the uh, um, DCs. So th th that's another thing that I need, I I'm saying that we should consider, please. Thank you. Um, sorry to, to interrupt the speaking queue. I actually think we need a task team on this. This is an issue that I think we need a short-term task team to look at um, at what, the, what, what, what we can do on that. I know there are lots of constraints and, and there are also implications and also which language. Um, but I think if, if, if there are people who are willing to work with this um, so that we can develop a proposal for the MAG to consider, I think that would be useful. Because um, I know there are, I mean, there are lots of constraints here and financial constraints. Um, it might be possible to have um, a transcript in French as opposed to simultaneous inter interpretation for French um, for, for certain sessions. And, and yes, we might be able to raise funding. We know the financial constraints, um, but, uh, but we might be able to ra ra raise external funding at least for, for some sessions. So rather than, this is a big discussion and it's a very complex and sensitive discussion. So I would suggest that, that people who are willing to work with Mary on this um, would come up um, with some proposals that we can discuss in, not, not at the next call, but maybe in the coming month to come up with um, some input on that. And working with the Secretariat as well, because we, there are certain, certain constraints. Is, that, uh, is anyone willing to work with, with Mary on this? That's perfect. That's, that's, that's absolutely perfect. So please email your, your, your names, contact Mary, and, and um, I will work with you on that as well. Okay, let's move on. Glavor. Uh, hello, Natasha Glavor. Yeah, no, no problem. Uh, third term MAG member from Croatia. Uh, I, I just wanted to say that I'm also, uh, uh, I also think that timing of the proposed meeting uh, in June is uh, fine and I don't think it's too late. Uh, and I'm also in favor for if, if it's possible, of course, to have third meeting. And uh, I just wanted to uh, ask something, it's probably more question for our colleagues from Poland. But uh, just for the record, I, I think it's, it's good to, to, to say it now. Um, uh, we'll have an uh, invitation, invitation sent to, to high-level participants in February. 
So uh, I was wondering if uh, we could coordinate somehow better than uh, than we did last year, if I can say it that way, because uh, unfortunately, no, no one, no one from uh, no, none of the high level uh, participants and parliamentarians from Croatia uh, got the invitations, so they they are lost somehow, and we couldn't ta uh, make uh, track track what what happened. So. Um, I don't know if uh, uh, Poland colleagues or Secretariat could uh, share uh, the information uh, whether the permanent mission uh, UN would be informed and set uh, uh, invitations to or some other channels uh, that would be in, uh, um, valuable information. And uh, if maybe uh, Poland colleagues could uh, share with us uh, contact information with someone who uh, will not be so busy uh, those days just before the IGF to help us if needed uh, with, with the tracking those sent invitations. Thank uh, you. Yes, we can help you um, if needed, but for also for this year, it would, it would be also be good if you could give us the address and name of the president of the parliament. And then we can make sure that it gets there. Maybe it was a, a wrong address. I'm, I'm, I don't know much about what, what happened last year, but for this year, if you just forward us the correct address of the president of the parliament, then we'll make sure that he gets it. Email addresses, I suppose. Email, uh, is e email addresses or uh, snail uh, both. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Natasha. Ben. Thank you. Um, firstly, I want to express my gratitude for putting out a year long timeline already um, before we came here in January. Um, I can't remember if we had that kind of information that early in the years before, but I appreciate it. Um, so that's, that's very welcome. And I'm supportive of the timeline. Um, in an ideal world, we would have an additional meeting because it can be easier to process issues when we're together in person. Um, but I appreciate that that's three or four days of travel for some people, uh, in addition to the two or three days we spend together. Um, and I think, you know, it's important to have that meeting in June where we, we take final decisions about the workshop proposals. My final point um, is about the, the timing around the call for issues next week. Um, so I, my understanding is that the Secretariat will draft some brief narratives based on the 2019 narratives and the IGF messages, and that the MAG members will have a couple of days to comment, two days to comment. And I think that works. And that then MAG members will work on more detailed narratives um, that will be used for the call for workshop proposals. And ideally, then we do that um, with the benefit of the response from the, the call for issues. Um, so I just wanted to clarify, I think that kind of two-step process works well, and, um, but I just want to make sure that was what you were envisaging. Um, um, I th ben, I think that is where I am, and I think, and, and if I'm being a bit vague about this, is probably because I wasn't part of the call last year, but I think this will be a validation Call. So the narrative will probably be more in the introductory text, explaining why we are making the call in this particular way, why we uh, have the continuity um, of the Berlin track. So rather than a narrative um, on each of those tracks, so it's more sort of explanatory uh, um, narrative text. The real work of narrative development will start once we, we um, pull out the, the, the content and the, sub, the, the response to the call for validation and identify all the issues and we begin to look at, at the, the themes and the sub-themes. But I think we will also have to keep in mind um, the fact that we, we don't want to make the process too top-down. So that, that's where that process will work. So I think the work next week will probably be, hopefully, be relatively simple because we'll just be processing our work here at the MAG meeting plus the responses to the December call. But yes, I think we are on the same page. I know it's a little bit, uh, little bit tricky. Um, Zhao Feng. Yes. Thank you, Madam. 
My name is Xiaofeng. I don't think it is a good idea that we should reduce the number of workshops. Ben mentioned yesterday that only 20% of workshop proposals were accepted last year. This ratio is lower than that of most conferences. Based on the statistics of over the last five years on the number of workshop proposals, it is clear that the number we are keeping growing in, the, in this year's IGF. I think it is our duty to have their voice heard. Thank you very much. Um, I don't think we are planning to reduce the number of workshops, am I right? That's not a goal at this point. I see the or some, somebody tell me, I don't... N maybe, but maybe no, no. Yeah, what what we're talking about is because last year there were the three three themes, and there were how many workshops last year? Who remembers? Sixty-eight. Sixty-five, sixty-eight, and there were three hundred proposals. Correct. Um, I don't think we need to, personally, I don't think we should at this point look at reducing. We might even be able to have more workshops. That's not the issue. I think the concern is more that the, the coherence of the structure and the quality of the proposals. So um, I don't think that's, that, certainly I have not heard that we are planning to reduce. I think there's a general call to not have too many sessions at the IGF, but I certainly don't think reducing it um, um, is, is on the table. And you would be happy about that. Good, good. Um, next we have um, Nebosha. Nebosha, regular government group, uh, third term in the MEG. Uh, when it's uh, the, the additional meeting uh, in question, uh, I think this uh, period, uh, just at the end of the uh, uh, workshop proposals uh, uh, submission, is a very good uh, period when we sh could meet and uh, discuss specifics about the workshop process evaluation. Uh, that's probably the most uh, critical aspect of our work, and I think uh, that uh, discussions on uh, this topic uh, uh, would be much more efficient uh, and effective if done face to face rather than uh, rather than uh, uh, online uh, if there is not sufficient funding my proposal would be to have that only one meeting if it's if it comes to only one meeting to have that meeting after the submission of all proposals which means uh, uh, if it's good, if it's possible to connect it with the uh, uh, VCC, if we have three meetings, then okay. If not, then after the uh, 15th of April, when the, the uh, workshop session proposals are accepted, and then uh, to have uh, that meeting, I think that's more critical uh, to have properly uh, established procedure and uh, rather than to have the uh, final decision on the uh, number and uh, what proposals we can accept. When it comes to the third meeting, I don't think that uh, this uh, June meeting is too late. Last year we had it at the beginning of the Jul July. Uh, a year before we had it also in July, even in the middle of July. And uh, I think uh, it, uh, there were no complaints as we saw from uh, Jutta's uh, uh, presentation about that from uh, uh, all these uh, participants in, uh, in the survey. Uh, second thing is related to, to the language. Don't get me wrong. I'm really in support of diversity. And when it comes to diversity, I think uh, uh, you, maybe you will remember that last year I was one who uh, advocated that diversity should not have reduced percentage uh, compared to the, to the uh, other criteria. And the language I consider one of the aspects of diversity. But we must be very careful. Uh, if we take in account only six official UN languages 
And if we have on mind that official uh, uh, translation during IGF meeting is only done uh, during the main sessions, uh, how we are going to execute uh, workshops and how those who prepare workshops are going to execute them if we don't uh, yeah, have uh, proposals prepared in, in English. Uh, I'm, I'm really just expressing my concern. Really, I'm fully supportive about, of that, but as I will not take part in, in, in that uh, working group on language uh, or task uh, team on, on language, I'm just expressing my, 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 my concern uh, about, about that. Absolutely, you're completely right. And I think this working group is going to have to look at exactly that. You can't change the nature of, of, of the IGF or the huge multiplicity of languages um, of the people that come to the IGF. Um, so I don't, I think, but it's still worth discussing that and processing it and having a response to the people that, that have asked for changes with regard to that. Maybe there are some solutions. I'm not suggesting that we're changing the procedure. I just think we need to, to tackle that particular request and proposal and then document what we can and what we can't do in response. But I think I, 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 I agree completely with your reservation there. We'll take that into account. Christine. Yes, thank you. Um, uh, regarding the timeline, I wanted uh, to comment on um, um, the possibility of having a meeting alongside the WISIS uh, week. And uh, um, I just try to uh, remember, I think on the open consultation day, when we were discussing the um, uh, uh, the um, uh, champions uh, group that are going to uh, uh, consult on how to implement uh, 5A and B. Uh, the WISIS week was mentioned uh, for a potential uh, time and venue to look at consultations on that matter. So if this is the case and if it's going to happen, I think it's worth uh, not to, to conflict with the day and to align in a way so that uh, people that will be attending, unless I, I recall wrong. Christine, sorry, I was just checking dates. Consultations on what matter? We were discussing the, um, uh, the report 5A and B. Um, yeah, it. I think they mentioned yeah. that the, the WISIS is a potential week for those yeah. consultations. And uh, it could be actually an opportunity also to bring in NRIs uh, for this consultation here in Geneva. Many of them do attend the, the, the WISIS. Now, uh, on the language point, uh, since Nabuja just mentioned, um, um, not last year, but the year before I attended, actually I moderated one of the workshops that have uh, run completely in French from the beginning to the end. And it was a Francophonie community. They did prepare the proposal in English, which was an extra step they did. But I mean, the workshop was in a room without translation, completely in French, and it was perfectly dynamic with a lot of discussions. So I don't see a problem with that. And the report was in English, if I recall correctly. Yeah. Uh, and they reported in English. They did report in English well. as well, yeah. yeah. So, um, so that's um, a good point. And I think just keeping in mind um, that the dates for everyone's information of the WISIS forum is 6 to 9 or 6 to 10 April. So keep, you know, we, we, if we have a meeting then, we need to be sure that we're ready to have, have, have an agenda and that's a concrete proposal for what we for what we could talk about it. To Mayor. Thank you, Chair. And I'm going to jump off topic here, but since we're coming up to the end of the um, <laughs> the day here, I'm going to start with the thank yous. Um, sorry, Rose, if I'm jumping in ahead of you. Um, I just wanted to really express um, my gratitude towards the IGF Secretariat for the, the input material we had for this meeting. I don't think I took enough time to, to talk about that, especially with the Secretariat working at reduced capacity. I was very, very impressed for us having not just this timeline done, but also the input for um, the taking stock, which was really done, I, I believe, overnight because there was no other way this could have been done. Um, so thank you, thank you very much for that. Uh, I really appreciate it. If we can keep that momentum up, I think it would be great for, for us to work on this um, through the year. And all my support that I can help with to, to uh, keep to that. Um, and if I may, a, a closing request coming away from, from this meeting, if we could ask the Secretariat for a half-page action points 
per agenda item type of summary. So not a minutes, not a five pages um, summary of the discussions, but I think especially in light of many MAG members not being able to attend the meeting, if we could just have agenda item decision taken um, type of summary only for the MAG list, it doesn't even have to be public, more public than that, I think it would be very appreciated. So with that, thank you everybody for being here. Again, welcome to the new MAG members. I hope they didn't scare you. Um, and thanks everyone. Bye. Very much and I'll thank the Secretariat um, soon as well. I just want to give the Secretariat the opportunity to clarify for us exactly um, what the attendance has been of the MAG at this meeting. Uh, thank you very much Chair. and thank you very much to Mayor uh, for your kind words. Um, <clears throat> for this meeting we had 30 Six. <laughs> yes, sorry, I, I'm getting the maths in my head. 36 MAG members attending in person, and we had four MAG members remotely. So we had uh, 40 MAG members in total participating in this meeting, um, which, which is rather high, actually. Uh, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think there's, there's a perception, I'm not sure why there's a perception that attendance has not been good, maybe because some really key people like Sylvia was not here with us. Um, but in fact, I really um, feel the attendance was very good. It's, it's apparently um, high attendance for a MAG face-to-face -face meeting. And I think I, you know, that which is to me indicative of the commitment and the support of the MAG to be at a face-to-face -face meeting with such short notice so early in the year. Mary Rose. Thank you, Madam Chair, and um, Mary Rose, private sector. Um, I want to take this opportunity to speak before the meeting ends. I know this is my first time to speak for this meeting. But yeah, um, just a general comment on how the process of the meeting went. I really commend um, Madam Chair. Um, I appreciate the process of the breaking out um, breakout groups. Um, I think it's a really good idea to have it, and um, it was really a productive uh, meeting for us because you know the breakout groups is as provided as a more venue to speak up and. It's more a focus discussion, so I think it's we're gonna do that more often. And yeah, you cannot see me. <laughs> and I also like wanna second to what Maya has raised earlier about having a highlight um, summary of what has been discussed during the meeting, and it's a good way for us to review before the next um, virtual meeting. And I also wanna support in the on having the second meeting and during the resistance. So congratulations, everybody, and it's good to see you, and I hope to see you soon again. <laughs> Thank you, Mary Rose. And yes, that's an excellent suggestion to have that. Vote, you have the floor. Yes, thank you, Chair. Uh, a short reply on the parliamentarians, because I'm the only one in the room now who worked on the project uh, with Rudolf Gone, the Polish people gone. Uh, very short clarification, we reached out on three different levels. So the German government, Mr. Schäuble, the president of the, the parliament in, in, in Germany, sent out a letter to all his colleagues in the world. And from experience, we learned that that sort of disappeared in email boxes that are too, too general. So that's something we could learn from. The second one is that a lot of people were reached out to individually. And I think that the most people who showed up at, at, the, at the Berlin IGF came from that inter personal reach out. And the third one is that, that we did four presentations to parliament, parliament, so that was what I, I did for the German government. So my advice would be, I think that the Polish are sort of looking into doing the same, that the MAG members can actually assist with email addresses from parliamentarians that are relevant, because it's very hard to get uh, those sort of addresses. And if we pull that together, then we may be able to reach even more parliamentarians this year than, uh, than uh, we did last year. And that's my advice. Thank you. Thank you very much, Vote. And, and so that's the, the, our last speaker in the queue. So now it's my opportunity to, 
to firstly to thank um, all of the MAG members. I think thank you very much all of you for being here, to the new MAG members who could be with us for coming and for participating. Um, you'll participate even more as, as time continues. To our MAG representatives from past host countries, I want to give a special shout out to Mexico because they've been here with us in the room for, 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 for the duration of the meeting and um, even though they haven't necessarily participated and they didn't introduce themselves, I don't think you were given an opportunity to introduce yourselves, but thank you very much um, for, for being here, along with Egypt and Germany and Switzerland and Brazil. So thank you very much. We really need to carry that history with us. And, um, and to, to um, the Secretariat and, and you know, you and Dessa, um, um, Tamea, you are so right to thank the Secretariat. I mean, we were working and they were doing the work. <laughs> I was there interacting with them between Christmas New Year. There was, there was really, I think both Shangatai and Anya, I'm not sure about Luis, took little short breaks, but essentially there was no real holiday for the Secretariat. They went straight from IGF 2019 into IGF 2020 with almost no break. And um, Wyman, thank you for the long trip from, from New York and for, for being here with us so early in the year. Um, and uh, Lima, thank you for your work and preparing and synthesizing. And Louise, thank you for your work, which is, the, this, none of this would actually work without your, your, your input. So thanks very much to everyone who participated, to the remote participants. And um, we have a lot of work ahead of us, but um, it's, I'm very glad to hear people say that June is not too late. To me, that demonstrates that you all know what you're doing and you understand the time frame. And I feel reassured by that. So thanks a lot. The, 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 uh, the chair for good chairing. Please, can we give a round of applause for good chairing? <laughs>